The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this fight come. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode 114. I thought it was 118, Dan reminded me it's not, that's good. We're not in the future just yet. <laughs> we haven't figured that one out. We are lucky, lucky to uh, get in one more little episode before a certain uh, couple of people we get dropped off in the world like Superman yeah. on the planet. Uh, I'm your host, Gav. I'm sitting here with my friend, co-host, brother, Le- ex-lover, Dan Bone. <laughs> it's me, it's Dan, and it's you, it's Gav, and we are the podcast on Haunted Hill. Yeah, totally. I'm excited. Yeah, if you don't know what's going on and you're sort of first time listening, you're like, what are you talking about? We get another episode in. Dan is about to have a couple of twins. And uh, we, we've just each time been like, are we going to get another episode? Are we going to get another episode before the babies come along? Because then there's going to be a, you know, a little bit of a hiatus, not a huge one. I but there will busy. be a little one, because um, Dan's going to be busy. Um, so yeah, that's what that is, if you don't know. So I hope everybody in the world is fine, happy, enjoying themselves, nothing's too bad for you, and things are still chilling out. It's been very wet in England recently, but all of a sudden, it's fucking boiling as hot, isn't it, Dan? It is very, 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 very hot, which is lovely because in the UK, years topless, it's Mm -hmm. good because in the UK they've started easing the old lockdown on the pandemic, which is nice. It means people can go out in certain amounts of numbers and meet up in pub gardens and even go to holidays in certain countries or areas of the country. I won't be doing any of that, not because I'm having twin soon, but just because I'm still a little bit, I still want to make sure everything's... You know, there's no second or third or fifth spike, whatever it is. But it is lovely. It's beautifully hot. And I know that summer's upon us because I'm sat here in my basketball vest and our Gav is in his usual uniform of his pants, um, which is brilliant. Um, and I, I always know that it's a, a nice hot uh, episode because, yeah, that's our uniforms. And that's what we're in. And we've got drinks. Oh, you have. You've got some alcoholic, I've got some non-alcoholic. And speaking of heat, uh, one of the films we're watching, because it's a great double bill of sequels that we both enjoy. One of them, very much an American Wealth in Paris type sequel that we just kind of like. So if you don't like it, well, hopefully we might pull you around, change your mood and maybe, or mind, and uh, uh, maybe get you to have a look at it again. And that is uh, Book of Shadows 2, no, Blair Witch 2, sorry, Book of Shadows, where I look at it, is Rogue One in the Star Wars franchise. <laughs> I love that. We'll get into that more. And uh, one more and the other movie. One. What is it, Dan? Oh, it's Predator 2. A hot, hot, steamy, With... sexy Danny Glover. <laughs> Gary Boosie. <laughs> <laughs> in, a, um, in a meat packing factory. Stop packing my meat, Gary Boosie. Uh, so the theme is uh, see, not underrated sequels, just sequels that kind of got a bit bashed and a bit you know slated when they came out because the first ones are so big and powerful films really you know however you know that doesn't work as well because predator 2 has undeniably gained a massive cult following over the over the years since 1990 blair witch 2 though i do think it's still a you either love it or you hate it and that's the movie that gav quite rightly said is the kind of the american werewolf from paris which for anyone who didn't know we did a werewolf episode um quite a few episodes back We decided to cover American Werewolf in Paris with one of those because we both really have a soft spot for that film. Can't explain why. And it's the same with Blair Witch 2. We both absolutely love this film. Can't explain to you why, because we know it's not a very good film. But there's something about it we'll happily sit and watch. So Mm -hmm. that's what we're covering. Sequels. It was uh, interesting. It's always, always interesting to look at the movie, taking notes, and then thinking about the movie, because you sit there thinking about the film a bit more, because that's what you're going to discuss, and you think about different topics you could talk about. 
And it's very interesting doing the Blair Witch 2. We will get to it, but just there's, and there's one thing just at the end when the credits go where it missed out on something, and I'll get to it when we get to it, but which would have really made it a bit more better. Just going to the credits kind of ruins it, but we'll get there uh, because it's coming off a king of found footage films and people were expecting I that know. again. How do you follow that up? It's like Halloween 2. People are expecting Michael Myers again. Halloween 3 season of Witch comes out. And it's the same thing. People had expectations and boom. We will get to it. We will get to it. Dan, we're also the time team. We have. The time machine's ready to go. It's ready to travel back. Let me just check the buttons. Yeah, 2014, all ready to go. That'll be fun. Your button Um, was a bit squeaky last time. Yeah, I put a drop of oil on that. Don't you worry. Well, I say oil, KY jelly. But uh, yeah, that's all ready to go. Um, And what else have we got? We got... Oh... Bill has just walked in. That's good. Bill Murray. Just, so he'll Bill, be... just help yourself to drink, but don't drink too much, yeah? yeah. Oh, he's he's going to be he, I love that he just nods. He never says, like, all right, guys, how are you doing? He's always scared to be on... It's almost like... it's Well, when it comes down to it, guys, we have to pay Bill Murray just to say those few lines he says each time. But it's not much. It's not much. Just a little bit. And if he, he said any other words, we have to pay him a bit more. So he does that. Do so, it's, all right, thank you. Just, you know, he doesn't he doesn't charge us for the thumbs up and the nods. But he does drink our booze. And it actually works out cheaper for us to fly him in for every episode just to so make a couple of drinks for us for the World like of the Strange. A few lines, yeah. And say a couple of lines. And so, yeah, World of the Strange, Bill will be doing that. He's like, he's give me a wink then, Gav. Oh, shit. Don't, 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 don't drink too much and start getting all flirty. Yeah, right, well, he'll yeah. be there. He'll be there for that. Yeah, so that's what we've got coming up. So this is um, episode 114. I like to call this episode sequels. Or prequels. Ooh. We could uh, we could make a game, you know. Sequel or prequel? Mm. Mm. There we go. What have you been doing other than getting butt ass naked? Well, you've got some underwear on, thankfully. But uh, well, I, been... I was actually going to moan about how much it's been raining recently because it was raining every day for uh... a, a li- really really long period of time. I don't know why. Let's just say quickly, Gav, um, before we continue there, for any of our non-UK listeners, this is where we show our true Britishness by talking about the weather. Yeah. Please continue. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, that's fine. I, well, I don't, wouldn't normally do this. Uh, it's just it was just so ridiculously wet. And I know it is the UK, and that's what we get, but it was just crazy. But anyway, uh, apart from that, you know, I sold my house. That's something. It's like a life thing going on. Well done. Got to be a grown-up. Um, do that stuff. Um, so that's kind of cool. So begin, uh, you know, getting a little flat, little place where then I can have a nice little podcast set up, which is dedicated for podcasting. And um, yeah, no interruptions, no hopefully no speeding cars zooming by and weird things going on, and strange sounds and shouting. Vin, and Vin Diesel driving by, just shouting out just, family and just stuff. Out the uh, <laughs> apart from that, I watched. I watched. Uh, I had a little. Uh, watched a couple of Travolta movies. Travolta into the world of genre. Um, Carrie with Jay, and oh, I hadn't yeah. seen Carrie for many, many years. Checked in the old projector. Uh, it starts up. Jay's like, "Why have you just put on a movie with just loads of naked women?" And I was like, "Why not?" And I was just My like, best. "Yeah, but they're all like college girls, and I'm 44, and it's just all a bit like." I was a bit like, "Uh, yeah." Uh, uh. Anyway, watching that with a 14-year-old, non-gendered 14-year-old, um, who originated from female, who has female. Things that go on monthly, like Carrie does at the beginning. So it's a very fascinating. I really liked this watching it with Jay, the movie Carrie, and just a kid who's kind of bullied and goes on to doing this whole like thing. I'd, I'd forgotten all the movie. I was just like, oh, the what, guy with curly hair, his her date. Yeah, no, he's in on it, and I, and I was like, he wasn't in on it and all this sort of stuff. And then his girlfriend, who set him, said, "I'll oh, take Carrie to the ball uh, to the prom." He wasn't in on it. Uh, she wasn't in on it. I thought she was. So um, I'd forgotten the whole movie, to be honest with you. John Travolta just killing a pig? Yeah, yeah, yeah. J- Jay didn't like that bit. Yeah, it's a bit much. Mm. Um, good. Well, it was good, I mean, though. It was a really interesting. It's a good movie to watch. And that's why I said to you, let's, let's double that up with St. Maud. Yes, I agree. Now, that's interesting because we do quite often come across uh, movies, films that we have not reviewed and it, this is one that was escaped us so far after 114 episodes still not even looked at Carrie but Carrie is probably my favourite Stephen King movie adaptation so I'd be very excited to cover that one mm. and definitely mm. pair that up with St Maud because of the religious aspects within it so that's definitely one guys for the future St Maud if, if you've not seen it it's a very new film and Carrie very um, old film the other Travolta genre flick I watched was uh, The Fanatic uh, 
old Fred Durst, where where when Fred Durst yes. said, "Keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling," someone should have stopped him. This is not very good, I've heard. Yeah, um, I'm going to talk about it, then I'm going to spoil it. So I will say when I'm going to spoil it, and you can skip forward if you want to. Would you say you're more going to save people from watching it than spoil it? I think so. The thing, the thing was, when the movie started up itself, the first opening shot where the credits were on, I didn't like. I was like, that's horrible. Wow. That just that, okay. look, that just comes across all horrible. It's horrible. It's just so not nice. Literally within seconds of this film, you were unhappy. And I wasn't doing that in, in uh, like a negative way. I was going on this actually like, yeah, I, I want to check this out. John Travolta took the role because he had an autistic son that died when he was 12. Yep. So he took the role on big, in the memory of him. But it, it just like, the opening shots, band, I was just like, I don't like that shot. And I was straight away, I was like, if that's his choice at the beginning, I'm not going to probably like his other choices of camera shots and scenes, you know? But I'm not going to go in negative. So I carried on. John Trafford walks into a store with a guy who owns like a comic book kind of store, who's a really, really bad actor at the comic book store. But John Trafford comes in, his first line is, I need to poo. Wow. Um... He's like, okay. oh, well, no, 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 it's not necessary. He's like, it's, it says, oh, I've got this thing for you guys. I can't be long. I need to poo. That's his, pretty much his first line. Um, okay. John Travolta, uh, basically, he says, oh, this actor, who is the guy from Final Destination, the main guy, who is also Idle Hands. Was he? Oh, you mean the guy who was also He's in Stan. Hunter Hunter in uh, what you've watched recently, I think. I have still yeah. haven't seen Hunter Hunter. He, I... Well, sorry, he came on. He's stocked up. He looks good. I was like, his acting in, in fan, uh, The Fanatic was good. And I was like, I quite like this guy. Uh, I like what he's turned into. I haven't seen him since really Final Destination, you know. He's like a big kind of... He's, uh, he's a man. Beef, you know? Beefcake. Yeah, he, he's turned into sort of a man, he, he, whatever. Yeah. And I, I was like, I want to see him more. So I look forward to Hunter Hunter. But, um... He's there as a movie, horror movie actor, and John Travolta is a massive fan. Um, and then just becomes obsessed with him and ends up going to his house. Um, he goes to his house, like, but the thing was, like, Fred Durst has not figured out suspense whatsoever. They're just scenes, the writing's uh, so, so bad. Can I just step in there? Are you saying the man who was the lead frontman for Limp Biscuit? What a name, Limp Biscuit. Who thought that was a good name? But yes. You, you're saying that he hasn't figured out I mean he just thought he could step into directing I, I thought he, he could step into uh, directing he did a he did direct a movie many many years ago actually a more of a female drama film what yeah many many years ago so he actually already directed a feature and I think that's probably uh, probably okay I don't know I don't know but this this was like really bad writing really really bad there was no suspense handled at all anyway Travolta manages to find out where this guy lives and he goes into his house and he keeps doing it a little bit and they're like, oh, there's his girlfriend or wife or whatever um, is on the ground saying, you can't come in here, you can't come in here. Right, okay, spoiler. I'm going to spoil this movie now for the next couple of minutes, okay? So if you want to skip ahead, oh, skip ahead. Uh, he goes in, he actually then accidentally pushes her, she falls over, hits her head and dies. That's That's like the guy from Final Destination's girlfriend were dead on the ground okay then he goes into Travolta's place um, into the other guy's place and he's sleeping and uh, Travolta just kind of sits there with him while he's sleeping then goes to sleep in a chair next to him and sort of touches him and does does weird things like that then what? it kind of just being a he just kind of a bit weird isn't he he's just there as a fanatic and stuff and, and while the guy's sleeping he doesn't know he's there in the house and what ends up happening is like daytime comes uh, he hides underneath his kid's bed at one point he knows he's under the bed because he goes to grab a teddy and quickly put it in when he comes in and I was like oh my god we're getting a bit of suspense there's a bit of a storyline here then it goes right out a window we don't see him come out underneath the bed or anything it's like well, you missed an opportunity there there's so much stuff it was missed and it ends up being that he um, waits the daytime comes he gets out of the chair goes oh we have to go he goes out then the next thing the police are at the door arresting the guy from Final Destination Presumably because they found his wife outside, but we don't see the police finding the wife outside. We don't see them doing any investigation and just arresting him, and he just comes out not with any reaction whatsoever. Surely he'd be like, what the hell? That's my wife. Why are you arresting me? Not what's going to do you know what I mean? Fighting it, and he just gets taken away, and that's the end of the movie. And it was just like, that is just awful. I don't know if I'm expressing it as badly as it could be. Did, though. Did, so it was so boring it wasn't even at least if it had been really shit you would have might have had some fun with it like i do with crap movies but it sounds like it was just it was a movie that tried to try to do tried to be a movie tried to be a dramatic film uh but failed 
Uh, started started slightly getting into suspense, amping it up, then completely just pulled it, pulled the cord on it, and didn't know how to handle the scenes. It, it's healed in the writing, and then maybe the direction and the time. That I don't know. I don't know. It's just not of, good. Parts of that sounded okay because yeah, the slight bit of suspense I re- I under the kid's watched, bed. Or... Yeah, I was going to say. I recently watched that Gary Busey movie where he's living in the attic secretly. That's 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 better than that, the fanatic. Um, and also, you reminded me a little bit of there's that movie where the guy uh, injects the woman. He hides under a bed. And That's really gets... good. The Spanish movie. Uh, yeah. um, it's called now. For God's sake. Very very good movie. That is. That's um, really good. He sleeps under the woman's bed every night. That's fucking. Yeah. That's great. But these are all infinitely better than Fred Durst's fanatic. fanatic. It's really really bad. Sarah found it for fifty pence in a charity shop. I said, I don't know if I want to watch this. He said, well, go on, and then we could say we've watched it. And I, yeah, and I was just kind of disappointed that I wasted 90 minutes. Now I know you'll be loving this shit right rolling, here. Rolling, 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 rolling. Don't. Don't roll on. Just don't. roll on by. Roll on Pastor. by. <laughs> well, you've been... Uh, well, you've watched new and old Travolta there, haven't you? Yeah. you watched him. You watched him in the wig, and you watched him without the wig. With the wig, without Wiggy. the wig. Yeah. Well, talking of wigs or, or long hair at least, I revisited um, a a director and a world that I haven't been to for a long time. And I used to be a great big fan of Kevin Smith's uh, universe, viewers universe. And I revisited uh, this by watching the new Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Oh film. my god! I started watching that the other night as well, and I was like, "Why am I still watching this?" It's the end of a movie. I just put something on, and it was on the projector as well. And I started watching. I I started, and the next night I went back. I could. I just kind of forced through it. I was like, uh, yeah. "I really liked it." Oh my god! Uh, because it's been a long time since I've watched those movies. I guess if you're a fan of those films, yeah. It's Kevin Smith sucking his own dick for about an hour and forty-five minutes, but I kind of was into that. You know, everyone who's, who's looks, ever been in a he looks so weird movie, though because it obviously is a heart so attack that he lost his weight, yeah. but he looks like he's lost too much weight almost. But they do take the piss out of a minute because, and it's quite sad actually. Stan Lee was supposed to be in it, uh, but obviously passed away just before they were about to go into production. So he replaced Stan Lee with Kevin Smith. So not only does he play um, Silent Bob, he was, also plays Kevin Smith, and he plays Kevin Smith as this dickhead that everyone thinks yeah, he is in real life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and it's really funny. And if you like the Viewers Universe movies, which some people do, a lot of people do. I, I do. I really like them. Then. I think it's worth checking out. It's a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of silly jokes. Uh, and they even take the piss out of, like, Jason Mewes. Ben Affleck's in it, and he's awesome. Well, Jason um, Lee's in it as a store owner. I like seeing Jason Lee, because he's a yeah, old scale. It, it was good, man. I enjoyed that. But um, another movie I watched, beginning with a J. See what I did there? That was, my, that was the only segue I could get get away with here. It was starring uh, Nicolas Cage. Oh, Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu-Jitsu, my friend. Can Nicolas Cage actually do martial arts, or was it the camera just no. editing, going flip, 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 flip? It's the camera editing, and apparently it was actually going to be Bruce Willis that was going to be in this, but Bruce Willis was committed to another straight-to-video film. So in the end, they contacted Nicolas Cage and said, can you fly out for three days and film your very small amount of scenes? Spoiler alert, he's not in it an awful lot. And he said, oh, of course, I can do that. So he flies out, he flew out, and he filmed a few scenes. Um, and the movie is just a a throwback to what I watched a lot in the late eighties and early nineties, which is loads of country movies and stuff. Throwing an alien, the alien was quite bad effects. Um, in fact, the alien looks a lot like something out of Power Rangers, but in a bad way. Um, but if you want to put, if you want to grab a couple of beers or have a smoke or whatever it is that you do that floats your boat. Just have a cup of herbal tea, whatever it is. Chuck that on for 90 minutes on a Friday night. It's absolute bollocks nonsense, but it's brilliant. Nicholas Cage. Why do you think uh, Bruce Willis still does these things? He doesn't need the money. And <sighs> it's kind of a bit like if you if you don't need the money and you love acting, why, why take on jobs that you're not going to enjoy the acting? Or keep like it every, for good roles? I feel like every episode this comes up, doesn't it? We always discuss, like, Bruce Willis, what the fuck are you doing with your life? But It's just kind of like, why are you doing it? Like, you, you can't need the money. You like, you just can't. I don't... I'll tell yeah. you what, I found something really heartbreaking out the other day. 
about uh, Robert De Niro. So obviously he makes a lot of shit films now, doesn't he? Just straight to video, loads I of Adam Sandler. I'm kind of looking forward to it. I'm going to watch it with Elijah, the, uh, the fight with Grandpa. Yeah, the War of Grandad or something. It's called, no, War yeah. of Grandpa. Uh, I think uh, uh, Elijah and I would probably enjoy that, you know. Now, I found out the reason why he is making so many shit films non-stop. It's because his ex-wife, basically has got him tied into some weird alimony contract where he has to give her millions and millions and millions every year more than he earns unless he does these shit films so actually if he just stopped doing all these films he would be bankrupt instantly because he because his wife ex wife is taking this money off him i found this out the other day I thought, Bloody hell. and he's like in his 70s now i think but at least am i right in I, saying what a horrible woman but i don't know the circumstances i, don't know I guess the, i can't I really know. can i yeah i don't know the circumstances what, you know why was there separation but never heard of anything of robert de niro being wrongdoing as such but seems yeah. like he seems like an all right guy he seems like he could probably be a gentleman um, Considering who him and Pacino play a lot, they both seem all right, actually, in real life, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they seem like people are probably proper all right people. Who it's would... funny, actually. Like Even like Joe Pesci, Christopher Walken, these guys notoriously play a lot of terrible, horrible gangsters. And in real life, they're probably lovely. I don't know. I saw a thing the other day, Joe Pesci, on a Saturday Night Live, once upon a time, after Sinead. I was reading into Sinead O'Connor and what she's up to nowadays. Just living in some little town in Ireland with like just a few other women and that's it. Like shaved head, like just like she has. She know the, I don't even mind what I'm talking about. She the Connor. She know the Connor has really sh- uncomfortable furniture, so people don't stay for long at her, her house. I need to do that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, she <laughs> ripped up the Pope famously on Saturday Night Live. Uh, picture of the Pope. Uh, he he came on the week after saying, "If it had been my show, I'd have given her a slap." And he's talking uh, about slapping She the Connor and stuff for that. So, you know, that's Joe Pesci. Anyway, poor old Robert De Niro, uh, or, or maybe not, we don't know the circumstances. I can't say that his ex is a horrible woman or nothing, really. Anyway, yeah. randomness, this is a horror movie podcast, Daniel. Let me, well, let me bring it back, because, uh, so after Jiu-Jitsu, I t- and I mentioned there was a Power Rangers-looking motherfucker in it, I then watched a movie that looked like Power Rangers on acid, Nice. You may have seen this. I don't know if you have. A lot of people are... This is real hype for this at the moment. Psycho Gorman. Oh, no, I'm not seeing that. Oh, fucking hell. It was probably one of the most unique films I've watched in a very, very, very long time. My only problem with it... And I don't want this to... I don't want to put anybody off of it, but the main... Because it's two child actors and then a load of aliens and monsters and it's very, 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 very gory. But the main girl, the little girl actor, was incredibly annoying. Um, that was my only niggle with the film. But overall, 100% we recommend watching Psycho Gorman. I think it's a Shudder. So if you've got Shudder or if you've got Prime with Shudder, it's all, all on there. And it's just very strange and a real throwback to those kind of 80s monster, gory. It's all practical. There's a load of creatures in it that remind you of stuff like all the basket case creatures or the Hellraiser creatures. And they're kind of like, uh, they send this alien to Earth. His name's Psycho Gorman. That's not his real name. That's what the children name him. And they realize they can control him and use him against bullies and do whatever. And it's just really, really, really weird. And the end credits finishes with a rap about Psycho Gorman. Amazing. Like Dragnet. And it sounds like they're trying to basically do an impression of the T U R T O E power. And they do that, but it's basically about Psycho Gorman and it's fucking brilliant and I can't recommend Psycho Gorman enough. A lot of fun. But don't go into it expecting it to be because it's not a bad film, but it's also not like it's not even really a proper film. It's like this really wacky it's basically an excuse to show off loads of practical effects. Okay. It's great. And you watched, uh, uh, well, we both watched Army of the Dead. I mean, it's been hyped up at the moment. Yes, it seems, we did. It seems to be quite popular to a distant movie as well. It seems, well, like, I, it seems like a, it, seen... almost a popular thing to distant movie, regardless of the, do you know what I mean? Loads of people That's really distant. That's very true, it. yeah. I've only, actually, it's funny you say that. I Initially, I only saw one or two people diss it. Oh, I've seen um, tons. Sarah, Sarah didn't but, like but, it. I, I since enjoyed it, it was, oh, I did some bits it, it was too long way too long it should have been about that, an hour and 45 minutes that be the main gripe for a lot of people but I way too long. personally had a fucking huge ton of fun with it um, there was a load of references to 
Predator, Aliens, American Wealth in London. You know, it's, it's obviously going to have those Predator and Aliens. The American Wealth in London, you don't, but I'm sorry, you don't homage a werewolf movie in a zombie movie. There's just no point. That's lazy writing, that is. He wrote that scene, then went, oh, that's a homage to of that. Oh, actually, I'll keep it in. That's awful. It's, I don't know. I disagree. I think Zack Snyder is a massive horror fan. And yeah, I, think he I, I, I agree. He's probably dis- Yeah, definitely. But that's lazy writing. That's just, it's just, you don't do that. If it had been a werewolf homage in a werewolf movie, yeah, cool. Yeah, you know. Fair enough. It's lazy writing. Um, uh, it was too long. What I didn't like was it. I wish you could cut out all of the uh, the pregnant zombie and the zombie lord. Cut all them out. Cut those things out. Not needed. I like the I like the bank heist thing with the just going in and there's loads of zombies. I'd been into just that movie. No, I understand. I completely see that. But I what I liked two is ghosts that Zack Snyder. I like that Zack Snyder pushed it in a different direction. And actually, this isn't a spoiler because this is all over the internet, but if you look into it further, there's a lot of um, stuff to do with aliens in the background and robots, robot zombies as well. Um, and Zack Snyder's not given any answers yet. He says he has a sequel in the works. Um, yeah. I'd be up for seeing that. I think uh, this could be fun. But that's that's thought... like the Marvel problem with Marvel. We're not actually going to tell you the whole story now. You're going to wait till nine years' time when we reveal no, it. No, no, like, oh, it, it, no, no. This is. Um, I want that though. I want it in the movie I'm watching. This isn't so much that though. This is more that he he already had a sequel in his head when he made this, but mm. um, but he also threw a load of shit in there to stir up talk on the net, which which people are doing. You know, they're like, why is there blue blood in some of the zombies? Why are there alien spaceships in the air? Yeah, yeah, why yeah. is there a robot zombie at one point? You know, what the fuck? And why is there even potentially a time travel paradox thing at one point that they mention? But really fun it, characters. It, it was a um, bit, to, to myself, it was a bit too much going on. It needed to strip it back. Less is more, my, my way. You know. What I would say, to summarise for me, is I loved Zack Snyder when he first came out. Obviously, we all love that Dawn of the Dead remake. Um, but I he loved... didn't write that, though, and that was already a film, so he basically just took on the uh, concept already, which was, you know... Not not dissing his writing for this well, let, movie. Let me rephrase that then. I liked his directing style. Um, not necessarily his writing. I don't Great know movie. much about his writing. That remake is fucking amazing. I, love, I loved his very fresh take on mm. cinema. He did Watchmen. He did Sucker Punch. He did um, a few other bits and bobs other than Dawn of the Then he made. Then he got too into the DC universe and it all got very... Uh, and everyone's dissing the he new Justice He does kind of and, like comic book-esque movies then, doesn't he? He does, That's but I think thing. Watchmen was more his bag. But I'd kind of, I'd written him off, to be honest with you. I know he's had a tough time. His daughter very famously committed suicide, which is why he quit Justice League and Joss Whedon stepped in halfway through. Blah, blah, blah. All of that's kind of gone on. And I kind of thought, oh, just, I've written him off, Zack Snyder, as a bit of a crappy one, sort of one hit wonder. But actually, this reminded me that I can actually watch his films and I don't, don't mind all that slow mo. And in fact, Zombieland and Zombieland 2 have taken his style and borrowed quite heavily from it um, for those f- films as well. So I don't know. That I, there was even some Planet of the Apes references in it. I, I just got, for me, it did a lot of, ticked a lot of boxes for me. I really enjoyed What I really enjoyed the most was the humour and the the, the, um, the characters. I thought it was really good fun. I won't, um, it's a shame it's not short because I would possibly watch it again if it's shorter, but I won't watch it again because it's too long. I'm definitely going to watch it again. Um, yeah, it's definitely one I want to stick on on a Friday night. But my, I think my final film to talk about is another zombie um, sort of assault movie. Mm-hmm. And this is the sequel to one that we covered, a Korean film, The Train to Busan. So I managed to get oh, around Pens- to watching Peninsula. Peninsula, yeah. Yeah. Um, wow, that Pe- was penis, fun. Pen- penis and then Peninsula. 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 This was a lot of fun. My only, da- my only downside was you could tell that the budget was a little limited because there was a bit too much CGI here and there. But um, really, really good spin and sequel. It was kind of like 28 days, uh, sorry, 28 weeks to 28 days. So if Busan, the first one was 28 days, then this was the 28 weeks. A little bit more pumped up, a lot more action. It's set about four or five years after the original. Um, the career career is basically wiped out and people are living like you know scavengers and the zombies are everywhere and people are just taking them out and it's just full-on action um really good fun and kind of felt a little bit like in some ways army of the dead perhaps copied a few ideas maybe from peninsula 
because that came out first. Army, uh, he, well, possibly, but he had Army of the Dead in his, his mind for about ten years, I think. But it was interesting watching them within the safe space of a week because they're both so very big. It might big just be that sort films. of thing. Like we talked about before, when those two movies get released at the same time, obviously they get released at the same time, but you watch them in the same sort of time frame. Probably just thought that maybe, you know. But they are both zombies. So, have you seen the 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 cop, the devil, and the gangster yet? I have not. It's on my list, though. Don't you worry. Yeah, one of the main guys from the first Train to Busan. I it on there. Really good. The Cop, the Devil, and the Gangster, or the Gangster. Oh, I don't know which way round it goes. Very good film, that. Uh, the Cook, the Wife, the Thief, and His Lover. I've never seen called. that one, actually. No, I've never seen that. Um, Gav, I watched a film I'd never seen before, just to quickly finish up. Um, I thought I had seen it, and you, you must have seen this. It's a John Landis film. Innocent Blood? Okay. I yeah. thought I'd seen it before, but I hadn't, and. Uh, Okay. That was really fucking good. Oh, okay. I don't remember. Um, when I did watch it, it was probably like, I don't know. I don't know. I remember not really being into it, but I don't actually remember it at all. Well, I could tell Va- you... Va- if, vampire film, yes. If 40, yes. If 14-year-old Gavin would have watched this, he would have been very... He would have been paying attention, let's say. Oh, because I, I did watch it when I was younger, but... Uh... Hmm. It's there's a lot of nudity in it from the French vampire lady. You mean I'll be spanking my monkey all over the place? Is that what you're saying? Uh, and actually, in hindsight, I probably would have paired that up with Cat People, the, the sequel that we, the remake that we uh, we covered, because there was a lot of sexy, romantic, naked, vampiric similarities between the two. But yeah, good fun, John Landis. I was about to say a sexy teenage double bill, but that sounds a bit wrong. That, that does sound wrong. I don't mean and that in any you'd... different sense. I mean, when I was a teenager, not like I'm looking at teenagers. Okay, right, then that's all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the that's the intro. Let's, uh, should we go Let's into the Let's have the outro. <laughs> <laughs> should we go into the uh, woods and uh, do a little bit of bear witching? I'm kind of excited and happy that we're going back to Burkittsville and we're we're going back to the witch. And there's something comfortable about the name Burkittsville. I like it. Mm, let's go for a weekend camping in Burkittsville. All right, here's a trailer. Let's do it. Last summer, after the crowds left, five strangers returned to the woods to uncover the truth. But one of them has a secret that will unlock the curse. You know, if you don't believe in the Blair Witch, then why the hell did you bother to come? I thought the movie was cool. This fall, just in time for Halloween, the witch is back. October 27th, forget everything you've heard. Forget everything you've seen. Because this time, the truth is scarier than fiction. A brutal murder in the Black Hills discovered today. In the past year, the Black Hills area has been overrun with movie fans wanting to get a glimpse of where the Blair Witch Project was filmed. We're back again. Blair Witch 2, Book of Shadows, is a movie from 19... No, it isn't. 2000. It's from the year 2000, which once upon a time sounded fantastical and futuristic with robots with lasers for eyes. But Why? it ended up not being like that at all. Anyway, this movie is a group of tourists arrive in Burkittsville, Maryland, after seeing the Blair Witch Project. Ooh, bit of messiness going on in this film. Uh, they go there to explore the mythology and the phenomenon, only to come face to face with their own neurosis and possibly the witch herself. It's that, meta! Uh, it's very meta. Now... This is actually, even though it is a 4.4 out of 10, this is, sorry, 4 out of 10, 0.4 less, this is actually a good way of evolving and coming out subtly, in a little way, from a found footage movie. We're coming into some people who have seen that move, the found footage thing, and they've gone and done this, these crimes, 
and someone's come along and said we could make a fictional movie out of these characters and get actors to play the movie it Great. works apart from right at the end which I'll say now as soon as the credits come they should have had a little bit of black with white credits saying uh, following what happened you know with the actors now, with the people now so and so is currently in prison for they missed that trick it went straight to credits I think it's actually a very well done film. Eduardo Sanchez is actually a producer on this film. He is one of yeah. one of the directors and producers of the original film. And that's why I think some of the little sneaky things which we come across as we talk about it, some of the little points and stuff and some of the little bits they do things, actually kind of clever. I like the for example, all the actors' real names are their names. Mm-hmm. So I would imagine it's the same with Eduardo Sanchez and uh, the other guy. I feel so bad that I can't think of the other guy's director's name of the original Blair Witch. Can you find it out for me? Yeah, sure. Give me a moment. I, I like the fact that they took that movie with these guys and said, "There's just there you go, there's a map, go out there. And they filmed it proper guerrilla style, like in a distance. Kept their distance from the actors. Let them go slightly insane and get really method with it. Giving all the actors in this name their own actual name as their character name is another way of going that way with the, the, the producing of it to get a different more film out of it, but something which is a little bit more realistic than it would be. Do you understand? I do understand. Little tricks here and there just to keep get the actor into a different type of uh, setting in their head, you know? More, reali- Daniel more Mir- realism. Sorry? Daniel Merrick. Okay, I, I think it's because Eduardo has gone on to do a lot more things people know of, like exists, exists, etc. Sure. So I think he, um, uh, you know, he's done TV sh- uh, episodes and stuff of well-known shows. Uh, Dan, do you like this film? So I fucking love this film. Let me talk about this just for a little moment, if I may. Mm-hmm. We said in the intro, how could you possibly cover what is possibly the greatest found footage film of all time? Definitely may not be the most the first one but it is the most the one that everyone thinks of the answer is you don't follow it up you don't do a found footage film agree you very cleverly and in some ways and i'm going to go on record to say this some ways ahead of their time they said okay people now know it's a found footage movie let's go even more meta than than that and let's go into a film about a film that wasn't real, but people think it's real. And in this film, they think it's real, but it isn't. Blah, 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 blah. And they go into it so much so that they then create just a standard horror film, which it seems a standard horror film, about some guys, you know, trying to hunt down an urban legend. It just links into Blair Witch. And I think it's actually a little bit ahead of its time. Throw in the fact that this was only made a year later after the Blair Witch. So it was rushed, but... Sometimes that Still can clever. work. Still clever. I think. I think because they didn't have a lot of time, they just went with their gut and their heart. And what I really like is, if you're a fan of the Blair Witch, this has got a lot of very subtle. You've touched on this subtle little nods. There's a couple of lines from the first film that are repeated in different ways, and also. You might not have seen the first one. In 2000, you might have just gone to the cinema and thought, I'll go check this movie out, Blair Witch 2. You come out of that and think, wow, oh, I need to go and watch that first one. That sounds good. So it's a, it's almost a good advertisement for the first one in some ways as well. Okay. I I and... think I think you're right in that. I, I like the fact that they've gone like, let's roll with the fact that this movie came out and all these people were thought it was real. Let's go with just that imagining it is real and we keep that and we make a movie so we can start the film which they do with very 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 well known uh, TV hosts and TV shows mm-hmm. going on there but, and reviewers it... saying talking about the original Blair Witch then going into subtly revolving into news reports obviously made they've made themselves news reports of of these of an event that's happened basically, and just what's going on and of the first film and that. And then, then cut into that the town of Burkittsville with interviews and VHS-style cameras, interviews with one of the main actors of the film, with different people, like they did in The Blair Witch, and then slowly go into proper filming style, like, and evolve just into the movie. It's, it's great. It's like it, almost like a Netflix documentary or something, you know? They could have done a found-footage sequel, 
and it does work. Paranormal Activity has many sequels, and they're all very good. And everybody, like waiting for Michael Myers and Season of the Witch, everybody probably wanted the found footage style for this film. And they do use it, cut in it yep. here and there, but it's a traditional movie. I think the motif here and that's the why first one, it probably I think the link bad. and the motif from the first one to this one is cameras and footage, because specifically towards yeah. the end, when, and, we, when we get back to Jeffrey's... Jeff's and they sit in his editing bay... Yeah, yeah, and there's CCTV, uh, and and this is why even probably this film would appeal even more so to you, Gab, because you are an editor and a filmmaker, um, and so you would probably really even more attach yourself to those things as well. You know? Yeah, indeed. And, oh, well, I made a meta found footage film, which involved both types of did. types of films in in that, which is pretty natural on Amazon Prime. Check it out. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I. I dig the way they've done this. I really like. I think I can tell then why it was this so much. You know, I can understand that. And and yeah, you might look at this movie and go, "It's not that good." But actually, watch the movie. It's kind of a fun film. There's nothing in which is that bad. Come on, there's a lot of movies that bad. Sorry, it's kind of fucking dark as well, man. Because they deal with a lot of themes in this of like, um, not abortion, but losing a child, like miscarriage. I was wondering why that was in there. I was like, this is a dark scene to go. They deal with some dark stuff in this and this film feels i know cause it's not fan footage but you come out of this i always come out of this film feeling like i've just watched something that was a little bit real much like the blair witch the original one and it, i shouldn't feel that way but it's because there's such good performances from these actors who i've not really seen them very much to be honest with you mm. um but there's fantastic performances in this and they really sell it to me and as they fall further and further into like tiredness despair um they're they're scared for their lives and i'm really i'm really into it the last thing i'll say before we get into the review because we are sucking this film's dick a lot but i think it deserves to have a good blowjob this film um sorry that was quite graphic and i do apologize um it's fine what i would say what i would say is the other reason i love this film is i bought it bought it on dvd uh, and I know you were going to talk about this in a moment as well, Gav. I bought it on DVD when it came out, literally on the day it came out, because um, I loved it. I saw it in the cinema probably twice, I think. And back when my me and my sister would hang out loads and watch horror movies, I spend the whole weekend. You know, I'd go to her flat, her apartment, and she'd be like, "Let's, you know, let's line up six films that Saturday sorted." And this was one of the ones we watched a lot. And part of the reason we liked it was there's a feature on the DVD. I, Which I, think... I, I tried to do it, me and Sarah tried to do it last night and I got well confused. I started rewinding it back and okay. I don't know what I was looking at. I was like, what? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> well, there's a couple of features on the DVD, actually. One of them is it explains to you all the hidden clues that show you that the witch is in every scene and she's always watching da 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 da. That's fun, that's cool. And then there's another, there's a game you can play where in certain scenes, if you find a certain letter, in different scenes, you can spell out a word that links it's, you to something it's else. It's way it's too much word, uh, word. Don't forget, man. dude. Dude, don't forget. This is 2000. DVDs were just really a thing, and they were playing around with what features you could and get And you on probably wouldn't be using the internet as much as you would now. You yeah, know. I didn't have the internet in 2000, so I was watching this. Like, me and my sister were rewinded it. Go to, okay, go to chapter four. It said go to chapter four. And we go there, and then we pause it at, like, 32 seconds that ended up right right down what it said and it was this awesome game and we did that over and over and over again and that's another reason this has stuck with me it yeah. still haunts me it, it's, a, it's a fun film um, you know let's get into it mate let's get into it you ready to rock and roll I'm ready to rock and roll yeah so, so I think at the beginning we get the writing that says this is a fictional reenactment. So just to confuse you even further, this film we're about to watch is a fictional reenactment of something that actually has happened. Yeah. Which is to say that this is a fictional reenactment of a fictional reenactment of a fictional reenactment. Am I right? Uh, you're, you're losing me, so I'm not going to get into that, in that at all. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I did. I found that quite interesting this beginning bit, and this is why I said you need to bookend it. You need to have a black card with right text at the end of the film to sort of conclude it, and they missed out on that. They really did. Um, 
Yeah, that's what happens. So we start off with that thing. And like I said, we go through the different procedures of the uh, the, the popular TV host to the uh, news footage of the phenomenon and people being pissed off at people coming to their town and using it for a film setting and, and yeah. like, oh, can you get out of our town? And people and locals are annoyed of the and it's got very popular and stuff so we're we're as a viewer we're aware that the we're going with the whole hype of the Blair Witch being real which at one point that was a thing people were thinking that because they they famously used for the first film they famously used the internet for the first time for uh promoting it in a way um a, a certain way which wasn't being done we were saying that these people have gone missing and using the internet like, and that was like oh my god you know that's crazy that's almost that's a, that was a one shot they had because the internet obviously the, the way it is now you can't you can't fake anything now. that's why that's why i was really intrigued of the marketing type campaign and the ideas behind the blair witch of the recent one Mm, yeah, it was really interesting how they could do it, and obviously how they did it was they didn't tell anybody about it. So it was a movie called The Woods. That and then all of a sudden people go into cinema and they're just they're waiting for The Woods to come up, and all of a sudden boom, it come up. So that hit the internet all at the same time at once. That was cool. That's they even that changed is kind the, of clever. They even changed the posters at Friday Fest, didn't they? Whilst the cat, well, whilst everyone was in watching, the uh, it film. wasn't Friday Fest. It was a, uh, it was wherever it premiered in America. Oh, they they changed sorry. the posters in there while the people, and when it came out, it said Blow Witch. And so they were like, "What the fuck?" It, that must have been kind of cool, kind of weird, uh, very clever yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, a good way of doing marketing Bur- for it. It's a very clever marketing campaign still to do that. So yeah, sorry, Karen. That's right. No, so people are coming to Burkittsville. They're kind of sick of the fact that this film, The Blair Witch Project, that came out the year before, people are like now coming there. People are offering to buy rocks and soil. And there's one woman who's like, yeah, that's cool. They come here and they buy rocks from my garden. I'm like, um, $3 a rock. So people can go away with like a bit of rock from, you know, Burkittsville, Maryland, where The Blair Witch took place. So that's cool. We get to meet Jeff. He, Jeff this is a hairy motherfucker. Jeff is a hairy motherfucker. Do you look at his arms? Yeah, he's got, he's got Robin Williams' arms, doesn't he? Yeah, but you know, definitely, they had to shave his back and stuff. Later on, he's got this little triangle on his back where they shaved it, where they had to have the scars on there, the uh, the the pagan-type symbols that they're saying that they are. And you can see Robin Williams' shaves. arms are some of the hairiest arms I've ever they, seen. They were some very, very hairy arms. But this dude is a, is a bit like this as well, and uh, I yeah. don't know why uh, he's got some hairy arms. Well, I'd never noticed this before, but thank you for this. Is what this I'm telling range. you. Doing reviews, see, this is a traditional <laughs> reviewer for the Times or the Evening Standard or something. Cause I'm probably not going to pick up or, or decide to tell everybody that he's got some hairy arms, that guy. But I'm going to do that because we like to give the kind of backstreet trash review of, of, of movies, don't we, Dan? The, the kind of hairy armed review. Exactly, the sort of review where you get mentions of other, hairy arms. Other reviewers will talk about mise en scene and, you know, this, that and the other, and we're just like, that guy's got really hairy back. Yeah. Um, Jeff lives in Burkittsville, and he is cashing in on what's going on. He knows everyone there. People are driving by. He's like, hey, Janet, nice to see you. Beep, beep, beep. As she drives by. And he's making stick figures and he's talking to the camera saying, yeah, it's cool, man. I make these stick and figures. And we don't know, them. though, he's going to be one of the main guys in the film yet. We're just, he's just lumped in with all these other guys there interviewing and ladies and et cetera. Um, and I thought it was interesting to watch this, round, this time around because I knew that this time around. So I'm like, oh, yeah, because I can't remember the last time I saw this movie. Over 10 years, you know. Um... But yeah, then it cuts to him and VHS footage of having a psychiatric ward and psychiatric footage, uh, like someone's camera, of a big tube going down his nose. So it's like, oh god, who's that guy again? So Gav, this is quite intense. Let's describe this. I'm glad for I didn't see it on my uh, on my projector, man. So they basically, I don't know what this procedure is. I don't know if they're trying to get him to eat or what. Um, but basically, what are you doing? Why do you keep clapping? That's a fly. It's doing my head in. I'm just trying to be Mr. Miyagi. Um, so. But they, they hold him down and they put this tube, they lubricate the tube first. So it's quite graphic. We get all the lube on the tube. We've all been there. And they pump it down his throat, his nose, I guess, in, directly into his stomach. And then they get this juice. Now, what's worse about this is all the time this is happening, the doctor's got a cigarette hanging out his mouth with his ash just dropping off of it onto Jeff's face. And they pour this sort of soup slop into a funnel that goes down the tube into his nose and then you see him going oh, 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 and he's like swallowing it down 
I don't know what this procedure is. And what would it be in that fluid? I don't understand. Um, it, it looked like it, semen. Uh, th- then we get the credits come up. Um, and this is where we can go. Hashtag easy Marilyn Manson. Now, before you get to Marilyn Manson... And it's the first time I've heard Manson in ages, actually. Before you get to Manson, we did miss out one other character. Yeah. Sheriff Craven. Sheriff Craven, really? Yeah. Who's very angry. I didn't know that. Goddamn people are coming to my goddamn town. He will come up with this quite a lot, Sheriff Craven. But Sheriff Craven is a reoccurring side character that will pop up quite a lot. And for anybody that's seen The Shadow of Death... I had no idea that, that guy. Shadow in the title, the Shadow of Death. Yeah, I had no idea. Shadows. Yeah, I had. This is this is news to me. Ten years from making the, that film, by the way. But yes, you are right. Credits, and I've written Marilyn Manson, awkward. Yeah, it's the first time I heard the song, and then and ended up sort of tapping my feet to it because it's just a bit like it's a good song. I do like the song. It's a good song. Disposable teens, disposable teens. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. So, but, you know. Manson. Just got a warrant out for his arrest. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, they just put a warrant out for his arrest. Uh, I don't know the details. All I know is that he apparently tortured that lady um, with drugs, alcohol, and electricity. So, what a lovely man. Um, there we go. We do cut now to Jeff in a police interview room. But we're, throughout this movie, we're going to have the different, a few of the different cast members being all of a sudden spliced very quickly into the interview room and spliced back out before we know what's going on. The very much the editing style of this movie, they have made it very documentary-esque. And I like that because I, I like the gorilla kind of rough around the edges editing style. I, I enjoy doing that myself and making documentary stuff. And um, I think this this would confuse the first time watcher, uh, but possibly, but not enough to put them off because we get a little flash forward, flashback, flash forward, flashback. There is a main story which we get to in a moment, but we do get a lot of flashes forwards. And this point, they say to Jeff, "What happened, Jeff? Tell us. There's blood in the van. Whose blood is it in the van?" So we never to him in Ooh. a van driving a van, which is very oh, good because. Shit. And he runs a tours, the Blair Witch Hunt tours. Uh, so, you know, Blair Witch film is real. We've got this dude who lives in Burkittsville, who's capitalising on the phen- phenomena of the famous popularity of the first film and taking people on tours to there. So he has in his van, it's just a regular kind of Scooby Doo type van or 18 van, you know. <laughs> he has. Um, he has, like, two sets of customers at the moment. There's a man and a woman. Um, customers? <laughs> clients. They're clients, though, aren't they? They're there to go on a tour, aren't they? Uh, they're right. They are customers. They're yeah, tourists. they're customers. They're clients. They're, they're, they're punters, we, as punters. we could call them. Let's call them, let's call them fucking punters, mate. Yeah? Hang on. Within the last minute, you've literally said to me, Scooby-Doo, 18 customers. I was trying to say to you, Leprechaun 2, that van that that guy drives, that hearse that that guy drives around. Yeah, yeah. That's all good. But then you've you've taken it to another level now where I'm picturing the A team versus the Scooby gang going on a, t- a hunt somewhere. Anyway, maybe sorry about maybe that. you can mix them up. Hey, that's oh, oh maybe we should mix vans up. So you got like BA with Felma and just mix up them and they go on little ventures. Anyway. I'd be with BA and Scooby. BA and Scooby, they could make a series just like that, can you? Scooby and BA Yeah. You need to stop food. eating so much food. You need to think about where the ghosts are coming from. God Ooh, damn it. Okay, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Shut up, God damn it. So he has his tours, Blair Witch Hunt tours, in his Scooby van. Um, they're, they're on their way to a graveyard to pick up a super cool goth chick. She's super well, cool. Let's talk about these characters very quickly. Let's talk about these characters. So we've got two writers they're writing a book they're a married couple and they're writing a book um on the blair witch the, the what's her name um i can't remember her name now it comes it's almost up like you're a doing lot. a talk show then like they're a married couple judith and john from D- dunstable come on let, down and let's bring out judith's lover let's bring him out everybody ooh, ooh. <laughs> dairy, dairy, dairy. <laughs> Dan's dating oh, Jerry, show. Jerry Springer, what a load of shit. Um, yes, so we get these two writers, they're a married couple, and we also get this very sexy redhead 
I must say, <laughs> sorry, I've gone a bit flustered, uh, called Erica, who is a Wiccan. She's a witch. She, yeah, and, she, she is a, a pretty young lass. And part of the reason I bought the DVD in 2000. <laughs> really now? Because you, you see her boobies as well at one point. And then the next point, she has she hair. Has well. She has oh, hair on her really? boobs. Did you see that? The next time that she's topless on the bridge, there's yeah, they hair. Pin, they pin hair on her boobs so you can't see them. They also go and pick up another girl um, from the graveyard. This is the goth chick. And Super again, cool goth Gab, chick chilling on a grave, dude. Kim, her name is. And again, I I think she's a bit right, this goth chick. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't mind. Yeah, a goth chick. Yeah, but you know what? I kind of dig that. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. You're anyway, getting all very flustered, aren't you? So they pick her up. She's lying on a graveyard, all being all cool. Yeah. And they're like, Kim. And she's like, yeah. And they, she, he says, oh, I've got loads of weed and loads of booze. She's like, let's go. So this is a great tour because the, the tour guide picks you up, literally pulls you up off the gravestone and says, get in my van. I've got weed and I've got booze. And that van, how cool is that van? It's a badass van. Camo paint job and it's basically yeah. an a-team scooby van that is so good why is he painted it in camo i don't know i like it they've to hide it in the woods isn't it when he's doing the tours now he does drop a bollock as we say in the uk here he does uh you know put himself in it throw himself under the bus because as they take off in the bus in the um van he says well hopefully this all goes okay how many have you done of these jeff how many tours uh this is my first one so they're all like, what the fuck? Yeah. And he says, he says, we're all virgins in this van. <laughs> he he's, he does a lot of things, Jeff. He's literally in the, the Honest Thief, which I watched recently, uh, with Liam Neeson on uh, uh, Prime. He's in that. I'm sorry, Gavin. It wasn't a very good movie, by the way. Did you just mention Liam Neeson? I know. It was a bit like, I was like, yeah, no, it's a Liam Neeson film. Put it on like a new action movie. And it was just a bit like, I knew it was going to be, it's going to be a bit of a 5.5, maybe a 6 out of 10, but bleh, you know, you don't have to watch it. You could, you could happily live your life without watching it. So here we go. First ever tour for Jeff. They're all, they're all on board. So we've got four tour guide, four tourists and a tour guide. And we're off. And they stop at a shop. And they get to the convenience store to pick up some booze and some food and some stuff. And everyone's really staring at them. No one likes them. Partly because they're a bunch of crazy-looking rednecks. This is the locals, not the people that have stopped at the shop. And secondly, because they're fed up with all of these Blair Witch people coming to their bloody town. And, you know... Oh, have you seen the Blair Witch? No, have you seen the Blair Witch? Where's the Blair Witch from? Oh, let's go out and find the Blair Witch. They hate all this shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Absolutely. It's like it's like people coming to Bristol and... Oh, I don't actually know what it's like because there's so many things in Bristol that... Have you been to the SS Great Britain? Yes, I've been to the SS Great Britain. Oh, right. Have you been to the... Yes, I've been to that. Thank you. What have you got in Farnham? What, landmarks like a, a, a something where a tourist would come to? Yeah. For a castle, maybe. Haven't you got the Devil's Anus or something there? Oh, uh, no, but that's not anywhere near. So Wave of the Abbey ruins, possibly the ruins which are in uh, The Mummy, that Tom Cruise crashes his aeroplane there, those ruins. That's Where's it. the Devil's Anus, then? That, you, you mean the Devil's Backbone? No, the, uh, the Devil's Jumps. Oh, uh, Devil's Punch Bowl. Devil's Punch Bowl, that's way out. That's like a, about 10 miles Devil's from Devil's Anus, that's something else, sorry. It's another type of a uh, tourist event. So they start hiking through the woods <laughs> to find the devil's anus in the woods. No, they start hiking through the woods, and Kim, she just knows, man. She says, "So when are you due?" And the girl's like, "What?" And she's like, "You're, You're pregnant. pregnant, aren't you?" Yes. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to have it, do you? No, I don't. How did you know? I don't know. Spooky oh, gaff. I know, I know. And they arrive at the ruins of the house. And there's a big fucking tree right in the fucking middle. This weren't here before, everybody. Danny Dyer's arrived, apparently, guys. Fucking hell. Blair fucking, fucking witch. Fucking hell. What's a fucking tree here? Blair witch hunt. More like the Blair witch fucking cunt, if you ask me. I'll fucking smash him. <laughs> fucking done him, I have. I'll fucking knock um, you, I will. <laughs> so, yes, they arrive at this uh, old house. Ruins, which is where Heather's Heather, being the 
the, the uh, lead lady from the first movie. This is apparently where her footage was found. But, like Jeff says, like Gav just said, Jeff says, hang on a minute, guys. There's a fucking tree growing out of the house. Yeah, yeah, nice one, Jeff. I suppose you, you do that to try and make us feel a bit scared. And he's like, well, no, take a second. Why would you build a house with a tree going up through the middle of it? And he's quite right. You know, why would you? He doesn't, really seem, he doesn't seem too bothered. I would be totally freaked out as in, like, this is fucking weird as shit because this tree looks like it's been here for hundreds of years. Uh, that, would, that would freak me out enough to go, like, let's get the fuck out of the woods. We've seen enough films, I'd say to you. Excuse me, Gab, I've just shot myself. Can well, we, if the uh... Blair Witch was real and actually happened there, would you actually go, yeah, let's go, oh, there's a tree here, that wasn't here. Oh, hmm. You'd be like, I think we should leave. But then again, he's money orientated, isn't he? Spoiler alert, there is a really good orgy coming up, which I probably would go there for. Especially as you could get flustered over the two ladies in it. Yep. So, uh, what, where are we at? Oh, yeah, they keep having visions of weird slaughters and people being disemboweled. Well, they, well, they don't have visions. They're the shots that just get spliced into the film. We're watching the reenactment. We're watching. We're essentially watching. If, if you watch, look at this movie, don't look at the traditional movie. Look at it pretending you're watching a Netflix limited series. I think it's good, good way of looking at that because it has all these living things spliced in here and there. At times, some of the splicing in the some of the sections look like Rob Zombie's guest directed them. Like, really look like a Rob Zombie movie. It's a bit like you'd easily think it's Sherry Moon, especially the orgy scenes. That that stuff's yeah. like, what the fuck? That could be Sherry Moon doing that. It's yeah, because really there's weird. some black and white stuff in there as well. And, yeah, 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 it's really good. Um, but yeah, so Jeff Jeff's basically setting up a load of VHS cameras. Well, they're, they're not completely standard VHS. Um, they were this, this H- is two thousand. Well, Tell they're me. they're HD tapes, so they are um they're high definition tapes, but they are still tape quality. This, isn't there something so nostalgic about the technology that he's using? Absolutely, in, yeah. Twenty one years ago, you know, this is what he had the highest techest stuff he's got. I've, so I've, I've watched cool. I've watched YouTube videos where people go and p- p- pick up old school camcorders, then modify them with stuff so it works better now, but different way to put a battery pack on it and stuff, which is a lot better. Um, so they can then record it actually straight to HD and put a hard drive on a VHS oh, nice. camcorder. And then they put a different lens on it, but you still got the mechanism of it all. So it's really funny. So they can record these things. It's a lot of work to do that. But yeah, you know, I love the look of the, that we get from this stuff, you know. On a, on, on a side note, and I know we just touched on it earlier, but on a side note, you know, as much as I love this film and I was really excited when I found out a few years ago that you love this film too, actually, I've not really thought about, again, from your side of things, being somebody that dabbles and edits. Oh, I love that shit. Yeah. Always have done. I've I've come to realise, especially even just getting into this conversation today, how much you would probably even... I think you'd probably love this film even more than me. There's a lot going on here that I would love if I was a filmmaker. It's yeah, really fun. I, I, I always appreciate movies which are uh, acknowledging editing and stuff like that and have that in He the seems film. to know what he's talking about as well. Um, yeah, it, uh, well, at one point he says, hang on, I want to... When he sees the f- blurred footage of some, uh, the woman, da- Erica, dancing naked... Um, but he's, he says, hang on, I'm going to um, change this section and uh, just take me a moment just to uh, blow it up to a, a higher definition, which he, he, he can't really do. Um, but what he says, all of the wording and the stuff he says is actually spot on. Like, yeah. that, that's none of it out there because you often get a load of gibbity gook type weird nonsense. Yeah. Um, uh, which is just like that doesn't make sense. You can't do that, especially especially in the eighties where you had like, hang on a minute, pause, resume in on yeah, that guy, zoom do straight it. into there, and it's like, it's like, it's there's like no on, way that C- yeah, no way that CCTV <laughs> footage can do that. Perfect crystal clear. It's I like, no, no. That. exactly. Now reverse, now reverse the frame. Now zoom in on his eye. Hang on a minute. Yes, there's a mirror behind him. Go to the mirror. Flip the mirror around. Hang on a minute. This is an Arnold movie from so, 1986. You can't do any of this. No, exactly. But so essentially, with this, though, he can do. You can make uh, footage a little bit clearer, but it does make it. It starts to make it slowly more and more computerized because you're filling in the, the areas that aren't there with digital lines you know so um he could he could essentially kind of blow it up a little bit more um so yeah that's that's what goes on later on that's not yet though is it that's a little bit later so we find out a little bit more about the character specifically erica here because erica reveals that she her reason for coming on this tour is she wants to communicate with ellie kedward who is the original blair witch 
And they sort of say to her, well, hang on a minute, she's dead. And she says, yeah, it's fine. She's going to teach me the ways of the witch, of the Wiccan, and I'll communicate with her. Hmm. So that's a bit weird. Hmm. Um, and they, then, Gav? They, yeah, they now sort of set up tents, don't they? And then, and then this, is, this is a mixture. I know this mixture doesn't work. Well, I, I've seen it happen many times and things. It's, it's just a combination you can tell isn't going to work. Bongs and Jack Daniels. Yeah, that is not... Bongs yeah. and Jack Daniels. That beers, is beers and splits. Beers and joints. Bongs yeah. and Jack Daniels is just like that. That's it, that's going too far. You're gonna really, really have a pull a whitey. Oh, you're gonna say. puke your guts up and, and hate you're it be for very a while. ill. Yeah, absolutely. That's just not something you should do. But they do. They get all a bit crazy, don't they? Now, Jeff. Jeff's actually there with two females, really, essentially, isn't he? <laughs> so I bet he's yes. like, yes, oh, I'm gonna get some again and get me some. Well, they have this great, this great discussion around the campfire while they're all getting stoned and drunk, and it's quite. It makes you kind of really feel like you're in at one of these discussions, really, at a party, you know, where everyone's sitting around, and it's quite. It's got a very inviting party feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they talk about witches, they talk about fear. Well, at one point, they start talking about the Bermuda Triangle, and there's a lot of people there, very open ideas that this were sat around this campfire. Obviously, this is why they're all on the Blair Witch Hunt. And it's a really interesting little scene, actually. Um, and they sort of, oh, yeah, this is fantastic. You know, this, that, and the other. Then they hear a noise, Gav. Well, they hear a scream, what, don't they? And what the fuck is it? Well, it is another tour. It's the Blair Witch Walk. So... Big, and we know that the popularity of this, we've got now a couple of other guys that come up, kind of hick type guys, that are just like, hey, no, we've got this tour. What are you doing here? You got here first with. Um... They've got two Chinese, uh, a Chinese couple. Yeah. And a German girl. Yeah. And they're like really excited. And then they bumped into this other bunch of people that are sat at the actual ruins. Yeah. Of the blow and they're like, ah, oh. it's they, like a, but they it's sort of, like a, a tour off, isn't it? It is a little bit, but they kind of <laughs> con them and say, oh, don't. But we've had a weird look. Let's have tonight. We we pack up in the morning and go because. Look, we saw something like a coffin rock and it shit us up. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We saw something up there shit us up. And, oh, yeah, they do really oh, well. Can we yeah, go like... to coffin rock? Can we go to coffin rock? The, the, the other punters say to them. Because Kim steps up, she goes, "Please, can we not talk about it? I, it's I really just want to go to sleep." Me. Yeah. And, and they do a really great job. And again, this is a, something that we hear now from the first film, Coffin Rock. You hear that and you think straight away, shit, that links into the first film. That I know that that's really bad. Oh, I don't that's remember what... that. I don't remember Coffin Rock. What was that from the first film? It's where they talked about... They talk about it in the first film with all the bodies in a pentagram. Um, I'm sure Heather talks about it at one point. Yeah, you don't see do. anything, obviously, yeah. but because it's the first film. But yeah, it links it in again. Um, and that's really cool. But then... When they leave, Kim does a really weird thing where she just says, they're never coming back. No. And everyone looks at her like, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah, totally. But then they just carry on partying. They do. They have a lovely little party. Things get really messy. I, I put here, things get messy. Montage of partying. Owl. And then more stabbing. And then another shot of the owl. Kim's having a drink on her own, sort of sat on a rock. And morning arrives. And Just before morning, though. We're bluffed into thinking it's the morning. Um, yeah. We have the the pregnant, uh, the, well, the pregnant lady um, who... Tristan. Tristan. She goes uh, into the water and essentially has an abortion? A uh, miscarriage. Into a miscarriage, yeah. right. Okay, I didn't understand the, the... And I was like, straight away, I was like, this is a bit fucking dark and a bit deep. Like, well, why are we here with this? I couldn't really remember, like, the, this storyline being involved. It's interesting to put this storyline in there. Um, I wonder if it was something which felt very... Um, totally wrong word to say there. This was very, uh, like, a personal thing for one of the writers. Or, well, I think... Um, you know, or was what, it... You know, why, why would you go there? I think... I think if we may then talk about that, the, for my theory, is they've all got a vulnerability that the witch taps into. Okay. So Jeff, Jeff's got mental health issues. Kim is very insecure. She's a goth. She doesn't really know. She hates herself, but she kind yeah. of she tries to s segregate herself. Then you've got Tristan and her husband who are writing a book on the brooch, but they're obviously not happy. She doesn't want the baby. He does. So they've got that going on. Okay. And then, of course, you've got Erica who 
I don't really know what her... She probably doesn't have that many problems, but she's kind of like the one that the witch can probably tap into the most because she's a Wiccan. I think she, she, I, think she I think she probably has some... Uh, something from when she's growing up. I reckon there's some problems there. The characters are a little bit more flushed out on your average horror movie because this is why this movie doesn't really give it its due. Like, there is more stuff going on than the average horror film. Um, Agreed. They have tried a little bit with this. It was just unfortunately... I think, I think anyone listening does find this film a little bit shit or they just don't dig it or they remember it being oh god that movie or, give it another go but try to ignore really the whole Blair Witch aesthetic with the found footage and just try and watch this as a film now it's nice I'm quite enjoying going back to a lot of the 90s films I kind of dismissed because we had so many so we'd watch it once and never go back to it watching them again now you're like it's not a bad film you know I agree, I agree. Um, and then, and again, very original, this next scene now, because then we get the real morning, and they wake up, and all the documentation that the that Tristan and her bloke um, have written, I can't remember his name now for some reason, um, everything they've written is ripped to tiny, tiny shreds. It's, it's like it's, it's snowing. kind of like Silent Hill, where you think it's snowing, it's ash. Um, I really yeah. like this bit, because it looks like it's snowing, because if for a second, if you just forget it, it's like, this is a lot of paper. How much effort would I have to the production team taken to tidy that up afterwards or do you think they just fucking didn't, didn't bother or it's, it could even be a studio lot anyway um, that forest setting so not only is all of the paperwork shredded but all the cameras are trashed mm. and smashed up mm. and which obviously Jeff is fuming about he's running around going well, it's all the their work isn't it and that's why they're there so they're just like you know we're absolutely fucked now but really you, you didn't have that backed up like it that's, was, that's it was the year two thousand though, wasn't it? You could have photocopied it. That's amateur hour, honestly. Yeah. Well, then Kim does a funny thing again, where she senses that the tapes are nearby, and they will look at her like, "What are you talking about? The cameras are trash." She's like, "Yeah, but the tapes aren't. They're look, nearby." Look in that hole, it. and so he looks in the hole, pulls out a tapes. No, 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 go a little bit further. Pulls out a tapes. And they're like, "How do you know this?" And they're like, "How did you know this?" Because it is a little bit sketchy. It's like, come on, why? Like, this is all fucked. We don't know what happened. We need to get back now because we can't check these tapes out because the cameras are fucked. We need to get back to my editing suite. Let's go to my crazy layer of knocked off technology I've got in there he said, so he's got like a car boot sale in his place hasn't he like a sketchy market he does he's basically eBay he's basically Del Boy but very quickly I think the reason why that heard saying oh I know where the tapes are but I can't explain it <clears throat> the witch is trying to make them all paranoid against each other which certainly comes to light later on when people start dying so I think the witch is starting to make them all a bit more paranoid of each other by tapping into these vulnerabilities they've all got. Yeah, yeah. As we go on. So, like, she's already now opened Kim up, so they're all thinking, well, this is probably Kim then. If Kim knew the tapes were there, she, she must be something to do with this. But then, then they later blame on... the other group, though. Then they're like, it must be the other tourist group we saw last night. Yeah, totally. which is more, Which is more plausible. Well, suddenly, and, for, and rather unfortunately, dreams do come true for, for Tristan because she starts to miscarriage. Um... And she starts bleeding out in the woods. So, like, we need to get her to hospital. We need to get her to hospital immediately. Cut so there we go. back to the police station interview room. And he can now continue what we spliced in earlier and say the blood in the van was from her. Yep. Not this. It's craving. It's I craving quite interviewing. like this, yeah. this thing. We're jumping back to that now just for a second of coming out. Less is more. I, I, I kind of like this. Tristan has a vision of a creepy little girl. The creepy little girl says... You brought it back with you. Yeah. And she's kind of filmed backwards, so it kind of makes it feel a bit weird. So, yeah, um, they leave the hospital. They can't really go anywhere um, because they're in the middle of nowhere, hick town nowhere. But so they, they had five hours unaccounted for. So they yeah. don't know what happens. So they need to get on these tapes. So he's got, you know, if you've got multiple tapes and it's five hours to watch, you can only watch them in real time. So, or no, he, if it's just static CCTV footage, I guess you could forge through it because it could look the same until something came into frame. But you need to stare at it for that whole time it's forging. 
or you watch it the whole time. That's five hours and how many tapes? Do you know what I mean? So he's got his workout out for him. So I know this type of thing as an editor, getting the coffee down you and just going, right, here we go. This is my list of things I've got to do and just sitting there and sitting there and watching and watching. And he's just, he start, almost starts to hallucinate at times, doesn't he? From just like lack well, of sleep. I- I think this is probably what it is because they're all kind of got that Nightmare on Elm Street thing going on now where they're all having to stay awake and they're all very paranoid. Let's talk briefly, though, about Jeff's castle that he lives in, his old converted factory that he bought for a dollar. It's a shame you don't see a good exterior setting shot when they go there. It's a bit wag. Do you know what I mean? So he bought this old factory off of the government for a dollar because they were going to trash it. And there's a bridge going over to it because it's the only way in. Um, he's got fake dog sounds when you open the door. Yeah, as a warning. Scare away intruders. Yeah. Uh, there's CCTV all over the place. Um, and yes, Gav, as you said, he's a bit of a dull boy. When he walks in, he's got boxes everywhere of VCRs, TVs, you know, just loads of electronic goods. Blair Witch memorabilia. Yeah, Blair Witch memorabilia. Yeah, Blair Witch memorabilia. Yeah. He's got a Blair Witch shop. He's very proud of his shop. He shows them so, the stick figures. So him himself is very ahead of his time. If he's selling a notice shit on eBay at that point. Tristan and her husband, Steve, say, we're going to go to bed. It's been obviously a long day. They've lost a child. Fucking hell, that's rough. Go to bed, please. By why, can't, why don't they go home? I don't understand. I'm not sure either. Because you would. You wouldn't just go stay at... So, like, the lady would want to be in her own bed. I wouldn't go back to Jeff's factory. Fuck for that. The PCRs. Go back to my factory. No, not really. No. No, no thanks. Um... So, yes, this is where they start watching the tapes, as you mentioned. And we're going to be there for a while, like you say, because they've got a lot of footage to get through. But Kim has a rash. Yeah. And she sort of notices it. She doesn't really think much of it. Then on the tapes, hang on a minute, where's that tree? That tree that we saw in the middle of the, the ruins isn't there anymore. It's just a very thin... One young of, looking tree one of jeff's tapes um does that basically um uh and he goes oh maybe we can uh, check from another angle no the tree was fucking huge you can see the tree's not there and here is a here's a little tip for him from an editor to an editor if you want to watch the footage quicker just go to the end of the tape and watch it backwards it's, perfect it's, You'd, you'd probably get it, get it full of footage in like half an hour and go, okay, I know what happened. Fucking That's a brilliant trick. There no, you go, guys. What a dickhead. If you ever need to know where a tree vanished to, go to the end of well, the Well, at least you'd see what happened to the cameras. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah. That's very true. Anyway, he he thinks he can go to another angle see a tree. No, you can't. Anyway, there, there's confused. a weird blip on the tape. There's a blip on the tape. Oh, yes. For a split second. Well. Yes. And it shows look, what it looks like lots of bodies in a circle of a pentagram and and somebody says well that looks like coffin rock but the body's arranged um that's all we get of that and now this is where people start losing their shit so steven sees a girl who's again the same girl you brought it back with you a little girl on the bridge she's not really there it's a hallucination tristan has a dream um about hurting children she said i had a dream that i hurt kids and they were all sort of hope, lifting up my skirt and they had blood on their hands and they were putting their hands on me and I hurt them all. Um, that's all very weird as well. And we cut to Stephen. And then he's now been interrogated saying, no, no, it was all an accident. We never meant to hurt her. Mm. So again, we're getting a little teaser of something that's going to be coming up later on. It's really well done, Gav. It's really well done. Yeah. Now, I love this kind of shit that's next with the time code. Where they say, hang on a minute, whoa, 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 look at the time code. It, it jumps changes. forwards and back for a second. It jumps like to like the hour uh, or minute 13 or hour 13 or whatever. I don't know what it was. It wouldn't be an hour 13. The tapes wouldn't last that long. Actually, that's the point. The tapes would only be able to last that long. I guess if you had like a long play facility, you know, three hour tapes, maybe six hours. Oh, I guess maybe. And this is where they say, look, there's a naked woman on the screen. Yeah, they notice there's a naked lady. So this is where he goes, I can, hang on, give me a moment. I will upgrade, the, upscale the quality of this and make the resolution a little bit better. Okay. So we'll find out does. who this lady is in just a moment. Indeed. Before that, though, Erica 
is in the kitchen with Steve, and Steve says, "Man, I'm really tense." She says, "Let me give you a little, little massage." I bet you fucking this could be me when you're fourteen, <laughs> weren't you? <laughs> How old was I in 2000? I, I was fucking 22, I was. I think mum and dad are in the living room. I'll lock the door and get the Kleenex. I was 22 when this film came out. Fuck, you know. You're still locking anyway. the door and getting the Kleenex, though, weren't you? <clears throat> yep. So, uh, she starts kissing him. They start kissing. And then they realise they've got marks all over their bodies. Um, and the marks look like ancient runes. Ancient witchy writing. But before we can get any more into that, she slices his guts open. Freddy style. And then suddenly, poof, poof. They're at the end of the opposite ends of the table from each other. Looking at each other and they both acknowledge they both are aware from their acting. They're both aware of, of they, they, they both have the same thing. Yeah. Interesting. So she goes upstairs and she's like, hey, guys, how you doing? And he's like, Erica, we need to show you something. What is it? Look at the tape. It's you, naked on the tape, dancing around the tree. Topless. She's like, hang on a minute. I didn't do any of that. Mm. They start arguing. Erica runs off. Uh, she says, I need to go and do a cleansing spell. I... Because we... Sorry. Carry on. We brought, we brought something back with us. She does. She gets a bit fr- fr- freakish with that stuff, doesn't she? She gets really fed on into that. I like the fact with this, though, you do go through each individual person's thing going on, who, uh, uh, like them having different things straight away, or even not even things, the places, the tree, the place wasn't, that tree wasn't there before. Straight away, it's a little bit like building this jigsaw puzzle of pieces, or in each piece to acknowledge that that wasn't the reality. They re- their reality was a hallucin- hallucination, which they had a mass hallucination essentially, mm-hmm. uh, and went a bit crazy. At what point did they go crazy? Spoiler: at What point did they go crazy? Did this? And what, obviously, the witch's powers did this to them. Is this just as, as they were just walking up? Because obviously, the tree wasn't there. So that when they went up for originally to the spot. Does that mean the other tourist group saw the tree or were they were talking to them that tree wasn't there? Do you know what I'm saying? I think the tree was never there and I think that... Yeah, um, another tourist group probably I, didn't I even think see that it they were talking re- to them. I think that they remember the tree being there but it actually wasn't ever there. Hence why what they're seeing on the tapes is is reality and they're remembering what the witch... Mm. The witch's spell. The witch's okay. spell over them for them to remember a different reality. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I like the fact we've got it's a witch... It's interesting when you look into this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I really like the fact we've got a witch power going on here because essentially with, with the Blair Witch Project and stuff, it's such a huge movie. You forget that it's in the title, Witch. You forget it's all about a witch. You yeah. totally forget that that's but, what this is and about. The w- the w- and again, spoiler alert, we, we don't even get to really fucking see a witch no in witch. this one either. We don't see a witch, we don't see one in the first one. But it, it's the mythos behind the, around the witch, the whole fact that a witch can cast these spells and do all these things and trick the mind and play around with emotions, you know. We get a really interesting scene now, and quite an important scene, because Kim says, I need to get some air, I'm going to go and get some beers. So she jumps in Jeff's truck, his van, and she drives to that local shop. She gets there, she buys some beers, has a few of the regular rednecks in there. She sees a guy lying on the ground who's Rustin Parr. Rustin Parr was the guy that killed all the children in the very first Blair Witch film. Oh, they, they, see, they, I, how did you know this? Because of all the extras on the DVD. But see, that's also, a shame that that's also, wasn't told to us in a way. Uh, uh, but also because... The his spanner and his screwdriver and everything are lying next to him in the shape of a stick figure. Yeah, I didn't see that that quickly. And she steps over him and he says to her, "I'm." Fi-, she says, "Oh, sorry, you're I'm finished, finished now." He says, and he says, "I'm finished now," which is what he said when he came back down from killing all the children. I'm finished now. See, I didn't even pick up on this, and I love the first play, which. Um, I just thought he was just a little bit like uh, he's had a lobotomy or slightly thing because he said earlier on, "I finished now." He says it twice. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I see. I didn't know this, but I wish. I wish that this was something we somehow knew. But then again, how do you do that without f- f- flagpole it and making it shit? So yeah, okay, that's cool though, man. That's good for that. But see, interesting. 
See, we've got this discussion now. Everyone listening to this knows this as well. So well done, you, Daniel. And Bone. again, it feels it feels a bit ahead of its time because they've got these weird little Easter eggs in there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's totally. cool, man. The uh, really cashier cool. takes a uh, uh, well, one of the patrons of the store calls her a witch. The uh, the the little the goth lady has gone to buy some oh, booze. She uh, is a bitch. This this um... and then the uh, the cashier does not like her whatsoever. So um, what's her name? The character, the goth character, Kim. Kim, Kim does. Kim decides to go. Look, look, I don't fucking do, you know bullshit bollocks wank. Fuck off. I will give you the money. Bag this up. Look, I'll bag it up. There's your money. Keep the change and walks out. She says, "I will make this as easy as I fucking can." And for grabs you. her throat, doing it. Obviously, that's enough to nowadays get you fucking arrested. Um, just that. Later on, no, this is we will find out her reality is slightly distorted. Yes, because as she jumps in the truck with the beers that she's bought... I, I she think gumps driving. in the truck's better, though. She jumps in the truck. You said, gumps like a truck. You said truck, gumps truck. first, and gumps. I think gumps better than jumping. I'm going to go, um, you know, crisscross and make you gump. Uh, gump around. Gumps like a truck. Truck, truck. Mm-hmm. As like what? Mm-hmm. What? What? Kim gets in the truck, and what? What? Gets mm-hmm. in the truck. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. what? And she's driving along, and all of a sudden, ghost children appear in the, in the road. As they do. As they fucking do. And she swerves. She hits a tree. Fucking hell. She's pranged the truck. Not badly. Just a little prank. But it's, it's, enough it's to a fender bender. Ah, oh, dear. She gets back, and she thinks, oh, I've got to tell Jeff I've dented a bit of his truck, his van here. She finds an ice pick in the beer. And she thinks, oh, that hurt. Very quickly. Popping back to the Scooby-Doo 18 van, I love the fact that she's got a CD player uh, with the lead into the stereo. I remember driving around with a CD player with the, yeah. the Sony anti-shock CD player for your car, and you'd have a little suspension table that would stick on onto your car, and it was always shit. You'd go over the potholes in England roads, bam, 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 and you'd skip like so many of the of the songs. It was just so annoying. But I, you, you felt I like you were so like... Well, I'm in the digital world now, man. I've got CDs in my car. It was just not good. I had one of those, and it had like a minute delay on it or something ridiculous, so that even if you really shook it, because it had been... So when you press play, you had to wait about so 10 about seconds. about a minute later, you get, the, you get the jump. Yeah. Amazing. But it, meant, but it meant that if it was enough of a, just a little jolt, it wouldn't affect the playing of the CD at all. And I remember once, walking down the road, and I was listening to a Buster Rhymes album... And these kids, bigger kids than me, barged into me, a, a real proper L, uh, shoulder barge, and I dropped my CD and player on the ground. And they looked at me, and I looked at them, and it opened, and they saw that it was a Buster Rhymes CD. It was spinning really quickly, but you could tell it was a Buster Rhymes. And then I shut it, and they looked at me, and they went, and one of them said, Buster Rhymes, nice, or something like that. And it didn't even skip. Because it was about a minute's worth of you know, audio loaded into the CD. Dan, plan. there's more to this than you know. This is a metaphor for your life then. You had a whole thing going on. Buddies came up to you, disrespecting you, thinking you were smaller and weaker. The CD player not skipping is you, not skipping a beat and looking at them and both having the Clint Eastwood look in the eyes <laughs> of each other, and stare at each other like a Western standoff. And you looked at You're each other wasted. in the eyes. You looked you at each other in the eyes. You are wasted on this podcast, aren't you? You look at each other's eyes, you know. Actually, you are wasted on this podcast, aren't you? And, <laughs> and like the CD player, you didn't skip a beat. And they went, and they didn't skip a beat. And you all acknowledged each other that you were cool. And this changed your life. I think he felt bad that he knocked it to the ground and it had opened. Absolutely. But yeah, CD players. Also, Lessons. do you remember the ones you had that were like a cassette that goes into the cassette player and then your CD plugs into that cassette? No. Do you not remember those ones where... No, we should, we should stop talking about 80s technology and just talk about the movie. I think it's very interesting. I don't know if everybody else thinks that, though. Compact disc players. Anyway... So, Give them their full title, please. She's dented the van. She's back She's home. She van. said, uh, I've dented your van. He's fucked off and says, coffee. And she says, it's next to you already. He's like, oh, okay. He's out of it from footage. Morning. Morning arrives. Morning is broken. Tristan and Steve say, look, we're going to leave today. We had, a, we had a miscarriage yesterday. It's not been a good, it's not been a good 24 hours for us. We're going to head on. 
should we, can we get a lift in the van? And immediately we hear Jeff going, what the fuck is going on? Kim, my van! Kim, I thought you just said you dented it, not fucked it totally up. It looks like the Hulk at the van and shut it out. Yeah. It's literally ripped into shreds, isn't it? The Hulk shits must be massive. <laughs> Fucking hell. Green as well. What about where he jizzes? Oh, God. Buckets. <laughs> Buckets. The uh, Kim is now back, cut, interspliced into the police station. You know, like room. on Ghostbusters 2, where they get the slime firing out of the <laughs> slime things and they sort of yeah, blast yeah. each other. That's, yeah. That's a, that's a, like, <laughs> the whole comes all over that guy's like, I love you, and I love you too. I love all of you. Hulk Funk! <laughs> Hulk's oh funking out again. I can never watch Ghostbusters 2 again take after cover, this. Take cover, take cover. Anyway, Bobby Brain. So, um, the van is totaled, and there are more symbols on everyone's body, but Erica seems to have vanished. Yes, she has gone walkabout. But they find her clothes lying on the ground. She's nakedly gone walkabout. Find her immediately. All of her clothes are here. She must be naked. Dan stands up. Uh, I'll go find her. You guys wait here. It's fine. I'll, I'll go. But, I'll go but find we should her. all stick together. No, 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 no. Only I'm all right to go. You look after her clothes. I'll uh, go find stay Erica. Stay here. Stay here. Stay. Right, here I go. What do you need that box of Kleenex for? Just, I need just to find her. And I'm going to lock the door, so just stay in this room, all right? Anyway... <laughs> Um, she's vanished for a while. Uh, they start sort of blaming Kim. They start turning on Kim a little bit. Yeah, but then they look into it and Erica lied about her father and stuff. What was all this bit? I was very confused here. Yeah, what was so, going on? So, so they find out that because she, she said her parents were dead and then they find out that they weren't dead and they're actually quite famous doctors or something along those lines. So they ring them up and then they say, we've never heard of an Erica. What are you talking about? So they straight away think, well, hang on a minute. If she lied about this, she could have lied about a lot of things, so she could be behind all of this about the tapes. She could have fuck. She could be fucking with us right now. We don't know what's going on. Uh, this is a really weird, weird moment where the sheriff rings up and he says, "I've got time, <laughs> sheriff. I've got I've found, look. I think I found out though who's stolen my gear, etc., and crashed my van, or all that bullshit." And he says, "Turn the TV on, you son of a bitch." So he get, makes him turn the TV on, and he's. There's a news report going on live, and he's in the background chatting to him on the phone. So how weird would it be if you're on the phone chatting to someone in the background of a live TV show? That must have happened, a live news report. It must have happened before. But I yeah, thought that was really he's weird. Swe he's swearing on a live news report going, can you see me now, you goddamn son of a bitch? Now listen to me and listen goddamn carefully to me. It's, it's, it's funny. In the front of him is just a lady going, and here in Burkittsville, we're here at the scene of another crime. But behind him, there's this sheriff shouting his head off. It's yeah, so funny. It's, it's hilarious. But what's he telling him? What's going on? Uh, he's basically telling him that I know it was you, you goddamn bastards. Um, I hate you. I've always hated you. Basically, he doesn't like him because he got released from a mental institute and he's got something against people who've got severe mental health issues, this sheriff. Seems like a nice guy. Yeah. But, you know, um, but basically what's happened is, Gav, is that the hikers from the Blair Witch Walk... The other tourist group that invaded them in the, in the evening. Yep. They, they've been found on Coffin Rock, they ripped have. to shreds. They have indeed. Sliced and diced. I know. Sliced and diced. The ice is going to slice. The ice is going to break. I, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. One day, one day. Bowie. Um, there you go. Makes yeah, me feel better. Yeah, five hikers there, disemboweled in the shape of a pentagram. Suddenly a dead owl comes flying through the window. And Craven says, I think you killed the tourists. We're coming to get you. Jeff says, we think it was Erica. She did all of this. Um, Stephen says that he thinks he saw a naked Erica on the bridge because she's on the bridge outside naked. And he runs to the door, goes out there, and it, Erica is there, which I wasn't expecting her to be there. She's on the bridge just in her pants with her, with her hairy boobs. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and the bridge collapses. My bridge didn't collapse, but this bridge collapses. 
Dan's bridge did not collapse. <laughs> Stephen falls down and he's hanging, but they pull him up. Um, just it's, about. It's, it's all really amping up here. It's one thing after another, very, very quickly happening. Because as soon as you do this, then it's like all of a sudden, like, Jeff, you've got these files. Like, what are these files on us? And Jeff is, is like unaware of what these are. He asks one. He's, uh, Kim says, "Can I look for something?" Yeah, check that drawer. Opens the drawer. There's these different kind of doctor profile type, medical profile type files on their psychiatric uh, background, etc., etc. Yep. And Jeff has no idea and where these things came from. Oh no, you know. They are, they suspect him. But at the same they time, can. Tristan is now losing her mind. She's dancing around like a little girl. She says, I think I'm experiencing Ellie Kedward's memories. I think I'm becoming Ellie Kedward's memories. And they're like, what the fuck is going on? We need to get out of this weird factory full of VCRs. Totally. Because- then cut straight into Stephen being in an interview. I'm not very much going on. There's oh, what happened. Blah, blah, blah. Then cut straight away back again. Um, Craven's at the door. Yeah, the, the sheriff is at the door uh, to fo- to find uh, it's actually um, barking dogs at the door. Where he's saying, "Come on, you little son of a bitch, open the door!" Opens the door, and it would be the sound of dogs barking on his sound system because that's his fake alarm. It's actually some dogs barking. So he runs off, gets his shotgun, comes back. No dogs there at all. So it's just like really getting played by the witch here. So he's got a shotgun here, Gav, and. Uh... He yep. turns around and he sees Erica, a, se- a sexy redhead uh, naked in the cupboard, and he thinks, "Yeah, yeah kind of sexy." If if you're into necrophilia, because she's very well, very he pale. He doesn't know this at the time. Mm, she's very 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 pale. I'd think the same. She's a redhead. She's just a, a very pale she's skin. Also, she's also dead. You you find an attractive lady dead. He flips her around. Completely she's dead. Does flips it give it, no anyway I'm not gonna say it he flips around and she's dead and he's all shaken up there's a big argument I, here now i like her look though i do like the white eye contact lenses she's got in she looks co- proper creepy here yeah it's really it's so subtle people don't get this fucking film Gav. no i know then the pregnant lady has got out of bed and she's saying things backwards she's like she's out of like some david lynch nightmare or something and she realises that everything's backwards. We need to play the tapes the other way well, around. She's saying these things. So uh, uh, Kim's like, hey, uh, she's right. Let's play stuff backwards. Let's put the tapes backwards. Now, I don't know how this is supposed to work. Rewinding the footage backwards is now going to... It's not a It's not a, a, a supposedly metal record from the 70s. Do you know what I mean? It's... <laughs> it's, it's, it's What's going on here? How's that going? You play it backwards and it starts going, kill, go, kill all your friends, go, kill all your friends. But we're watching something visual. How's that going to then tell the story backwards? That's that's, that's like the future of filmmaking. Let's make a film the other way round. The other flaw here, Gav, is that the missing five hours of footage, if you play the takes backwards, we suddenly get the missing five hours of footage. That's a flaw. But luckily, the missing five hours of footage is a one non-stop five-hour orgy it's basically rob zombie's uh, uh, epic feature film essentially just five, five the words. hours of rob zombie's mind ah, mary is mary's i was gonna say mary zoon <laughs> fucking hell i could call mary, mary zoon. zoon from now on hi i'm mary zoon <laughs> uh yes it really is quite rob zombie-esque um, there's weird sounds and music. They, they're trashing all the, um, the the cameras. They're ripping up all the documents. It's really... I've written here a really good score, and it is. It kind of reminds me a little bit of... Um, what's my favourite Rob Zombie film? Why can't I remember the name of it? Lords of Salem. Yes, thank you very much. There's little elements of it that remind me of that. And it's very, very good. In the footage, Tristan, the pregnant lady, is wearing this black kind of cloak, and she goes in and kills uh, Erica in it. So cut back to the, them in the editing in the, the castle location, and going, what the fuck did you do? Did you kill her like that? And they stop blaming She's like, no, I didn't. They're like, you're a witch, you're a witch. Play, kind of just, just, sorry, just before that, though, there's an important bit in the footage. Right at the end of that footage, we see... Tristan order the others to mm. go off naked with knives and machetes. Oh, and they go and, off and massacre the other group. And they they get the other so guy, the two Chinese couples, the the German girl, and they fucking disembowel them all and pull their guts out. And it's all done in very quick flashes, but it's enough. We know what's happening. It's really 
And with that score going on over the top of it, you're like, Jesus Christ, this is very really Rob intense. Zombie. Fuck, of, yes. Like, I'm not joking, I'm not in any way. I'm saying that I would, if that was in a Rob Zombie movie, I wouldn't think anything of it. Like, if I wouldn't think Rob that Zombie was it. Could do that kind of stuff again. Yes. Um, so they kind of. They're threatening her, saying she's a witch and all this shit, and then they kind of just kind of put a noose. Her, her fella puts a noose over around her neck, takes her up to this top level bit, and then just essentially push, well pushes her off. She's she's but she's giving them shit the whole time. Each yeah, person, she, like that's what they're seeing. Their reality is completely flipped from what's what's real and what's not. She's really possessed because at one point she does that weird bizarre thing where she goes. <laughs> looks at them and then laughs and then covers her mouth up like she can't believe what she's about to say and then her husband's like look just admit you're the witch admit it's you and she's like no i won't admit it and then yeah there's a bit of a scuffle she goes flying off with the right rounder crack yeah. of the neck yeah she's hung yeah absolutely um and we get a flashback to more flashback to killing the tourists and then the news report kicks in about the arrest of our main characters. So, this is why it's like a fucking Netflix series. It's not like a standard film uh, storyline here. But then, all of a sudden, bing, we know now what's going on. We know now that they've been arrested. And now it's just like straight away jumping ahead of what stuff it is. It makes it cheaper to make a film. It, it speeds up the process of not having to have them drive into the police station or them being arrested and all this sort of stuff. But I kind of like why it's just boom 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 going along really quite quickly one of the news reporters says in a bizarre case of life imitating art imitating life and they talk about the whole meta aspect you know to the Blair Witch film then this these guys going on the hunt for the Blair Witch but then they end up killing each other because they're just so obsessed with the first film uh, it's really interesting and Craven shows that start showing the tapes to them all individually in their individual meeting rooms um, and, and each the most of their kills that they individually did Kim in the all... liquor store yeah. etc well, etc let's talk so let's talk about these because Kim's is definitely the most interesting one um, it's revealed that when Kim went into that liquor store and Peggy was given her shit she was doing her nails, the, 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 the cashier was, with a little uh, metal nail file. Not only did she give her grab her throat, she then stabbed her in the neck three times with a nail file. Which she does find in the grocery, because she cuts her finger when she comes back with the booze after the thing. But it's a very small, insignificant thing, but does come up now, because it shows that she actually killed the cashier, quite gruesomely as well. Then they show Steve... You know what happened to his wife and he's like no check the tapes check the tapes and he says we did check the fucking tapes and, and they show plays, him presses play. and he's shocked to see him putting a noose around his pregnant lady well not pregnant anymore but his lady's uh neck and pushing her off and breaking her he neck. even says to her just for yeah he's and like, then these when tapes she breaks have been her neck with. yeah but, but it's when completely she breaks different. her neck she's not giving him shit in it she's like please don't please don't and they're just they're just giving her stuff yeah. And he kind of laughs as her neck breaks. He looks to the camera and goes, <laughs> "Fucking witch!" And he just says that right into the and camera. And he's just like, "No, no!" And he's just totally shocked. And uh, the tapes are wrong. Somebody fuck with the tape. He says that over and over again. It's Somebody pretty fuck full on, isn't it? You know, it's really, 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 really good, actually. Mm. Um, that's the end. We kind of find out that they all were responsible for killing the individuals and and potentially killing that other tourist party. And Gav, you've got a You'd like it to have done something else, wouldn't you? You mentioned this earlier. You'd like it to have um, sort of said Jeff was sentenced to, you know, back in psychiatric ward. I think or... it should have just then cut straight away, rather than going straight to credits with music. It, it missed a trick. It should have gone into just like completely like a sombre like sound underneath, sort of um, with black with just white writing talking more about it then a little bit more maybe on the witch sort of thing then just finishing then slowly the credits coming up with no music just blank with white credits coming up that's what they should have done and it would have kept that whole Blair Witch thing a bit more it ends it, to two standard Hollywood film it ends like a, a horror like film any old film from the year 2000 with lots of of rock basically <laughs> indeed Marilyn Manson and, and other rock but but that's just one little bit I didn't expect us to get quite so... I mean, I knew we both liked this film, but that was it's really, really, really good, isn't it? You know, I, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. I'd give it an 8 out of 10 on IMDb, and I, I know I shouldn't, because I know it's not a loved film. 
but eight out of ten. Yeah. Wow, I wouldn't give it an eight out of ten. I would give it a. I would go six point five. Mm-hmm. The reason I give it eight is because I've watched it so many times. I have a lot of nostalgia I'll, for I'll, it. I'll, I'll give it a, a, in that case. Then I suppose I'll give it a seven. So it's not really that far from you, I suppose. It's it's just a very no, underrated, six. really six. good film. Six is fine, yeah, man. Mm. It's still really good though. No, um, no absolutely. I think I really like the way they took it a different turn from the the original. And I'm going to lay this one out there now. I prefer this to the Blair Witch film that came out a couple of years ago, The Woods, whatever you want to call it. The oh, reboot, the okay. re, whatever it is. Yeah, I prefer yeah. this. Okay. It's different, that's why. It's different. That's Absol- why I, like I, it. I think it's a very clever idea, and I'm actually quite surprised that it, it, they the, big, the money that the Blair Witch made, like crazy, crazy, for the, obviously it was a very cheap budget. Um executives would have just been like yeah do whatever you want here's the money go and so they there was a little bit more creative control of it i think because how quickly they need it. they'd be like look if you want it's made this quickly this is how we're doing it and they'd be like yeah just go for it, do it. i like that i'm surprised that and off surprised the back of this idea did they didn't did okay. make more yeah but i think it i think it came out it had the halloween free season of which where's michael myers uh, uh reaction at the time, because I was buying Empire magazine at the time, <clears throat> and at the time there was a lot of hype that they were going to make another Blair Witch film in about 2001, 2002, which was going to be a prequel, and it was going to be the actual original story of Ellie Kedward. You were going to find out all of that. I was At the time, I was like, man, I will take anything you give me but Blair Witch in the title. Please. Well, there was quite a lot of things. Like last night after we watched this, I did actually watch the Scooby-Doo Project. Have you seen yeah. that? Yeah. I haven't seen that. You uh, mentioned the, this many years ago. There's on a Cartoon Network. They had a Scooby Doo uh, for a weekend, and between the episodes, occasionally they'd have a little few minutes of a uh, the Blair Witch segments, and it's basically found footage in the woods, but then superimposed of the characters and their voices. It's legit, and it's Scooby doing <laughs> that, going in there, and basically it ends up being it's not Blair Witch. It's Scrappy Doo's trying to get them, and they're hiding from Scrappy Doo in the woods. Hey guys, where are you? <laughs> oh, go hide, hide! Ooh. But like Blair Witch, <laughs> it was cool. It was, it was well, it was okay. The end bit was not too bad. Right, at the end, they had Scoot, had Shaggy standing in the corner of like the original Blair Witch uh, in the house, <laughs> and they go down and go, "What are you doing?" He goes, "I'm standing here because I'm hiding or whatever like this." And then all of a sudden, like the character comes out and they pull it off, and it's just one of the people. It's some guy. They pull off the Blair Witch's mask, yeah. then they look in the window. Then there's a real Blair Witch, like ah, and it finishes. It's good. That sounds cool. I'll have to check that. It's out. on YouTube. Have you seen the Bear Snatch Project? I no, I have seen the Bear. Maybe the Bear Bitch Project. <laughs> Fucking hell! So I have seen a porn, softcore porn. Oh, I used to have a softcore porn of uh, the Blair Witch many moons ago. Oh, God, I bet it's terrible. Yeah. Well, there we go, guys. That was uh, the Blair Witch Project Two: Book of Shadows, which you know I didn't think we'd be talking about on this show, but fuck it. If we could have talk about American Werewolf from Paris, then we're going to end up talking about this film at some point as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but next though, fuck me. After after our little time team, we've got Predator Two. Oh man, Predator! I'm gonna, I'm gonna get sweaty in that one. Man, let's get sweaty together. But anyway, in the meantime, can we jump in your little uh, capsule? Let's get sweaty in the capsule. Are you ready for this? Because we're going to 2014. Smelly and sweaty dance capsule. Let's go. All right, let me press the sequence of buttons: one, seven, nine, five, gun, four, eight, and <laughs> ready. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa! What's this machine? This is my time machine. Your yeah? time machine? Yeah. For the next five minutes, we are going to be the time team. The time team! Whoa! Whoa. What's this? Look at that! Look at that! Well, he's been dead a hundred years. Look at that! Look at that. That's the Statue of Liberty coming out of the sand. Oh, there's a dinosaur! Oh, my God. Look at that. It's something else. Ooh. Oh, sorry, that was... <laughs> I was really enjoying that one, then. So, 2014, we've landed, we've arrived. Yeah. It's not looking too different from 2021, is it, around here? Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Let's have a quick look at some of the key things from around the world. 
there was a group that came up from Syria and Iraq called ISIS. Oh, okay. They really kicked off pro- things properly in 2014. They weren't a very, they're not a very nice bunch of people. Let's, let's just leave it there. Should we just leave it there? Yeah, I mean, you know, I could go into discussions about them, but there's not a, a place for right now. More controversy with politics. Russia, 2014. The Winter Olympic Games were set to happen. But Russia... Doping hate... scandal. No, they, they just hate the gays. Oh, so, so anybody people... who homosexual in the, uh, uh, the uh, trying for the Olympics or whatever, they would not have allowed that. Is that what they're saying? Yep, there was loads of anti-gay laws going on. So How a lot pathetic. Of and for God's sake, what has that got to do with someone's sporting ability? There we go. Honestly, what has that got to do? Like, nothing. Anyway, um, there's, obviously Russia had that massive doping scandal a, bit, a little bit later on, where they were because they were winning all their shit, like, and then all of a sudden oh, it's yeah. a bit like... Then, then, like, have you ever seen the? Um, it was a very, very good documentary. Mm. Icarus, very good. Check that out about a doping scandal. Um, you'd think, like, why on earth am I going to watch a documentary about a Russian doping scandal? It's very good. It turned into a whole thing. The doctor who says it ends up having to go into hiding because they can set out people, the Russians, to come after him and kill him. Honestly, that's going to hide in and stuff. It's a very good documentary. I wouldn't want to fuck with the Russians. When no, it watch, watch like this. That. Watch this documentary. It's good. He has to pretend he's dead and loads of shit. And Jesus. Yeah, it's good. Well, we had a pretty scary thing happening in Africa. And it started coming into America. I'm talking about the Ebola virus it's kicked it's off a little bit. Bloody hell, is, is this from last year? It sounds like a light barrel of laughs this, this year, <laughs> doesn't it? Fucking hell. As we know, the Ebola virus is is a fever that leads to hemorrhaging from within. Eventually, you end up liquidizing from the inside out. Um, it's quite a nasty virus, to say the least. And Fucking the largest outbreak right. on record happened in 2014 in West Africa. It spread from Guinea to Sierra, Sierra Leone and then into Liberia. And it even made its way over to Nigeria. There were a couple of uh, things in Spain and America. And we thought at the time, oh, shit, this is World War Z. This is this is it. Thank God no pandemics came around until 2020, of fucking course. But uh, mm. there we go. Who yes. thought the name Sierra Leone would be a great female actress name or something? Sierra Leone would, wouldn't it? Mm. And the Oscar goes to Sierra Leone. Yeah, yeah sounds okay. Um, that's, that's just terrible. Um, that's a fucking nasty, nasty thing. God, we have got some nasty things out there in the world, haven't we? We have. We, have. we also had the World Cup in Brazil. Just okay. thought I'd let you know that. Bit, you know. bit of footy? Bit of footy going on for the footy lads. I don't mind the World Cup. I don't mind. It's all right. Now, Malaysia Airlines didn't have a good time in 2014. Why? One of them mysteriously vanished. Oh, shit. Flight, Flight 370 in February 2014 <laughs> vanished. This, we could have done this word the strange today. 25 countries got involved mm-hmm. in searching the Indian Ocean. Yeah. They I found a few bits I here and there. I think I remember this. They found a few little pieces here and there, but the but majority nothing. of the wreckage has never been recovered. Weird. But then that same year in July, Malaysian flight... 17 was and, shot down by oh. Russian separatists in Ukraine. Oh, God. That's not and they're good. still in, they're, they're investigating that now. Still. Yeah, well, pff, oh. Are they really? What did you do it for? We don't want to talk about, okay? No, Russia, you need to explain. What, hey, listen, we do what we do, you do what you do. It's fine. <laughs> no, we need answers. No. <laughs> How's some vodka? I not give you answer. I give you vodka. <laughs> you sound like you could be a, a Rob, um, Rob Schneider character from an Adam Sandler movie. Amazing. He always has those, he always has those accents, doesn't he? Yeah. He's just like, hey, Adam Sandler, me and you are best friends. Yeah. What are we going to do in this movie? Uh, it's give it the baba the boo. I don't really know. <laughs> Still want to see that Jaws remake with uh, Roy Schneider. Uh, sorry, Rob Schneider. I really want to see that too. Yeah. Uh, what else happened? Uh, that was it. That was it. It wasn't an awful lot, but it was some terrible things. Yeah, dude. Let's get into some some movies. Let's refresh you with 
the mainstream films that were out and about this year. So what do we have coming out this year? We had another Spider-Man film, Spider-Man 2. We had Robocop remake. Oh, yeah. I watched that the other night, and I've seen it before. And actually, it was, wasn't too bad. The problem is, Gav, Robocop... I'd rather just, watch the, I'd Robocop. Rather just watch the original if I was going to watch Robocop, because it's so good. And I loved... I fucking loved that the other week, on um, the other month. Blu-ray, projector screen. Oh, my God, this is the best thing ever. Loved the it. problem being is Robocop, the original Robocop, is is like a 10 out of 10 film. I told you that got really cheap in Sainsbury's. Every time I went in there, the Blu-ray of Robocop, we got down to like three quid. And I was like, what is going on? And then it's Dead gone and that was it. Comes with me. It's really weird it's so cheap. I think did, it's you, just, uh, did you buy it for a dollar, Gav? No. Uh, five dollars. <laughs> oh, well, five pounds. Five, five British sterling, sir. Five British sterling. I'll tell you what happened in 2014. We got... Keanu Reeves came back, and he came back with a little action flick called John Wick. Action flick called John Wick. And the world John flick. went nuts. I loved it. I loved it. You loved it. I loved it. I loved the second one. I loved the third one. I want more. Oh, I've seen the second and third the once. Um, they're good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The third one was serviceable. Oh, it's all right. Serviceable? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I'm sorry yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, the third one gave me a hand job. <laughs> serviceable <laughs> uh, well let's talk about what was some of the big films that came out this year these are the ones that dropped the money so Guardians of the Galaxy was the biggest was Tom, selling film was Tom Cruise year. involved uh, I don't think he was in any of the films this year he might have had a year off okay but Guardians of the Galaxy was the number one grossing movie of 2014 it was fun I went to see that with Jay Marvel Star Wars-y type film great stuff mm. Captain America had the Winter Soldier. I think you've seen that one too. That was a pretty decent sort of sky es- uh, spy espionage flick. That, that's the one that has the fight in the elevator. Correct. See? Correct. See? I know some stuff. You do. That's it. Um, so I know. Big Hero 6 came out this year. Another yes. Pixar good, good movie. Film. Yep. Very good. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. See, the, I need to remember these movies because Elijah hasn't seen them and I just kind of dismiss it as in like, yeah, the kids have seen their movies. No, he wasn't even here. So I need to remember that. Okay, cool. yeah, that's a good one, that one. The Godzilla film came out this year. Sadly, not the one with Matthew Broderick. Um, Which this we are one, fans of. We are big fans of. What else did we get? We had the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reboot came out this year, which I, I'm a big fan of that one. Uh, 21, uh, 22 Jump Street was out this year, the sequel. You like you like that one, don't you? Uh, yeah, oh, oh, I'm a big fan. Hello, my name's Jeff. And my name's Jeff. Uh, How to Train Dragon Two. Um, that that movie was the Rogan. first one. The first one was real fun. That movie with Seth Rogen with the neighbors. Oh yeah, neighbors. I enjoy that, and I like neighbors too as well. Ah, I'm Seth Rogen. I smoke weed. Ah. It's funny. All these movies you're saying, though, cause the kid, the, the kitty ones and stuff, Try to Train Dragon and uh, Big Hero Six. A lot of these I was actually going to cinema for. So that's um, that's funny. So at this point in life, I was going to cinema lots, watching children's movies, you which watch, you um, will be doing in a few years. Did you watch Mr. Peabody and Sherman at the cinema? Yes, I did. I remember that. Um, what else came out? Uh, Maze Runner. Um, uh, loads of stuff. Loads and loads of stuff. But look, that's enough about what came out in 2014. Let's talk about the horror films that came out in 2014, because that is essentially... Our bread and butter. Our bread and butter, in the gutter, here we go. So, I'm going to kick things off with a weird movie that I'm a big fan of called Clown. Uh, yeah, I uh, didn't really like it. I didn't actually get through it all, to be honest. I I've really never seen it. it all, so... It's about a guy that discovers a clown suit in his basement. He puts it on and he gets possessed by the clown. Yeah, the the, the, the makers decided to make a fake trailer and just say, produce Eli Roth. Eli Roth went, that's all right. All right, I'll produce it for you. Well done, yeah. you guys. But, Gab, my next few I'm going to rattle off to you are going to be ones that you're a fan of. So, so get your seatbelt strapped in. Right, here we go. The Taking of Deborah Logan. Very good movie. Uh, uh, on Amazon at the moment, just under the name The Taken. Weird, isn't it? Not with Liam Neeson. But that'd be weird. <laughs> that would be weird. I don't know where you are, but I'm going to eat your entire body. Is it Spoiler in your alert. mouth? <laughs> uh, exists. Came out in 2014. We've covered it. Yeah. 
I don't like it as much as I did when it first came out. I'm actually getting rid of my copy. I was just a bit like, eh, after we reviewed it, I actually went, eh, actually, nah, not as much as a fan as I thought it was because the cast are really annoying characters. As above, so below. Good film. I love the fact that there's a piano down in the uh, catacombs. How? We fuck knows, but it's just like, this is great. We need to cover that. I mean, you do have a I used to have a piano. I love that bit. I used to have a piano like this, and this key never worked. Dum, dum. Oh, that's so good. Do you remember when you used to have a piano in your back garden for quite a long time? I just got the. uh, All we've got now is the main string section of it. (laughs) It's sideways. It's no, no. I've I've got a microphone to it, and I've recorded it just with strumming my fingers. It's all white and rusty now, so it's just all the strings you can see. But it makes like the best horror soundtrack in the world. Gang, bang, bang. Oh yes. It's cool, but heavy as fuck. <laughs> Break your foot if it fell on it, you know. Um, another vampire film which I'm a big fan of. A girl walks home alone at night. Never seen Skate- it. It's black and white, Skate- isn't it? Skateboarding girl. Yeah, black and white vampire skateboarding never, chick. Never seen it. <sighs> Man, it's really good. Sounds like as a teenager, my favorite would be my favorite film. Yeah, it's really good, yeah. really different film that I've watched three or four times now. Came out this year, and I've given up on it. I tried to understand it. I've tried to understand why everyone likes it. I'm talking about the Babadook. I fucking hate it, and I won't bother with watching it again. I've tried so hard to like it. Yeah, I watched it, and I didn't like it because um, I, uh, I've, I, it was too, the, 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 the. Uh, the way the child was being uh, treated was a bit too much for me because it's a bit too realistic and I just didn't like to be in that world. So, Fair enough. Yeah, that's what I got for me. Talking of being in that world, a world you wouldn't want to be in because I know you and you don't really particularly like this film, Tusk with Kevin Smith. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I love the whole, like, there's a podcast. I wish another film would do it, but there's a podcaster, like, Justin Long, goes and investigates something, but actually it ends up being something which is just not as gross as that. Michael Parks making him into a tusk. This is why I think you'd really like Jane Silent Bob reboot, because it's all about podcasting, and it's really funny. Yeah, well, uh, I, they I, really rip into podcasts. I, I watch most of it, but then I just, I don't know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Wreck 4. Uh, is that the wedding one? No, that's the third one. I don't know what the fourth one is. Yeah, I can't. I don't know if I've seen it. I think I, I must. Have I don't know. That's the thing. It's like it got to the point. It's like, what, can we just make another movie, like a different name? You know, like. Well, weirdly, you watched this film the, the other day. Franchise, weird. Yeah, go on. Uh, you watch, I think you watched this film the other night, and I'm talking about Cooties. Oh yeah, I know. I watched it the other day. I was just packing up some stuff in the house, getting ready to move eventually, well soon. And um, uh, yeah, I just checked on in the background. I kind of enjoyed it. I liked the bit where the uh, uh, Lee Winnell, uh, writer and actor of a Saw movie, um, is in it. Is an actor, and he he gets words wrong. Uh, words wrong, and he says sometimes I get the my roll bolts wrong, and she goes <laughs> word, and he looks at her and goes word and pulls like a real <laughs> pull like a white dad uh, uh, middle aged hip hop <laughs> slang type thing going on uh, yeah, there's jokes like that, it's that kind of film it was alright, it wasn't too bad, it was kind of what you expect from a movie called Cooties and the subject matter uh, you know, it's kind of it's what it is, it's right. Elijah Wood's I, always I, good and shit, so you know, and he produced I, I liked it, I thought it was fun Yeah. Um, I also really liked and thought fun was Zombievers as well, I thought that was fun is that 2014 as well? Or you? Just... Yeah. no, yeah. no it was uh, yeah, uh, Zombievers is okay yeah, I think you got bought that by your sister-in-law. For... I did, I did. I yeah, don't, I don't know if she listens. She's on the group page on Facebook, but I don't know if she listens. Hello, um, if you do. Sarah, hello. Hello, Sarah. A couple of other um, fun ones that came out this year, which I know you're a fan of. Dead Snow. We're both fans of that one. Yeah, yeah, very good film. Uh, Dead Snow 2, obviously, is a good film too. The Editor. Editor is a good movie, which we should definitely, definitely cover, because that has got... He expected it just to be style over substance, and no, the substance is just as good. It's really good. So we're, we're quite a strong year, and I'm going to continue on now. It follows. I'm a big fan of that one. That yeah, came out this year. That's in my DVD collection. Absolutely. Another one that I shouldn't like, <laughs> and I don't know why I do, is the Pyramid 
found footage. Some guys go into a pyramid and uncover With a curse. The guy from uh, um... the In Between Us. In Between Us, which I kind of like that guy as an actor, and I was actually uh, uh, in, in thinking about possibly seeing if I could get hold of him to do the trader fake trader we're gonna do but that's another thing mm. a german film coming out this year called good night mummy yeah i've not seen it you have seen it not seen it no very good very creepy unfriended i like unfriended i really like unfriended very good it's probably one of the first um Laptop horror films, because that is a genre, believe it or not, now, isn't it? Yeah, because the Den one is one as well. I like the Den. That was a good film. Nothing will be host. That really got to me. Okay. That was really good. Um, the other one, I've got to mention, Ryan Reynolds as a serial killer called The Voices. Where he hears voices. Buried. Oh, I've seen The Voices. That is all right. Yeah, that's fun one, that one. So, 2014 is a very strong and a very varied year. Hmm. there's a lot of stuff ranging from some creepy found footage stuff like Taken of Deborah Logan uh, As Above So Below exists there's a lot of found footage still this year but then we've got some stuff that where they're really experimenting we've got A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night um, we have Sharknado 2 which I didn't mention that was the second se- that was the second sequel in that fucking massive series um, yeah really weird year uh, but a fun one and I think horror is starting to with It Follows, especially, because I remember everyone was really hyped about that one. Um, Dead Snow. People were really starting to feel like there's something cool was bubbling under the surface with horror again. Do you mm. know what I mean? I, no, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So there we go. I'm going to snatch a few films to take back with me. I'm going to take... I think I'm going to take As Above, So Below, Taken of Deborah Logan. And I'll probably also take... Eh, Dead Snow, because that's hilarious. I'll take those three with you. Let's get back to 2021 then, my friend. Let's do it. Let's go talk about uh, Predator. Oh! There's a fly on you. That was my bottom, though. I didn't see any (laughs) fly on my bottom. Right. Let's get to it. Right. Oh, sorry. (laughs) <laughs> what is that? Why is it not going? Why is it making them noises? I'm so sorry. Let me try again. Ready? Here we go. Oops. Los Angeles, 1997. It's the hottest summer on record. Pollution is choking the city. The gangs control the streets. It has not been a nice day! As bad as things are... They're about to get worse. Much worse. Whoever killed him is gonna pay. I'm gonna finish it. It has almost no weight. But it cuts like steel. Incredible. Whoever did this took out four men armed with machine guns by hand. You don't know what you're dealing with. Other world life forms drawn by heat and conflict. He's on safari. Lions. Tigers. The bears. Oh my. Danny Glover. Gary Busey, Ruben Blades, Maria Conchita Alonso, Bill Paxton. Predator 2. He's in town with a few days to kill this Thanksgiving. We're back with Predator 2 from 1990. The Predator returns to Earth, this time to stake a claim on the war-torn streets of a dystopian Los Angeles. That's it. That's it. Danny Glover, he's too old for this ship. He's not too old for the Predator ship. I've always wanted to do a mash-up between this and Lethal Weapon because you've got Gary I... Busey and Danny Glover. I was thinking that. I was you thinking could that. do Riggs and Murtaugh on the chase after the Predator. I was thinking that. With Gay Boosie being the bad guy in both movies, essentially. 
So you've got right, Gary, Gary Busey, but we've also got the legend himself, Bill Paxton, is in this. Famously has had a fight with the Terminator, an alien, and this. The he's been killed. He's been killed by all three of them. Amazing. People say he's the only actor. That's incorrect. Ooh. Give Lance, us more. Henri- Lance Henriksen was also killed by the Terminator in Terminator 1. He was a cop in the police station. Oh. He was killed by a, an alien in Aliens. And he was killed by a predator I... in Predator vs. Aliens. Amazing. I never knew that. I always thought it was just the old Bill Paxton. Look at that. I wonder if there's any more. You never know. I don't think there is. I don't think there is. But yeah, that's pretty cool. We've also got Robert Davies in this. Oh, Robert yes. D- uh, D- 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 Detective Johnson. Yes, he and um, um, Captain Heinemann. And Johnson from Die Hard, though. Oh, he is. Of course he is. Sorry, yes, sorry. And he was famously in The Goonies as well. Um, that's one of the uh, the Fratellis. He, he's, got um, a bit, he's got a bit of a uh, uh, Tommy, uh, Tommy face, hasn't he? He's got a very craggy face. He could stop some lava with that face, I can tell you right now. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Tommy Lee Jones. I'm going to stop this. I don't know what that is. I can't an impression of him but yeah it's got a hell of a cast and um a hell of a premise and it, what i like is it's set in in the future year of 1997 well like like the first film we've covered today ladies and gentlemen on this show we covered something which establishes the first movie existed and events in the first movie we witnessed actually existed in the life in the world yeah. this movie does acknowledge later on that the first Predator movie happened, a uh, story happened, not a movie, the story happened, and it's actually something, and so it isn't a com- kind of a continuation, but the writers themselves said that they were like, we just wanted to see what Predator would be like in a city environment, especially the camouflage, and how he would react to the, 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 the different surroundings. And I was like, that's kind of cool, you're taking basically essentially a, a killer chameleon, giant killer chameleon, chucking him into the city. Um, you know, it's killer, a killer, 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 <laughs> He comes and goes. That's what he does. He comes and goes. He like does. like comes, boy George. He, he comes he and is. goes like boy George. Right. I always thought the predator was like boy George. I've always thought that. Links. <laughs> now, the other thing that this movie does, which isn't just be a cool, badass sequel, is it throws Danny Glover in into a really, 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 really hot day in L.A. You can see it's hot. And I said this to you, guys before we started recording today. Danny Glover always looks like he's just on the verge of passing out from the heat in every film he's in. I'm uh, too old for this shit, man. God, God damn it, Riggs. Damn it. Go spit, Riggs. Go spit. It's amazing in Lethal Weapon. I'm, I'm older than him from Lethal Weapon 1 and 2. That's amazing, like, when he played that character, because he just, you just think, how old is this guy? You can't pinpoint it. Is that his 60s? What is it? Because well, he's just, you know, he's just, I'm too old for this shit all the time. Yeah, but how old are you? I was born at the age of 50. He was just born at 50. That was it. He came out of the womb at 50. Born 50 and I'm dying. 50. <laughs> now, you talked about crossovers. Yes. I'd like to see now, and this film because it's set in a slightly futuristic. I'd really love to see Predator go to RoboCop City. What imagine, the fuck? imagine Predator versus RoboCop. Because this film feels that quite is a off, lot that way is off the, the chain, sir. All the way through this film, I'm thinking RoboCop because it's like slightly futuristic, but not enough that there's like flying cars. Yeah. Just like Robocop, but there's technology in it, but there's some guns that we haven't got right now and stuff like that. And I think, fucking hell, if the Predator turned up in Detroit and they were like, Murphy, there's been a spate of killings. And he's like, I'm on it. Leave it with me. And he goes out there and starts looking, investigating. He's like, there's a killer chameleon. When he's invisible, Robocop would spot it, though. He would see him. And they would both have that, it'd be a right off, wouldn't it? He would have to say, you're one ugly motherfucker at one point, wouldn't he? Oh, man. I really want to see it. I'm sure there's a comic book of that, but I would love to see that. Oh, I, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, actually. You know, um, That's cool as fuck. Good good thinking, Batman. It's only because this film... Yeah, just um, put Batman in like it, that. too. Oh, Batman versus... Well, there's been Batman versus Bat- Predator in the comics. Well, Batman versus Predator versus Robocop. Holy shit. Fuck me sideways. 
<laughs> with with Riggs and Murta. Oh my god! And then and Bruce and Willis from Die Hard. <laughs> Riggs and Murta team up with Judge Dredd. <laughs> <laughs> And Robocop comes in and says, hang on a minute. My man, John McClane over here, said he knows what's going on. Bruce Willis only does one day and does, like, one scene because he charges too much. Fuck you. And he's really that's unhappy not... about being there. He's got one line, fuck you, and that's it. It just goes... <laughs> but this, the other good things about this film, because we're getting silly, but the other good things about this film are not just the cast, not just the setting, not just the sequel, but it's it's different. And why it's different is... We've only seen this Predator. This, so this is 1990. We've only seen the Predator once. There's been no sequels or versus Aliens or any of those sort of films. And this film does two very cool things for me. Firstly, it puts him in an urban jungle, the, the Predator. Like you said, Gav, we get to see what he's like in amongst all these drug dealers, all these Rastafarian drug dealers um, who who and the, and the Latino drug dealers. And they're like the lords of the city, but they have no idea who this fucking predator is because he is an absolute machine when it comes to gutting and taking people's spines out but the other cool thing it does is it lays down the groundwork for some of those alien versus predator sort of things where gary boosie and his men in black they know about the predator and they're trying to get they're trying to capture it so they can study it and get the technology of it mm. do you know what i mean so since predator one these guys is know that, is that always that old old cliche of the government being the baddies because they're saying oh we're oh, doing yeah, one that's... thing but actually it's a this is a misdirection because we're being bad motherfuckers and we're doing the same thing they always do we're looking for a weapon like aliens we're looking yep. for a weapon which we can use to kill off lots of people from another country because a couple of people up top don't like each other because this is this is um very quickly going back to army of dead the character in that that portrays them all, spoiler alert, he's very much like Burke from Aliens because he's he's in the group of people, but he's really just there to capture the zombie or capture the alien, or in this case, capture the predator so that they can weaponize it. And I love that. I love that whole kind of... They wanted originally government. John Lithgow to uh, uh, play the part. I, I don't want to see John Lithgow mm -hmm. fight in The Predator. Mm -hmm. That'd be awful. I like it when all of a sudden Gary Boosie's like, I'm back with a flamethrower. <laughs> well, not a flamethrower, the, the, like, the freezing machine gun. The, the line is actually, guess who's back? Guess who's back? Why like, is Gary Boosie fighting The Predator? In, in a little documentary uh, about the making of stuff, yeah, the director does actually say, you know, it talks about Gary Boosie, it says he had had his accident. Uh, where he died for a moment and then came back. And then, then it cuts to Gay Boosie talking about it. <laughs> not, not talking about Predator 2. He's talking about that. <laughs> he goes through all that and you're like, all right. You know. <laughs> Gary Boosie, I know he's unhinged. I'm not going to paraphrase know. what he says, but it's just like, I, 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 I saw, I don't know, I can't remember what he says. If he saw something, he didn't see something or whatever it was, you know. But. It's right. Gary Boosie is, when he channels it in the right way, he's an incredible actor. Like, in Point Break, that's probably my <clears> favourite <throat> role of it because he channels that Nicolas Cageism in such a way where it's really good. Uh, and I like him in Silver Bullet. We've talked about him in Silver Bullet as well. Person on the Indians, person on the Cowboys. And But the thing is, you put Gary Boosie in a film and you're going to get Gary Boosie and that's what you want. It's like putting Nicolas Cage in a film. You get that. You get that crazy mental action. They, they're just... Uh, <clears throat> Sarah and I were quite uh, sad for Phil sad for him, but he's pet judge and it's, it's a really, really, really bad show and makes you feel a little bit uneasy like you want to go shower uh he's a he's a judge just where people are at pet court and he's the judge and it's just really 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 bad um uh, american daytime tv really really exploitative because uh, he doesn't look in a too good shape uh yeah i could i could i could can watch it i watched like five minutes like, i can't watch this i thought at first i was that bit laugh and that's me being a dis bit disrespectful gay boosie taking advantage of him in a way then watched it went no this isn't funny this is not like what i kind of thought would be humorous without being horrible to the person you know so yeah he, but well, he's he, he's great done he's some brilliant. incredible love roles i love him in the young corn silver bullet I, just, yes great roles he's done and same with Bill Paxton, who I think is a bit of a legend. Um, he is in this as a smiley, oh, 
horrible Luke, guy initially. He's Luke kid on the block, which I like as well. There's this side story where it's like, take, bring him into the office and say, look, kid, there's no heroes in here. It's a team effort. We're all going to work together as a team. And he's like, yes, sir, no way, sir, like that sort of thing. There's an amazing scene where Danny Glover says, you want the speech, don't you? <laughs> okay, I only got one speech for you, kid. Yeah. So listen and listen good. And yeah. he says to him basically like, don't fuck around, do what I tell you. Yeah. This job's not glamorous, blah, blah, blah. And that's and it. A and he says, I don't trust you, kid, because nobody asked to come and work here. Yeah. But because then he ends up sacrificing fucked. himself towards the end because he's a badass. But we see the police station when we get to it. We see the police station and it's like Robocop police station. This is why I say it. This is what this is the first thing time I saw it. When we see this police station, I thought it's the hecticness. Holy shit, like, this, this is, is new level hecticness. Yeah. It's just non stop. There's criminals everywhere. And you were just waiting to hear those footprints of do do Robocop, yeah. Robocop walks a bit. It's not. It's not him. So we, we have, this, we have this real cool team thing going on. I love this little team action. We start to get this at the beginning, like a big fight going on at the beginning, a massive shootout with some crazy motherfuckers, some crazy coked up fucking gang These members. These Latino gang, man. And they are, up. They've got sacks of cocaine, and they're like... Putting their whole face the whole, in the sack just of taking cocaine. loads of it, then getting the gun and going, nah, I'm ready. <laughs> Fucking like, oh we're my god. god. You know, guys, I think they're, are they Colombian, aren't they? That's right, they're Colombian. Yeah. I wouldn't want to take them on because they have got access to so much pure, uncut Colombian cocaine. They are, full. Also, they are just hyped. Traumatic handguns of the light I've never seen because this is 97, and when this film was made in 89, 90. They would have like been picturing some crazy super duper submachine guns. So these guys have got the drugs and they've got the guns and they've got the ponytails, Gav. Before, before we get into ponytail. before we get into the carnage and just to, uh, to explain that situation, um, uh, one of the other team members is the lady who goes along with Schwarzenegger in The Running Man. Yes, it's his right. co-star in The Running Man. I was just like, that's Maria. lady from Running Man. Because I hadn't seen this movie for Conchita a long time. Conchita Alonso. Maria Conchita Alonso right. is her real name. Okay. She plays the owner in this. And she's a great character. She reminds me, not because she's Latina, but she does remind me a little bit of Vaquez because she's got that kind of ballsy... Mm. But I, I like... I like this team thing in there. It's it's, it's all right to have this. Um, it's, it's Robocop. We needed a team thing. The first Predator movie has the team mentality thing going on. Obviously, with this film, though, we're going straight into it with the first film. I love the film. The whole film is a fucking misdirect. You're thinking you're watching an Arnold Schwarzenegger action pick in the 80s. Your average movie around that time, you know what you're coming in to watch. You, when you see the spaceship at the beginning for the first two minutes you forget that very quickly because you're in this action fight sequence in the jungle and you're like this is gnarly then all of a sudden it changes and flips on its head like from dust till dawn but with this film obviously we've established as a character called the predator we know that already so i love the fact straight away we actually get a pov of the predator's spectrum looking down on the street fight so in my notes I've, whenever that happens i've written the predator view yeah okay so that's how i write it the predator view and it's cool, actually. They trick us because it's a jungle, but then you realise it's just like some forest on the outskirts of LA. And then we cut to LA, and it's cool. And yeah, we cut to the shootout, and it's just it's we... sweaty, it's hot, it's destruction. The whole massive road in LA is literally cornered off. There's fucking cars everywhere. There's smoke, shit. There's people dying left, right, and centre, and it's gnarly fucking coked up Colombian gang with semi-automatic shooting at the cops. So we do find out, and we'll come back to this later, but just for a bit of backstory, we do find out that L.A. is basically fucked in 1997, and there's two gangs that run it. There's the Jamaicans, the Jamaican voodoo gang, I think they're called, and then you've got the Jamaican voodoo posse, and then you've got the Colombians. And the Jamaicans, they just smoke the weed all day long, and the Colombians love the fucking cocaine. And these two guys so are think, literally tearing so, the city apart. So they're basically, one's going to be ganja sellers, and one's going to be coke sellers. Is that yeah. what we're going with? Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's and the they market they the they control. We, uh, while this is going on in this carnage, we do have this really annoying dude who is a bit character in this that keeps coming up, and it's a news reporter. Who oh, he's a prick, isn't he? He's a twat. He, he fucks <laughs> things up. He's the sort of guy who goes in there and later on film the stuff which shouldn't be seen. I'm surprised he was allowed to keep the footage later on of those hanging dead bodies, you know. Yeah, but it's 97, Gab. It's the future, you know. I guess. <laughs> 
Now, what I like is Danny Glover's appearance because he's the boss. He's the ga- he's the leader of this squad. He's this the gaffer, squad. isn't he? He's the gaffer. Um, the squad. They're all they're all pinned down. There's a couple of cops that are shot. They're lying on the ground. Don't worry, Danny Glover's here. What's he going to do? He's going to drive his car directly into the middle of the action. Oh, well, it's flying everywhere. I was like, what's he going to do? He's he's basically doing Bruce Willis Die Hard. No, he's doing he's doing Riggs isn't there. No, Riggs in here. I'm going to have to be crazy today. He go drives along, hanging out the car like real low to the floor, like like he's got <laughs> the longest arm in the world of getting the steering wheel. And he's it's like he's going to get like road rash right on his face if he gets too close. You know, yes, he's literally that. But he makes most of the Colombians sort of run away. Um, but they only run off to do more cocaine. Literally, they go off and they smash their faces into barrels of cocaine, and then start shooting again. So. That, that's all he's managed to do. But he did manage to get the two cops who've been injured rescued. So that's cool. Now, all while this is going on, we get more Predator view. Somebody, okay. the Predator, is watching them. Okay. Why is the Predator now? I assume that the reason the Predator is here watching this is because he looks at this as in, like, this is a more of a challenge for my hunt. Yep. He's thinking... There's a lot of chance of, of me getting actually uh, hurt here because they've got all these weapons and things and they're fighting each other. It's all crazy. But this is going to be like a right old challenge. So maybe saying to his mates, I've got a right challenge next weekend. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm off to Earth and there's these idiots that are fighting each other. I'm going to sneak in there, get one of their heads and get back. I'll tell you, by Sunday night, I'll be back here with an, a skull from a Colombian crackhead. Do you think that they sort of have a meeting? They're in the office on Friday. Anyone got any plans the weekend? Anything cool? And pre- one of the predators is like, oh, me, yes. Um, I'm a, I'm off to Earth. I'm going to go back to 1997. I've heard there's a bit of a gang war going on in a, in a city called LA. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go and check it out, and I'm going to try and bring back a skull. And someone's like, oh, you know, like you say to your friend, oh, bring me back some uh, cheap cigarettes from Spain. Yeah, and, and the other one says, I bet you don't the, do it. I bet you can't get, get one. Internet. Get, no, well, and then someone says for laugh, I bet you get shot. Uh... Hey, bring me back Bill Paxton's spine. Yeah, yeah well, I'll, I'll try and get you Bill Paxton's spine. Let's see if I can get one. So oh, funny, yeah. isn't it? Anyway, so that's what his challenge is. I assume that's why he's there. It's a bit more of a challenge for his hunt. I think, I think that, but also I think by accident he comes across Danny Glover's character, Lieutenant Harrigan, who he realises is a really brave and... Cr- and Particularly, a bit a bit yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, this guy's a challenge. I, uh, I could, I could go up against him. He hasn't even met Gary Busey yet. Fuck knows what a predator would think when they, if they ever met Gary Busey. <laughs> Guess like, who's back? I'm going home. I'm going back to my predator planet. See you later. <laughs> As a kid, um, man, as a kid, <laughs> these, the, the coat, the dudes doing that one dude with long dark hair in a suit does the coat and looks up and goes, ah. What a face. Face. As a kid watching this movie, this shit me up. I was like, if it was an anti-drugs advert, fuck me, this is the one. Just put that on and have some kid sitting in a chair going, oh my God, mummy! <laughs> Just that clip of that guy's face going, ah! I, you wouldn't oh, touch drugs gosh. ever. I was scared shitless seeing this. I didn't know what was going on. Why is that white stuff on his face? Your mum just looks at you and goes, that, Gavin, is what happens if you do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> OK, <laughs> that is that. So Glover and his team, or Lieutenant Harrigan and his team, they start heading up the stairs after these Columbians. And they hear lots of um, screams and stuff as they start heading up the stairs. And there's one guy on the roof, and we do get to see a cloaked predator show up, or the cloaked predator show up, Um and Glover uh, sort of shows up as well. Um, he spots the cloaking effect, doesn't he, Danny Glover? He spots that there's something... He he looks up uh, to sort of a tele- uh, aerial pole, like over on the other roof sort of thing, and he's just like, what the fuck? He's very hot, so he wipes his brow with his sleeve to like, uh, what, and touches his eyes like, am I seeing right? What he the says, fuck? He says, uh, man, I'm losing it. Man, I'm losing it. Yeah. That's how uh, like Clint Eastwood doing that. <laughs> man, I'm losing it. Man, I'm losing it. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's what happens. Predator sort of is there, and we see the cloaked vision of him. Now, the rest of the gang have been slaughtered, 
and the cops assume well, they go it's into, the Jamaicans. Yeah, they go into inside and like like a lot of bodies hanging upside down. Some of them have been skinned. That's, um, uh, that, uh, the first Predator movie, again as a kid, watching the first Predator movie, seeing those bodies like skinned in the jungle really freaked me out. Same. And the same here. It was actually. something I hadn't seen and it was because it was an action movie. It wasn't a horror movie at that point. It was too much realistic. It's like, oh shit, this actually probably does happen, and that was quite actually disturbing. And the same with this, actually. Now we're in, a, in a, well. we're in a we're in an, uh, an apartment in LA. You know, swanky, very you know posh, rich apartment. But there's all these bodies that have been hung up. Some of them have been skinned. And they're like, how did they get they're up just... there? You know, because some of them are quite high up. So they're a bit like, what the fuck's going on here? And this is nice because we've got like a little mystery element going on here, even though though the audience, we know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. Those and one of the don't... bodies, one of the bodies is, well, even while the police are there, one of the bodies is kind of pulled up and taken away <clears throat> when they're not looking. Yeah, that's correct. Um, which is weird. And the captain shows up, Robert Davy, and he just... Agent Johnson. Typical, typical captain in, a, in an 80s or 90s film, goes up to Danny Glover, and he goes... Now, in any normal film, this is where Eddie Murphy gets told off. This is where Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan get told off. This is where somebody gets told off. You try telling Danny Glover off. Danny Glover is like a little volcano. And as soon as Robert Davy shouts him, Danny Glover just goes... Boom! And he just unleashes absolute hell onto Robert. How dare you, motherfucker? You don't understand what I've been through. And he just goes really tears into his boss. And I was thinking, <laughs> fucking hell, man. Danny Glover has ripped him to shreds. Like, if Danny Glover keeps doing this job, he's going to have a stroke soon. There's absolutely no way he's getting out of this unstroked. In that heat as well. Oh, he's man, so he, he is, he's going to have an aneurysm. Well, thank God for his heart and his stroke, because all of a sudden a helicopter shows up yeah. and interrupts him midstream. And this helicopter contains Gary Boosie and Gary Boosie's just special to, Just to make black. Danny Glover even more stressed. Gary Boosie and his big old teeth and a couple of men in black show up. <laughs> thank God's now doing a teeth impression. And he thinks, Hi. who the hell is this? One of his men in black is Adam Baldwin, one of the Baldwin clan. Oh, really? I only, know, in... I only know the uh, Alex. Alec Baldwin, Alec. Stephen Baldwin, Sorry, William Alec. Baldwin. Oh, yeah, there's, there's, yeah. Adam Baldwin. Oh, I don't know. Mike Baldwin. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. Um, that's all we see. We just see the men in black and Danny Glover is confused. We cut to what looks like the police station from Robocop, as we've discussed. Yeah, my note H- says police station, Robocop lock. Hundreds of criminals in there. Hundreds of them. And Bill Paxton keeps going, oh, excuse me, sir. Uh, excuse me. Oh, sorry, sir. In a minute, man. I'll be with you in a minute. Danny Glover keeps saying, I'll be with you in a minute. I'll be with you in a minute. I'll be with you in a minute. Eventually, somebody says, and we've seen this probably in other films. So what did you want to see me about? Oh, you've got a new partner. Oh, yeah, who's it? That guy there, and it's Bill Paxton, the guy that's been trying to talk to him all this time along. So he's not a new partner, sorry, but he is a new member of their squad. And this is where they have a little discussion. Danny Glover's like, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's a team effort, no hero stuff, shit like that, blah, blah, blah. Indeed. But Gary Boosie arrives in the police station. So this is the guy we've just hi. seen in the chapel. He says, hi. Hi. I'm here to stop. I'm here to stop King Willie's men. So King Willie, <laughs> brilliant. King Willie is the leader of the Jamaican voodoo posse. Now, if my name is King Willie, I mean... I, I did say to Sarah later on tonight, call me King Willie. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I just said to Sarah, call me Danny Glover. To Sarah? No, I mean Alex. <laughs> And then I went invisible like the Predator and ran away. <laughs> and backed out like Homer into the hedge. <laughs> yes, so he, Gary Boosie's plan is to stop King Willie's voodoo gang. Yeah, and so that, that's, his, that's, that's it, how he, what he's given the, the, giving the cops, isn't he? That's the story at the moment. I'm going to keep right. King Willie out of the neighbourhood. Like, why are you putting so much effort into keeping King Willie out of the neighbourhood? That's like, it seems a... Uh, uh, not something you're going to put these resources into. To be fair, out of the two gangs... If it's Ganja, not really. 
I'd say keep the ganja gang on the streets. And, get rid and of the Colombian the coke. coke gang with yeah. the machine guns because, you know, fucking voodoo magic. Voodoo he says like, magic, oh, man. I love yeah. that shit. Yeah. Um, he, so basically, yes, he strings them along and he says, oh, it's just a bit of cooperation between us. It'll be all right. Come on, we can do this. Everybody's um, sweating in this film. So, so much hot. sweat, isn't there? I feel hot. Was it actually hot when they filmed it? Um, I don't know how hot it was. I, I can't tell you the weather for that time. Oh, that, it might have been in a sort of trivia or something. Um, I haven't seen anything about it. Okay. It was probably, knowing the sort of trivia you get, it was probably like snowing and they had to make it look yeah, hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what I really like is that Bill Paxton, they, they witness him trying to chat up the He's owner. He's such a cowboy, isn't he? He said, like, hey, uh, let me talk to you about something. And he starts chatting to her. And she just grabs him by the balls, like really squeezes them. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Wow, that's pretty painful. Glover gives him that speech we talked about. Why are you here, kid? No one requests to come here. You're, you're about to enter a goddamn war zone, he says to him. And then we cut straight to what I've written down as a fucking crazy sex scene I've written here. Uh, oh, yeah, this is the, uh, uh, yeah, this is a bit of shagging, yeah. She is wild, this woman. Like, she's like... She if, she goes for it, doesn't she? How do you keep... Uh, she couldn't keep that... It's coke, because she's not going to keep that like, energy up. I'd say if Reagan from The Exorcist grew up but was still possessed, this is what it'd be like. Because <laughs> she's wild. And she was riding the man as well. She's really she's Possessed crazy. Reagan, grown up, riding the man. That's just... But that's because they're on all this Colombian coke. Must be. Now, what's the worst thing that can happen, Gav? If you're in the middle of a Colombian coke... A Jamaican set, gang which... bursting the door with semi-automatics. And machetes. Oh, um, that's the that's the icing on the cake. <laughs> that's not what you want. To the point, they've done so much coke, they don't even notice that these Jamaicans have burst in the room for about ten seconds. She just carries on riding him, well, and it's... then she looks around and goes, "Oh my god!" It's guns for show, machetes for pros, isn't it? Ooh, oh shit. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the rasters burst in. Like I said, they hang the bloke up. They want to. They want to um, basically leave a message for the rest of the Colombians by doing carving something on his chest. Um, well, it's it's a voodoo spell. ritual. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a bit incorrect because voodoo is from Haiti, really, and the Jamaicans wouldn't. I don't think they do voodoo in Jamaica, but this is a Hollywood. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Umbrella looking at, yeah. isn't it? It's a bit of a sort of mishmash of yeah, cultures. Just throw it yeah. all in there. That's it. No one cares. Yeah. But we didn't care. And I certainly didn't care watching this as a 14, 15 this, year old. This whole movie was just so full on. Like, I love the fact that they managed to keep that full onness out from the original film. That original film is quite like graphic drama. It's driven as a serious film, isn't in every sense. This one is still keeping that in there. It's all right. Um, it's a shame that they kept it the same budget because otherwise they probably could have. He wanted some more money. Uh, John McTiernan would have probably come back to direct the sequel, and that would, would have made this even more better because he's great. Inter- interesting fact as well. This was released in the US at Christmas. This was a Christmas film. <laughs> So again, that's not a good time to release it. Um, you know, what's the fu- what's the point of that? It's pretty fucking weird. Should be a summer film. I had the game on my Sega Master System, Predator Two. I'd you were a it, cop. I played it one on the Spectrum. I was a cop running around. Um, I don't really remember doing much really, other than like shooting and climbing up ladders and mm. collecting things. And I think now and again the Predator would show up. And you'd have to like collect clues or something. I can't really remember, but I was Danny. Sure. I think you were Danny Glover. Oh. That was pretty cool. So the, she, the guy who's being hung up, the Colombian guy, says, "Why are you doing this?" And they said, "Because we're going to take your soul." I don't know why I said it in a Mexican accent. You know? <laughs> so clearly, I can't do accents anymore. Um, but it's probably not appropriate for me to do a, Jam- a Jamaican accent either. So moving forward, so they say we're going to take your soul. Uh, oh, this is where he says fucking voodoo magic, man, which I love. But, Gav, three little laser dots appear on the guy, didn't they? Yeah, totally. Uh, we, we, we know, know what's what going means. on. Yeah. Suddenly, 
people get started getting shot. We so get they just amazing... start shooting everything. I love the fact the guy with the semi-automatic runs along shooting, and the guy who's hung up just runs past him shooting his body. Is and it's all a bit like oh, this oh. is so horrible. It's like a, it's like they're just leaving it as like a pig hanging up or something. Do you know what I mean? It is, it's it is horrible. Really graphic because it's full on nudity as well, and it always when you ever have full on nudity in in movies, it does give it a different thing. You know, it 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 make it levitate levitates it. I always say that, don't I? Elevates elevates it to that next level. Elevates it to that next level. I'll do what Sarah did on your other podcast and correct you on that one as well. Because you bless you, you said that as well. You said I always levitate it, and so I, 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 my brain every time. My, no, my brain every time goes. There. Yeah, it's very. It's, uh, it's because sometimes you think of gravitate and sometimes I just, you elevate. I've got issues. That's but what you, it is. My friend. Again, again, I don't know how I've come over this, making this job of being a podcaster. Again, I don't know. <laughs> I, can't, I don't know what You've words got two are. Podcasts. What the fuck are words? I know. Um, Listen, it elevates it because they're naked and because they're getting shot. It just makes films with, with full on nudity, uh, especially male nudity as well, because that was a little bit of a late bloomer in the, in the cinema's history, I think, for coming around. It was more of a mainstream thing. But it, Old it, man's cop. Exactly. It just makes it a lot more. And having this graphicness of what's going on here, with the hanging upside down and using machetes, it's just a full on film. It really is. This is brilliant, this scene, because we get to see a lot of Jamaicans get taken out in this scene. And one of the guy, one of the guys gets that net, which we saw in Alien vs. Predator, uh, which sort of fires out and then wraps around you and cuts into you. As it sort of... On IMDb, the parental guide is the only film I've seen which every category in there, it's severe for every category. <laughs> Fucking hell. I've never seen that. It's all red severes. That's awesome, that's awesome. Um, there's a lot of headshots. Um, somebody gets stabbed with a spear as well, and it's the predator spear, it's invisible at that point. Um, and as he stabs him, he then appears, and I, the predators do this so well. They did this in Alien vs. Predator, they did this in Predator. They kill someone and then they appear, you know, and I love the way they turn off their cloaking device after they've killed someone. They've got such a swag. Predators, haven't they? They're just so cool. I mm. fucking love them so much, man. Mm. So they kill the leader. <clears throat> the predator kills the leader of this gang. And later on, the cops arrive on the scene, as do the reporters. Um, and Bill Paxton now comes into his own. Now, Bill Paxton, it turns out, is a little bit of like face from the 18. He's a good looking guy. He's got a bit of a mouth on him. He can chat. So to distract the reporters, Danny Glover says, I've heard you're good. Go, go do what you do distract them keep them away from the crime scene mm. bill paxton suddenly finds his place in his new gang he's like yes they like me and that's and he's and that's it then he's instantly he's liked by them because they realize he's really good at this kind of shit yeah he's like face from the a team he's really good at this kind of shit it's cool man um and they go up and they uh they go inside and they find all the bodies that are skinned and hung up kind it's of, pretty great it's kind of lucky for the predator in some ways that this voodoo gang happened to hang someone up in the first place and cut into him so uh, when they go in there they're straight away assume it's all the same gang that done the same to all of the people why would they not think that but until they find out who the people are that are hung up and it's the actual gang yeah well bigger I mystery mean, there's two things there firstly I often, watching this film, I often wonder if the Predator had been studying L.A. a lot longer than we knew of, and he knew that that's one of the things they do in that gang, and he maybe thought, I could get away with this by doing something that that gang does. But secondly, and I think I lean more towards this one, I think it's just coincidence that he hung them up, and it just confuses the cops even more, because they, they're like, hang on a minute, it's the own, their own gang that have been hung up in the same way that that gang hangs people. What the fuck is going on? Mm. And why are some of them skinned? Mm. Like, the cops are just completely blown away by this. It's it's a gruesome crime scene. Yeah. And it feels it, you know, in, in some films you feel like Murphy getting killed at the beginning of Robocop, the original Robocop. That's a gruesome scene to watch. You know, That's and, a film this like feels this film, like though. That. Yeah, they yeah. both have that very realistic, dramatic, violent feel to them. It's not cartoony. It's very like, it's graphic. Meat, very it's meat hanging it's up in a butcher shop here. Very real life made, you know, produced film. Films. And they find a survivor, the crazy sex cocaine girl, 
is still alive. Like in Predator, the first one, where they have the lady come along Indeed. with them, El who, who, who witnessed El Diablo. El Diablo. And she says the same thing, this girl. She says, El Diablo. And one of the guys, I think it's Danny Glover, says, I think we got a new player in town. So he thinks, right, there's somebody new in town. Yeah, she says the devil came for them. It's not even not either gang, it's somebody different. And whoever this guy is, he's badder and bigger and uglier than the fucking Colombians and the Jamaicans combined. Then they spot the spear up in the roof. Then all of a sudden, boom, the doors burst open. Hiya! Boosie's boys, I've written down. Boosie's boys. Boosie's boys. Boosie's so, boys. So as my as my notes go through here, I've written quite a lot. I'll say Glover's gang investigate, or Boosie's boys enter the scene. <laughs> Glover's gang versus Boosie's boys. That sounds like a really shit sort of musical, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah really bad. Uh, uh... I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs> Oh, yeah, take a load of me and my teeth. <laughs> uh, uh, Danny Glover's like, all right, cool, we get out of it. He says to uh, says the old young buck, Bill Paxton, follow those motherfuckers. Follow those motherfuckers. Yeah. yeah. And he's good at that. He says, I'll be on them like cheese on a steak or something, probably. Something. Um, so he does. So later on, Glover... Uh, is at the crime scene. Glover and his partner go back to the crime scene. Sorry, Glover's partner goes back to the crime scene and he finds that spear tip that he talked about and he uh, tries to bring it down. Now, while he's up there, because this guy's called Danny, actually, he hears, Danny boy. Danny boy. Which is what Danny Glover said earlier to him and the Predator recorded it, just like he recorded, turn around. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and this guy's that. hanging up on a, a very precarious uh, uh, thing, hanging off it. He's, you know, he's climbed up this wall sort of thing, and he's just trying to reach this thing. And it, obviously, here's this, turns around, and it's like, what the fuck? And he goes to fall, grabs something, and it's the blade from the Predator. Or what? Is it a blade? It's like a spear, isn't it? Uh, oh, yeah, he's holding on to a spear, and he sort of visualises for a moment. We see the Predator, he sees Predator, he goes, what the fuck? He just falls backwards and uh, dies, doesn't he? Because he falls to the floor. We just see blood just splat all over the floor. Mm. Um, and then we hear the Predators do that terrifying, like, Rawr! weird roar thing that they do. Oh, so now, we cut to Robert this, Dabby. Did we, uh, did they cut this scene? Why didn't we have any scene of... It's really weird. We cut straight to Danny Glover being pissed that he can't be on the case about Danny being killed. It is weird. You're Why right. do we not have like him being found? Danny Glover saying, what? What do you mean? Like All that sort of thing. And then going into, I want to find this. I want to find a person to be on this. Then go into that. No, you can't be. Yeah. Weird. Because this scene just explodes. Must be a time thing. Must be like for just making the movie go quick. Because we just go into this scene which explodes with Robert Davi sort of having a go at, at Danny Glover. It's weird. Whilst Gary Boosie sort of screaming, well, I'm going to be taking over. You should not impede me. You know, I'm See, I'm Boosie in the need, MIB. We need some more information there. But anyway, I suppose it doesn't matter that much. But I don't know. Yeah. It feels weird. It doesn't matter. Um, but Danny Glover does confront Gary Boosie at one point. Um, and Gary Boosie says to him, you don't know what you're dealing with. You've no goddamn idea what you're dealing with. Yeah. So we know that Gary Boosie certainly knows a lot more than he's letting on now. Um, Danny, Danny's actual kill uh, by the Predator, the, the, the difference between this and the John McTierrick one and the first one was the suspense. There was no suspense in Danny's death. It was really quite come and go. It was really like, oh, there's a Predator, and he's killed him, and he's gone. Do you know what I mean? I was, I was but, hoping for the first sort of kill, I was hoping for a bit more. But at the same time, I really like that the Predator still uses recordings to trick people because the scariest recording he uses later on in this one is, want some candy? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he just says, want some candy? Want some and people candy. turn around and it's really spooky, man. It's it's really spooky. He's, he's like a ghost. I did sample this many moons ago. Did you, I played the Predator one, didn't I? On it, didn't I? You did, yeah. I did a Predator 2 as well. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can get away with playing it. No, I don't know. What do you think? I think we could maybe look at doing something for the Legion patron that's got some music in it. 
Yeah, I guess. Oh, cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Bill Paxton has been tailing Gary Busey, and he says, he comes back and he says, Danny Glover, listen to me. They've been setting up weird futuristic equipment and radars and sensors all over the city. I have no idea what they're doing, but they have got some equipment I have never even seen before. And, and Danny Glover says, right, set up a meeting with King Willie. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Um, we find out the death is instantaneous of Danny. Uh, the, he was starved to death, uh, sort of a speared to death, wasn't he? Mm. Uh, and it killed him straight away. And uh, who is this lady who's the, uh, the pathologist? Is it a pathologist? Yeah, she's like a mortician or whatever you want to call them. Uh, who, who, she reminds me of so I'm sure I've seen her in a different film or something. Uh, I'm not sure who she was, Maybe actually. Maybe in the Ninth Gate. Anyway. Maybe. Hmm. Um, uh, so uh, we're just getting a little bit of that. So he does, the Danny Glove does then say, uh, yeah, can you check out the spear? So like Danny Glover now has that spear bit. So we definitely have a missed scene here because how did he get that spear bit? And he says, oh, this is Danny's hand. And it's like... We should have seen him get that at least out of his hand. And then she, she. But he says, it. he says, can you analyze it? And let me know what you, what you come up with. And even actually, we've got this little detective thing going on. I like. She says none of the elements that this is made of are on the periodic table. This isn't even from the planet Earth. Yeah, essentially. And it's great we've got this little mystery thing. If we didn't know the first Predator movie and we just went into this movie, it'd be a right sort of suspense thing, wouldn't it? If we didn't have like. Be quite funky, quite it funky. It would be funky. Um, funky is Danny uh, King Willie's uh, limo. About to say that now. The only car that I can think of that rivals this is Shaft. Is Isaac Hayes' car? In oh, in Escape from New York. <laughs> Escape from New York. The chandeliers. The chandeliers. Yeah. But this car is a zebra print limousine full of ganja smoke and rasters. That that is pretty fucking cool. And they pick him up and Bill Paxton's quite concerned for his boss. You you could be around there, sir. And he's just like, yeah, no, I'll be fine. Don't worry about it. I'll be fine, kids. Go home. He gets in the car and the smoke is pouring out of it and he's and the guy says, He the must get high. Hit. He would get high being breathing that. For the first thing you hear when he gets in the car, you just hear somebody go, You want some ganja man <laughs> <laughs> As a kid, I was like, this is so cool. I don't think you've got any choice, Danny Glover. There's no point in asking him if he wants some ganja man. Everyone in there has got about four spliffs on the go. He is literally going to be fucked by the time they arrive and meet it's, King Willie. I think, I, think, I think possibly Danny, in fact, Danny Glover is black himself. I think he is slightly acknowledged in there. And we feel slightly safer for him in there. If it was Bill Paxton in there, I'd be like, you're dead, white boy. Yeah, yeah definitely. If it was a lily white cop getting in there. Like, you're, Danny Glover at least you're, has got you're that hung up, up but... and your dick's going to be cut off and yeah. put in your mouth. But you also get the impression that Danny Glover probably doesn't smoke. Because when he gets out of the car later, he gets out and he goes, oh, you guys... Need to cut back on smoking. He's, You're not going to tell these guys to cut back oh, on smoke. Not. He gets dropped off in this alleyway. Now, this particular alleyway, um, the production crew, when they're setting it up, obviously yeah. have to clean it up and stuff. The the the, the locals didn't really like them, would and actually throw beer bottles at them and also bags of feces. Yeah, and they find some dead rats. And then... dead rats. And when they're tidying up a bit more, they're just shifting stuff around. What do they find, Dan? Uh, they found a dead body in one of the bins. Yeah, they found a dead body when clearing and up the set to film. And production for about a week while the police came in. And, but the police didn't even spend that long. They just went, yeah, this kind of stuff happens in this part of LA. That's... Sorry to so interrupt yeah, your film. Of course film. not. It's going to be sort of skid row area. They don't <laughs> give a fuck. Police, the police don't care, unfortunately. Sorry to interrupt your film. Let us get this dead body out of your way so you can carry on filming Predator 2. Bye! It's just Can't. crazy. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, some of the production people were just like, this is the worst I've ever filmed at. Like, the fact that you find a dead body when clearing up the fucking rubbish. Yeah. They made it nicer than when they went in, I expect. I don't know. So he talks to Willie in this alleyway, and he says, who is he, or, or what is he? So already, Danny Glover suspects this might not be a, a man. And... Willie, King Willie seems to know. He says, it can't be killed. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, and he doesn't really give him any other information. He just says he can't be killed. Gives him a few little bits of information here and then. Danny Glover leaves and that's it. 
just as he leaves, something invisible lands down in front of King Willie into a puddle. It's really cool, actually. It's, this, this, this now, obviously, the director, yeah, you've done this pretty well, to be fair. Uh, I love the fact that he splashes into the water, then there's footsteps going along. And I love the fact that we know what it is. Again, we know what it is. But I love the fact that if we jump into King Willie's mind, the King Willie's like this gnarly old school wise dude. He's like, I'm going to fight to the death. Don't give a fuck. I've done it a million times. You know he has. Pulls out his spear and he's like, okay, oh, this is something from well, another got, planet um, or something. But I know got, shit, you know. He's got like a pimp walking stick, but then he oh, it's pulls a, sword. a yeah. sword out of it, doesn't he? It's because a crazy brother a type family. thing. Yeah. 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 But the, the transition now of this scene always blows me away. Fucking of great. Of his face up close they, screaming they, at the Predator. They storyboarded this. And then it cuts straight to that face. You realise it's a beheaded head. Well, it's a scream. We, we, we go cut to just a scream, almost like Billy's death. Off, off screen, we see it. We have a like, Whoa! yeah. Um, that, 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 with the fact that we have this scream now, uh, then cuts to the head with the mouth open so it's like the screen would be coming out of that mouth but then the head just goes out of shot and it's literally just the severed head being walked out of shot Predator just walks off holding King Willie's severed head um, and then we get to see the skull being polished and mounted um, later on and we'll find out a bit more about disgusting. that <laughs> It's oh, just yeah. like, oh, like you're cleaning that skull. And I'm gl- again, I didn't watch on the projector screen, and some of these bits are a bit yucky. Like I said, intense and severe as for the uh, rating on IMDb. Bill Paxton has found that there's some links to the slaughterhouse in the, in the local city, um, which they'll look a bit more into in a moment. Um, and it's to do with the crime scene. So, and Paxton. You know, Says, so hang on, the slaughterhouse. Hey, 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 boss, the slaughterhouse. I can't do a Bill Paxton voice. The slaughterhouse is um, uh, where I lost lost the thing. Hey, Gary Gary Boosie, Boosie, was there. Boosie and his boys. And he vanished when Boosie's boys, they got there and then they Boosie vanished. Boosie and the boys. I tried them there, but I don't know where they are after that. So we know that. We know there's something to do with the slaughterhouse going on and Boosie's boys. Boosie's boys. Uh, now we get a weird moment with the graveyard. A little kid. And he's got a little water pistol. This kid doesn't know how lucky he is. Fucking hell, man. This this, this was 1990. This movie could have gone one of two ways. Oh, they could have gone yeah. the way it went, or they could have blown... And I still was thinking, because I've watched this for about four or five years, I was thinking, there is a chance this predator might kill this child in a minute. Does he do it? No, he doesn't, thankfully. I was watching it? Rambo earlier, uh, like Rambo 4. And oh, um, just uh, just that, there's loads of kids that get shot in that, and you you see the squid squids go off, squibs go that off. That film is so violent. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's yeah, a good movie. Um, there were some sh- kills in Army of the Dead actually that reminded me of that, where you see people literally get turned into like mush. Mm. Pretty, and the same with um, Busan, uh, Penisula, as you like to call it. Oh, so. Answer. Danny Glover is at Danny's grave. That Danny's grave. He goes, yeah, and uh, he says, oh, you know, oh, "I've got to avenge you," as he was that kind of stuff. Um, uh, but while he's there, the predator is spying on, spying on him from a tree. But he says, we said. "Want some candy?" And he just no, because yeah. he no, no, not actually no. He goes up, walks along, and finds Danny, his his mate Danny, who died his necklace in a tree. Yeah, but and he's, he's just like, "What the fuck?" But it's the kid from the graveyard that says, do you want some candy? To the invisible oh, yeah, guy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, Because then he says to his mummy, Mummy, I thought I saw a ghost. It's like, it's not a ghost. It's a predator. It's uncloaking. Just get the fuck out of here, son. So he freaks out um, and pulls his gun out when he finds his necklace. Because he's like, what the fuck? Someone, like, I know that's Danny's necklace. Yep. Danny not Glover. Yeah, Danny the guy that got killed, not Lieutenant Harrigan. Yeah. Uh, cool scene now. Where Bill Paxton and Liana are on a subway. It was in one of the comic books, apparently, and they thought it would look good on film. I'm a big fan of subway scenes, and there's two that stand out to me. Blade, the first Blade movie, is a great scene in a subway. There's um, loads of good subway scenes, isn't there? Tons. American World in Paris. Terminator, isn't it? One in Terminator, the first one. Um, Maybe not. Sure. But there's definitely American World in Paris. Yeah, there's loads of like, yeah. 
Um, it's always yeah. a good, good grittier <clears throat> not, uh, New York subway as well, you know. And obviously you've got like American Wealth in London. That's a great scene. Yeah, London Underground, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Well, Paxton and Liana are on the subway and they spot this gang of people that are sort of terrorising everyone on the on the underpass. But this, this gang don't get very far because like, every, everyone and their mother is packing. Yeah, literally. This is LA 1997, the future. Everybody has guns. a gun. Which but made also, me think later on when a predator turns up, if he hadn't made that Lord of Lights go out on a power car, he would have been fucked. Everyone would have just shot him. <laughs> Imagine that these days, like in certain towns in America, the predator shows up. Semi automatics on them. He wouldn't last two or three minutes. Nah, nah. He'd be knifed up. Come to London, be knifed up. Some redneck would be like, You ain't from round here, boy. Yeah. I don't, I don't recognise your, your your type from round here and next thing you know he's getting shot yeah you're right in London you get slicing and dice talking of London and slicing and dice and have you heard that they're doing a Attack the Block sequel uh, yeah I think so yeah no oh, you don't seem very keen on that no, the first one uh, so. yeah, okay well moving forward this gang doesn't get very far you're right everyone's got guns but also the Predator lands on top of the subway smashes down through the roof lights go the- out Puts the lights out and we get the the pred predator vision kicking. There's a bit of a strobe going on with flashes of light. It's Brilliant. quite quite full on. Predator starts killing loads of people. Um, Bill Paxton starts Paxton shooting. Paxton tries to stay and like like um, the, the running man lady. She she gets she starts taking the commuters up the train to safety. Go on, go on. And Bill yeah, Paxton's like, I'll take them on. He's quite, he he's quite erotic. Erotic. <laughs> Fuck it out, God. <laughs> Fuck it out. I tell you what, Bill Paxton does it for me. Why? He's just so erotic. <laughs> You've used that word before. I remember about I've episode never 40. used erotic. You've used it I've before. never said that. It's like hero and erotic. It's erotic. Yeah. Yeah. You've said it before. I've never said but, that. And we hear, and we hear, we hear, want some candy at this point, which confuses Bill Paxton even which more. Which is so erotic. It really is. And the train breaks and stops and everybody gets off. And Liana finds Bill Paxton strung up. Now, the Predator grabs her, does a quick scan of her. What does he spot, Gav? She's Pregorama. She's pregnant. Leaves her alone. She goes into shock. But he leaves her alone. So, you know, he's still being the gentlemanly hunter he is. So let <laughs> The predator, the gentlemanly hunter. So, ladies, if you ever want to avoid getting killed and beheaded by a predator, make sure you've got a baby in you. But you're you your leg. Yeah. Or have cancer, like... Um, yeah, Lance Hendrickson. Lance Hendrickson. Ladies, ladies versus he predator. had cancer. Don't turn your back on me. He made a mistake of saying that. But, he got killed. But, yeah, yeah. It's a way to avoid the predator. And mud. Mud. So there we go. Being pregnant, being covered in mud, or having cancer are the three rules to avoid a predator. Or well, three ways, uh, rather than rules. Uh, three rules. ways. <laughs> it's not a rule. To, you must get cancer. Okay. It's, it's, it's gremlins. Don't feed them after midnight. Exactly. Don't get them wet. Get cancer. We, get don't, we don't see Paxton die. Um, it's a bit of a shame. He kind of just gets thrown and all of a sudden he dies. You hear him screaming. How have you died? You just got thrown. But we do so, see his, it's a shame. We do see his spine and his uh, skull on the back of the Predator later when he's climbing the building. I suppose. Danny Glover arrives. Well, they check and the tube, and it's just the lady goes back to check the tube, and everyone's hung up, all the people in the tube. Well, that's just know. gnarly as fuck. This is, um, you know, these these sort of movies, these creatures don't often kill just everybody on the scene. But in this film, this guy's stringing up anyone on the scene mm. just and, everyone and this like, is Colombian where, gangs this is where the lady passes out from shock she does Glover's kind of like the last one left now they just don't know who done it though it's like a, like literally like the police standing investigating like, well, who the fuck's doing this great scene though here now because Glover spots that there's some blood on the ground and he follows the blood trail and he spots and he, the pred he spots the pred and he, he runs after him and the Pred escapes back out onto the street. And we get this great scene where he's invisible and he's bouncing across rooftops of cars, climbs up a roof. Danny, Danny Glover punches follows the reporter. Him. Oh, I love that bit. 
Danny Glover punching a reporter will always be good. Yeah. The classic Stop. reporter punch. Go spit. My favourite reporter punch will always be... Is it Scream 1 or 2? Scream 1. Scream 1. That's going to always remain the best one, I think. Mm. It, it does die hard, obviously. Mm. Water peg, you know. Yeah, but Scream still does it for me, because it's girl on girl. Like, no one saw that come in. She just completely sparks her yeah. out. Yeah. Out for the count. Um... Yeah, so Predator's got back Paxton's skull and spine on the back of his sort of belt as he's climbing up this building. Yeah. yeah. Way to rub it in for Danny Glover. But the Bussy Boys approach um, and they apprehend Glover. Yeah, they put, push into his car, pull him out, and luckily push into his car just outside their trailer. Right outside. It's quite incredible. And we get probably one of the coolest looking moments for Predator himself as a character, because I'm assuming he's a he. He's stood on top of a building in LA, screaming up at the sky with his spear in his hand, and the lightning is striking his spear, and he's so strong that he can take a lightning strike. These, that's how strong these things are. Is he just unfortunate that lightning is striking, though? <laughs> Maybe he's like, ow! Bloody ow! hell! Fucking, this is why I never come to this planet. Give me a break, like, for God's sake. I was just roaring. I don't know. I like to think he's kind of charging himself up almost like a, you know, like it a is, battery. Isn't it? it just looks cool. That's basically what it is. It's just front cover fodder. Now, Boosie's in a shiny suit. Boosie and the Boosie boys look like they're in a... 80s dance video. disc video. Yeah, absolutely. Intergalactic planets. They're kind of doing that kind of crazy... Boosie and Beastie boys. The Boosie Boys. The Beastie Boosies. That's what I said. They're called the Boosie Boys. The Boosie Beasties. <laughs> oh, God. So they're in silver suits. They tell him about... He um, would be their alternative dancer, wouldn't they? Just, the that's a, ah, pissing on the Indians, pissing on the Cowboys. Um, they tell Danny Glover, look, let's tell you what happened in the South American jungles about four or five years ago, there was a team that was completely wiped out. And we get we get basically what we already know from Predator 1, which is acknowledging it, but it's like it's a bit strange to do it now why they didn't they could have done it earlier on, but it's a good time to do it now because we're we we know about it anyway, but we are now with on Danny Glover's side now learning information that he's learning at the same time. But it makes sense because yeah, of course. Brucey says to him, you know, we heard, we heard there was a thermonuclear sort of device that went off mm. and an entire team was taken out. Then this, a similar thing happened in another country yeah. and he, he actually lists about two or three events similar. So the Predator has come back to Earth a couple of... or a Predator has come back to Earth a couple of times. So and they, they know he's a hunter, you know. Yeah, they know he hunts people for sport, you know, and, and they want to find out they, what the fuck this is. So basically, it's a new era of technology. They could use this to uh, um, for their arms, their weapons programs. There's some absolutely... It always comes gold. down to killing other people, doesn't it? There's some absolutely gold boosy moments here. He says things like... When Danny Glover doesn't quite grasp what he's saying, he says, it's a fucking alien. He just looks him dead in the eyes and says that. I, I messaged you the other day, that, that movie that Sarah and I watched with Gary Boosie and he's only in for one scene. I messaged you, didn't I, about it on WhatsApp. Uh, uh, he's in one scene and he he says, that he comes out, he's, a, he's wearing a suit and he's a crazy, he cuts off chickens at a rest stop. Uh, oh yes, that's right. And he's crazy and just says this um, says to this guy, Give this chicken to your woman and um she can poke put it up her ass like a dispository, then she fart and it smell like fried chicken. And it's like the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. And Gay Bruce <laughs> said, Ah in his really chicken stained suit with this hick guy who owns the petrol station. It's really weird. I couldn't tell you what well, the, the movie is called. Well, the other thing that he says, the other thing he says in this, when he's talking about the alien, he says, "I'm talking hunting, I'm talking lions, I'm talking tigers and bears. Oh my!" And he kind of wow. says this like crazy scene, and then he then this, he reveals. This is, well, this is after. He's, this is just probably the first film after his accident of dying. Yeah, maybe. Well, Danny Glover says, "I think I've seen him. I've seen something." that was there but not there and he says that's a cloaking device and that's what we're after we're after the technology this thing's got crazy weapons and technology and invisibility that you wouldn't believe in fact one of his guys even explains what the um 
the cloaking is. It's that he can reflect and bend light. So it, it sounds they cool. They want that technology. You know? Oh, man. If the army could get hold of they that... They could be shit, invisible. Uh, That's what they're trying uh, to do. Fuck okay, no. so They, they could realized... be an army guy to be on me right now. Absolutely. Oh, rubbing my shoulders for me. Oh, that's lovely, that is. <laughs> Kill me. I thought it was going to turn into ghost, actually, clay modelling. Oh, um, my love. They've essentially realised that, that the Predator keeps coming back to this butchering place, uh, uh, warehouse, so he could actually eat. Uh, so he's probably just eating the meat frozen, I guess. Well, he might just warm up. He's got devices. He could probably also, make a little stove. if you were going to go somewhere to polish up some bones, and you know, you want to go somewhere where they've got the equipment to do that. Yeah, maybe he's just an outsider. Doesn't make a mess. I don't know. But what makes this scarier is in the first Predator movie, we don't know anything about him other than he kills things. In this one, we're like, we oh, know it's a hunter. He eats fucking meat as well in this one. That's just scary, isn't it? In a slaughterhouse, Rocky's in there training as well. Rocky's in there, training. That'd be weird. Imagine that. Hey, what are you doing in here? Predator <laughs> walks in. <laughs> ah, I want some candy. I don't want any fucking candy. I'm practicing. <laughs> <laughs> so they realise that they can make a trap there. Uh, so they do. And they've got these suits which basically keep the heating. So they realise that's how he is using his vision. Yeah, you can only see through heat. So they've got these this spray that they're going to spray, which is going to make everything seem cold with particles in the air. I love this bit when they go in. They're like, right, let's go in. They all go in their suits with their guns and into it. I really like this. Just looks cool, man. It's good scenes. And they're essentially tracking a predator on a very alien-esque, like, beep, 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 beep thing with a control centre, a little control tower in the air. Uh, the bus, as we were, with Danny Glover, who's in there as well. He's had his gun taken away. He's pretty much uh, handcuffed, etc. He's not handcuffed, yep. is he, actually? No, he's just <clears throat> been neutered by having his gun taken away. Indeed. Predator can't see anybody that's in there. He doesn't know what's predator, going on. Yeah. It changes through all its... It gets his gun out. He he's got, it changes the, through all his different visual modes. He sees a bit of the visuals, doesn't he, of the awesome flex. Or he sees something which makes him well, go, he flex that's, through that's and not it's right. Like, it's almost like he can change between heat, he can change between cold, he can change between different different visuals. So he, he tries you, his we've best. We've got to imagine that the Predator's IQ is probably quite up there. I think, think the Predator is a really Very advanced, advanced race. Really? Because they're really, like, so physically, because we've talked about them before when we did Alien vs. Predator, they're so fucking hench, really muscular. Do you think they're... Born, cool. very intelligent, very hench. Do you think any of them is a, a race of the predator <laughs> who are scientists? Yeah, and, and also like some nerd of them predators. I don't kill. I don't like killing. They wear little glasses on the yeah, end of their yeah, yeah. mouths. So there's all sorts. <laughs> bus driving predators. All sorts. <laughs> <laughs> you get on the bus and you say... <laughs> you want some candy? <laughs> you want a bus ticket? And then you've got ones that don't have a job and they just kind of sit around the house <laughs> thinking about the days. Oh, I could have been. <laughs> I could have been going to Earth House as well. Predators. Never had the opportunity to go to Earth like some of you. House Predators. Yeah. Really jealous <laughs> of their Predator partners going to Earth hunting. It's all right, honey. I earn all the money. I bring all the skulls in. It's fine. A little, <laughs> it's just a, it's little, a race little, little, that little, I want to know more about. I really yeah, do. Like little Freddy Predator's been outside in the woods to try and hunt rabbits all day long. Or Predator, <laughs> predator Rabbits. <laughs> predator Rabbits! <laughs> so, anyway, look. He changes his visual mode um, and he circles back around and they start realising, I think he can see you. I think he can see you. It's He's essentially circling. aliens. It's Ripley grabbing the control saying, get your men out of there. It's essentially that No one's listening to Glover. Glover's like, God damn it, get your men out of there. So he says, Wait. like, he pulls it, basically pulls his gun and says, like, like, open that door, let me in there, let me out. And, and they know, do. They're, they you're, you're going to muck it up. But they let him out. He, well, he, fuck, he fights his way out, doesn't he? Mm. Um, he goes out there to help. The, the Predator takes out most of the team. So Glover gets strapped. I've written the words, Glover gets strapped. Brilliant. I'm getting too old for this shit. Predator boy, motherfucker. He goes out there, and they're all dead. Boosie is the we last We do get one. Boosie versus Predator. No, this is something, you know, this is like, it's worth... This is doing. gold. Yeah, yeah. Gary Boosie versus the Predator in a silver... I'm back! Disc. 
suit. Um, Glover saves him. He doesn't save him because then he gets killed. He manages to cloak himself, the, the predator. He cloaks himself a bit. Uh, but it doesn't really work because of the water. So the cloaking device doesn't really work anymore because the water sort of interfering with that, uh, the sprinklers. So Glover says the, the, you know, the spectacular line that Glover would always say in every film, you are me, here I am. It's a bit of a Clint Eastwood. We love it when people say that in films. Um, Glover gets shot, but he's wearing a vest. So Danny Glover's okay. He's chased through the meat. Yeah. All the meat's hanging up. And he's chased through it. He turns around. He shoots the predator five times. Yeah. And the predator seems dead. So he reaches down. I don't know why he does this, Gav. He thinks, I'm going to take this mask off and see what's under this mask. Why? Takes it off. Why do people takes do it... this? I don't know. And he sees the terrible crab face thing that these predators look like. And then he says, you are an ugly Mother, f- but before you can finish that sentence, Gav, that is a great Fuck impression. Of- yeah, what a brilliant, brilliant flip! Because he says you're one ugly, and then the predator says, "Fuck!" He's learned that from Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'm guessing. Well, yeah, people- but he, yeah, but he didn't though, because that pred- predator died. He, he, how did he? Did Maybe he recorded it on his like corner or something. Maybe it back. All, all of his records were sent back. That's like their, their technology must be very advanced. Because doesn't he set it back to Arnie in the first one? They he might says, be watching. I don't, yeah, if it's a hunting game and they're they're turning our job there for hunting game, there's going to be a load of people in a room observing it on a big screen in real time. Probably there's probably mm-hmm. a camera on him filming the whole thing, guaranteed. Is this like a reality if it's a hunt? Because they're up there all hunting and challenging each other to do the most. So are you saying this is like a reality show on the Predator's planet? Yeah. And they've got like a Simon Cowell predator going. Rah, rah, rah. Like smashing his fist down on the table, like, and everyone's like, "Boo!" Yeah, yeah, so, yeah I guess so. <laughs> you got like a really pretty one with blonde hair. That's like, pretty predator. Rrr. Pretty, pretty predator. Predator in pink. <laughs> oh dear! I was trying to think of another one then, but um, no. Let's move on. Boosie yeah, gets chopped so, in half. Boosie does. He's. It's a great moment because the predator throws his sort of. Giant predator ninja star that it slices cuts through. through. Sh- 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 loads of like uh, pigs hanging up. And then, and then through Boosie's torso, and his legs drop off, and he's yeah. dead. Yeah, that's the end of that. So we up, we go up on the roof, and Danny Glover's gun. Now I've written here, Danny Glover has Megatron because <laughs> you know. I don't know if you ever had Megatron, the toy, when you were a kid. The, the gun. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> did he? His, his gun looked like Megatron. It looks like Megatron's gun. The Mega the gun. Like, it was that weird futuristic gun, wasn't yeah. it? With a yeah. big periscope bit on the top. Yeah. And Danny Glover, I realised the entire Predator 2, no wonder he's losing. He's trying to fight him with a toy Transformers gun. This is why it's not working. That's the problem. That is the problem. But yeah, so he's got the, the Megatron gun. Predator is injured, though. We got this cat and mouse moment now. Um, Predator throws a spear. Danny Glover ducks under the spear. <clears throat> Someone gets pushed off the roof. Predator hangs on to Danny Glover's arm. <laughs> Danny Glover says, Hey, pussy face. <laughs> Your move. He calls, he calls pussy, face. pussy face. Amazing. That is, that is good work, man. He says, Hey, pussy face. It's your move. You can't imagine Arnie saying that, can you? Uh, pussy face. No, it wouldn't no. work. Only Danny can go with that shit. Pussy um, face. No, I sound, I sound, I sound like cheap. <laughs> hey, like. apple pussy. Pussy face. Yeah. Predator pussy. Um, uh. God. Well, that would have little things on it. Uh. <laughs> you need a predator cock for that, though. You would. Or an alien cock with a bit coming out of it. Oh, my God. Oh. Uh. As bad as that ET porn. Come on. So anyway, Predator starts beeping his gauntlet because he's basically going to drop a thermonuclear bomb and wipe everything out. So Danny, Danny that, Glover's like, that, what? Danny kind of breaks. What is he? Chops his arm off. So he breaks breaks the uh, gadget so the bomb doesn't go off. Yeah, he cuts his arm off. Um, he falls down. So the bomb Predator doesn't go bomb, off. Yeah, bomb doesn't go off. 
Predator is still alive though. Danny Glover climbs down. This is a great end. Because... I love this bit though. Well, at this it's... point here, I said to Sarah, "Does where has he been the Predator of the medicine? When's that coming up?" And it's like, "Oh, it's coming up soon." Because we don't need this bit where the Predator. I love this. This is in a woman's old lady, bath. This lady and man in their like early seventies are just I mean, there watching TV. Oh, he's fast asleep. He's got he's bored a... of watching Wheel of Fortune, and she's just like, "Yeah, excellent." She's like. Anthony, did you hear that noise? And Anthony's not waking up. She's like, Anthony, there's someone in the bathroom. Like, there's Anthony there's someone above you. Obviously, did you not hear the, the wall breaking through when he landed? <laughs> and Predator does this amazing thing now where we learn more about their technology and their sort of understand medicine. And he's got this... He, he's got like a satellite uh, dish it like, almost. Um, but it turns into like a campfire cooker. It's so clever. And then he gets loads of the wall and the medicine stuff and... Bakes it all he, up. He crumbles concrete onto it, and it then it, puts some liquid in it and makes a blue thing. Basically, cauterizes a, a wound. Because he's had his arm severed. And so he cauterizes the uh, uh, five bullet holes. Yeah, so he, he heals himself up on the stomach and ribs, and then he the stump of the arm that's been cut off. He's not happy. It's amazing. He yeah. basically does. I put here... Predator and the whole rap- time, the whole time he's doing this, in the background, Danny Glover, who's too old for this shit, and sweating... It's just climbing down a fucking drain pipe with his big transformer gun. He even says, goddamn drain pipe, at one point. <laughs> he's really slowly shifting down it. Because that's what I would say. If I was like, for fuck's sake, it's a drain pipe, I'd go, goddamn drain pipe. That's what I would say. But. Could you imagine John Nifko doing that? No, I couldn't. No. I've put here, Predator Rambo's his arm, because he does. He does Rambo himself up quite nicely here, and yeah. all of his wounds. Yeah. But the old lady, she comes and starts banging on the bathroom door. Who's in there? Who's in my bathroom? Then she hears him roaring. She's like, oh, steps back a bit. Then he just walks, he just walks through the wall and stops Straight off. Through. She's so lucky as well. And Danny Glover manages to just climb in the apartment. I, I want to be her old fella when he's woken up grumpy and she said... A, a big monster just, a big lizard monster just ran through, ran out the bathroom and down the corridor. And he's going, what are you talking about, woman? Leave me alone. And then he says, and then she says, and then uh, Danny Glover climbed through the wall as well and chased after him. And he's just not going to believe it. He's going to go, oh, I'd love to be a fly on the wall there. <laughs> How do you tidy that up as well? Well, Glover chases him through all the apartments and he falls down to, through a hole underneath the elevator. And he realises he's at the entrance to the Predator spaceship. He landed on a motherfucking spaceship. And he goes in and he's walking around there thinking, what the fuck is all these different skulls and there's alien skulls. Yeah, there's the alien xenomorph skull. There's a bunch of other weird skulls. And this was the first time we'd seen any kind of a crossover. It was amazing. Everybody at school was like, I didn't see it the first time. But everyone, a few people at school would said, you know, they'd read it in a magazine or they'd heard, yeah. Yeah. you know, the xenomorph skull was at the end of Predator. So I had to rent out Predator 2 again just to see that. I was like, holy shit, it really is at the end. Like, does that mean it's it's so badass it's killed a xenomorph? Mm. This is crazy. And it has. It looks like it has, you know. Um, Danny has a fight with Predator. He does. He fights, starts fighting the Predator. They he's, have a got, good old... he's, he's, he's got one advantage. He has a weapon of the Predators. So it's mm, he's got he's got to sync up on this. He's got the disc, hasn't he? That the throwing disc. Um, and they have a bit of a fight. He stabs the Predator in the stomach with the disc. He says the ultimate <laughs> Danny Glover line: "Shit happens." <laughs> it's, it's a weird line, but he says it. And then I've written here, and then. And I counted them, so this is correct. And then nine other predators show up. Wow. Nine of them, Gav. Motherfucking nine. They will start appearing all around him. And Danny Glover just goes, Okay, who wants it first? So he's gonna go out with a bang. He's thinking, fuck you know, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go for this here. But they don't wanna fight him, they just wanna take the body of their own and they wanna say, Thank you, you've been a, a good opponent. So they give him a, a pistol that's got seventeen fifteen written on it. Just kind of like a easier yeah, runner up prize. Yeah, but but it'd probably be worth millions, wouldn't it? But it's also a respectful thing of hunter to hunter. Same, 
Well done. No one of your type normally kill us, so... Yeah. We only right. ever met one other guy, and that was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger. We, well, we heard about him. We saw it in the uh, footage, which yeah. was sent to the us. The black box footage. Yeah, really, yeah. yeah. So the, the ship starts to take off now. Poor old Danny. He's been through hell, and now he's on, on a ship that's about to take off and blast into space, so he's got no, to they, start they, running. They have a gun, and then they... they give him next to no time he just makes it before the spaceship goes off anyone well, else he, you know. he jumps and the the blast of the jets taken off throws him hundreds of feet through the air yeah and he is covered in like white sort of ash and dust isn't he he looks absolutely insane as he's walking along wide-eyed Indeed. covered in this white ash and um, but he does he does walk along and the and chopper arrives that's the film and we cut to like the main theme music as well, which is great to finish on. Well, the, the chopper arrives, and the last that last guy, the one of the men in black, says, "What the fuck happened?" And Danny Glover's like, "Not having any of it." He just walks off. The cops arrive. But Gav, yes, you're right. That is the end of the film. But my question to you is: You've got Danny Glover in a room. Yeah. You said, "Okay, Lieutenant Harrigan." We need a statement from you. Can you please explain what the fuck just happened? Because about five city blocks have been taken out. Loads of people are dead. Please explain. How are you going to explain what the fuck just happened? I don't know. There's a spaceship. There's a predators. Well, predators. Not gonna have you got any evidence? No. Nah. I've got a but gun from 1715. We've got many witnesses that say you ran through their fucking bathroom after a man in a suit. Yeah, but I've got a gun from 1715. That doesn't mean anything. Like, that means nothing. You're rich. Well done. So, yeah. So, we don't know anything more of this because this is obviously never brought up because next we go into Predators, which is a, a film I like, apart from Lawrence Fishburne. Like it's a bit too. weird. But um, I like that movie. That's a good movie. It's a good take. Yeah. But Gav, but Gav, but Gav. Then we had that awful too. Predator movie that came out not long ago, which was terrible. Uh, I don't mind Predator. Awful. I think The Predator was better than Predator vs. Alien. We, ne- we never give a thumbs up or thumbs down for the last movie we reviewed, but obviously we've chosen both said that we like these. So they're kind of both thumbs up, definite thumbs up for both. Oh, them, they're definitely they? thumbs up. Mm. And in equal measure, really, <clears throat> you know, if you want your, your 90 sort of cheesy horror then you go for the Blair Witch if you yeah, want your 90s if you want your gritty action. fucking yeah an a, it's an action film again with horror it's like the best thing about the Predator movies are they're essentially action films and you're not really horror films but Gav this film this sequel feels grittier and dirtier and more um, grimy it's because of the grimier street, than the first the one. streets and the gangs and the, yeah, the, the first whole one's in drug the jungle. side of it it's a lot more layers yeah, the first one's in the jungle. It's all fresh, you know. Yeah, it's, the it's Jamaicans, fine. the machetes, the hanging up of people, the the, the food. Yeah. There's a lot going on there. I think this would make a great double bill with the original I, Robocop. And I'd think, love to see a, a, a yeah, crossover. Yeah, Predator 2 and Robocop would make a great double bill. Yeah. Imagine, I just, just want to see that crossover so badly, man. Just the, uh, the fact that one of their sets was a dead body found kind of goes with the film itself yeah it does. really does anyway great movie guys if you if you've if you've not seen predator 2 for whatever reason uh check it out absolutely if you've seen it and you're just like eh, i'm not really into that much go back and give it another go especially if it's a moment wherever you are it's hot and sweaty it's a good film but I think I think what puts people off of it is people look at it and go oh, but it's not got Arnold Schwarzenegger in it and no, forget it's probably just it's probably just a cash in no, just, no 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 it's got loads of good things which we're going for it on its own merits its own way and Danny Glover's great as a lead but Bill Paxton is in it loads great movie good film um really happy we did that I are we gonna do Predators I think we should. We might do it some point. Well, yeah, I think we need to see do why. Predators with uh, something else, can't we? Hmm. We'll figure something out. Absolutely. Because I like going in the Predator world. And this one's great because I, I still hold it up there with the first one because it, it's nostalgia as well for me. I've watched both of them a lot. The first one is phenomenal. Let's, let's, you know, let's be first clear. The first one's like one of my favourite films. It's an incredible movie. Every time I, I could watch it every day. 
Okay. It's probably one of the best 80s action films. It just it has so I'd much say, going through at that moment. It's a, it's a movie of the gods, isn't it, a little bit there? It had I'd everything say, at the right time. If somebody said to me, if an alien came to Earth and said, what is an ultimate action film from that from the 80s? I'd say, you've, you've probably got to watch Die Hard or But this is John McTiernan. John McTiernan, that's his first movie uh, directed. And then the second one he directed was this. It's like, how on earth do you do that? <laughs> And, and and if you want to chuck a third one in for the Holy Trinity, probably the original Robocop, put those three together. Mm, mm. Mm. Right. Here he is. All right, Bill. Okay, right. he's tapping his watch. You, all you've got to do is say those words. The amount we pay you and fly you in our private jet, the podcast on Hort Hill private jet, you'd think you'd be lucky laughing. We well, don't even get to go on that fucking jet. I don't even know why we got it. So how much no, money that no. costs us to just keep all year round? Fuel all ready. Our, Fuel ready with a pilot ready <laughs> 24 hours a day. Luckily, Richard Branson is one of our patrons. <laughs> Luckily, and he said that he would stay up night and day just in case Bill Murray needs to fly in to do a segment. All right then, Bill, go on. Take all it right. away, my friend. Go on. Tell us. Go on, tell us. Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. Strange world. David Bowie says it's a strange world. Strange. But it's one of the strange. We are doing an episode about sequels. Sequels or frequels? Sequels that we love that others don't. I thought it'd be interesting to look at some really fucking weird sequels to films, Gav, that you might not have heard of. Some you might have, but it'd be good to discuss them. What do you think? Weird sequels from films, or frequels, or equals. Sequels, or frequels. Okay. I'm, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm interested to see if I discover stuff I didn't know of, or I know them, or p- please, or en- enlighten our audience, they might not know of these either. I think, I think you'll certainly have heard of some... Have you got, have you seen some of them? I have. And yeah, you would have done, you, you are a franchise lover. And some of these are horror, some of these are not. Mm-hmm. So bear with me. So I'm going to start things off with The Rage, Carrie 2. Seems like you've watched Carrie. I knew there was this. Is This is a uh, 80s thing? 1999. Are you going to do Prom Night 2, Hello Mary Lou? No, no. Oh. I've never seen the... it, but I like to like the electric boogaloo, you know, number 2. Hello Mary, Mary Lou. Lou. Electric Boogaloo. Number two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Carry, Carry 2, The Rage, really jumps on that ni- late 90s bandwagon that Blair Witch 2 we talked about. And, you know, um, I know what we did last summer. It really tries to be one of those. I really was not a fan of it. Sissy Spacek was offered a cameo in it. She said no, because her character died in the first film, of course. Um, not seen this one? No. No. I wouldn't bother um, it's about a girl who you know finds what? out. Wasn't good. I think she's like related, like she's like a cousin of Carrie or something. It's terrible. Tell you what, I have seen, which is I can recommend, and you're not going to watch it. Lost Boys Two: The Tribe. Oh, I have seen, seen it. it. Yeah, Corey Feldman, Corey Haynes. Starts off on the beach. That's yep. all. I, that's all I remember. And I remember it being not very good. Really, shit. I'm feeling but, quite sorry for them. But I love it because Corey, Corey Feldman's in it. Yeah. And Corey Haynes. There's a third is, one as well. There it. Well, I was just about to say the Lost Boys, the Thirst. Or the third. Or the third. The third thirst. Yep. Um. Sad about Corey Haynes because he was no one wanted to hire him, and Corey Feldman said he would only do it if he could bring Corey Haynes in. Um, so they said oh, we, he's too much of a liability we'll give him one scene in the mid credits so he gets like an after credit scene and I think that was actually quite hard for him to do from the biography I'm pretty sure even he struggled on that I think 
it, well, well, it's like that's the thing. If you get a movie lined up and, you, and everything's riding on the dates for everybody to be ready at that time, the insurance is set, everything's ready. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's going to turn up. Everyone has to be paid as soon as it goes. Um, that's what takes so much money. Every second it's going by, there's so many people being paid. That's why it's so huge. Then, so if you have a liability to, not saying this movie was at a grand scale, but it still would have had a, a, a you know, a lot of people. So, yeah. you, so you know, you can't take a risk on some people who might, be, who are known for doing this stuff. So, you know, but bless him, it's because of like, uh, what drugs were they? He was well into cocaine and heroin. He was into his heroin by this point. Fuck. Yeah. Really sad. I watched a documentary. Well, actually, that's bullshit. It wasn't a documentary. It's called A Tale of Two Corys, and it's a dramatization. You mentioned of... this before, didn't you? It's really good, and it's... it highlights, man, the shit that. I don't, we all know, know, if that I want to, I don't know if I want to see it. You know, It's a pretty tough watch, actually. I'm not going yeah, to. I don't you. think yeah. I will bother. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it is a tough watch. Well, moving forward. Um, you've heard of the classic Lawrence of Arabia, Gav? Indeed. Yeah. Starring uh, Peter O'Toole, Alec Guinness. Did you know that there was a sequel? No. No, I've not seen I've not seen the first one, to be honest with you. Have you seen it's it? Called... I've seen the, the original, yes. A bit epic, Lawrence isn't it? Lawrence of Arabia. 1962, very epic, very mm. epic. Uh, the sequel is called Lawrence After Arabia, A Dangerous Man. No, it's after Arabia, just sitting up in the watching Crossroads on TV. Starring um, 80s references. Ray Ray Fiennes. Right. Or Ray Fiennes. And it just looks terrible. Why would they have made a sequel to this? Came out in 1990, same year as Predator 2. Right. Unofficial sequel made for TV. Ray Fiennes. You got any IMDb ratings for these sequels? Oh, let's have a look. Now you said that. I think you should do it for each film, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Lawrence. Um, no, so, I've not seen it. Paul, Pete O'Toole famously was it? Wasn't he quite? Um, uh, they didn't want him for that film, that role, maybe, or they're really trying to push him out or something. But he he pretty proved himself on that because he's quite quite a like, man. I like to have a drink, didn't he, on set? I think. Uh, yes, he likes it. He liked the odd mm. sniff, snifter. Mm. Um, Gav. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Well, did you get an IMDb rating? Sorry for the last. Oh, maybe. sorry, Lawrence After Arabia. I thought that's what you're doing. This is in real time, you know. I know. Bill, get off my case. Why is Bill on my case? Here we go. It got. A beautiful and wholesome. Da, 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 da. It's got. Wow. 1.4. 7 out of 10. Really? That's mad. Maybe have not many people have viewed it. Um, okay, cool. So Jean Claude Van Damme, JCVD. Yep. Starred in uh, a great film if you ask me Time Cop about a guy travelling through time Time Cop was a fun I remember all those Jean-Claude Van Damme movies that were on Sky Movies quite a lot back in the eight, uh, early 90s late 80s um, they were quite fun I've not seen them since then to be honest with you but I remember Time Cop being one of the fun ones well they made a sequel to Time Cop Gav called Time Cop 2 The Berlin Decision The Berlin Decision? What a, what a starring what a name starring Jason Scott Lee who played Bruce Lee in Dragon the Bruce Lee story yeah and that's about it for people that were in it that you'd know of okay I didn't know about this alright 4.8 on IMDb brilliant 20 years after a set of events the Time Enforcement Commission uh oh I'm not even going to read it to you but it's terrible I've seen it okay you wouldn't be surprised. Moving forward, because there's a lot of these sequels. You've heard of this one, I'm sure. The Birds 2, Land's End. I, have, I, I knew of such a thing. Oh, I only recently knew this news, uh, or this information, shall I say. Um, yeah, have you seen it? Uh, I've never seen The Birds 2, and I'm a massive Alfred Hitchcock fan. I, I probably like the original film. 
Um, yeah, me too. I really, really love it. It came out in 1994, the sequel, which is a long time after the original, yeah. isn't it? Well, Psycho was a lot, quite a while after the original. Psycho 2 is brilliant, though, isn't it? Yeah, very good. We really, really did. Really yeah, we covered that. We, co- mm. we, should, um, no. we should cover the birds, by the way. 100% going to cover the birds. Don't you worry about that. Need to do some huge cover. Don't forget, we're doing the birds and we're doing... Um, what are we going to pair it with? We said we'd cover that one with the bats. Oh, yeah, nice. Lou Diamond Phillips. Because <laughs> I think we're going to get a really cool uh, Lou Diamond Phillips trashy B-movie paired with a fucking Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock. That's just <laughs> random as fuck. I love it, though. And they're flying winged creatures. Um, the Birds 2, Land's End, gets a solid 2.8 out of 10 on IMDb. Wow. Okay, 2.8. Cool. Happy with that? I've never seen it to uh, like pick it up anywhere. You know, if I did, I would probably pick it up just for the shits and giggles. Okay. Now, we all love the famous Al Pacino. Oh, 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 oh. He starred in Carlito's Way, as we all know. Now, did you know that they made Carlito's Way rise to power in 2005? Maybe. Starring Mario Van Peebles. I think actually I did know this existed. Louis Gussman and Sean Puffy Coombs. I do remember this. The front cover has all three of them, does it? It does. Yes. I've seen the I've seen the DVD and been look kind of looked at it, squinted my face and been like, I'm not buying that, but I'm just like, what? I'll just leave that there. 2005, 5.0 out of 10 on IMDb. So smack bang in the middle there. Collie is way too, rise to power. Jesus Christ. Moving on, what we got next? Midnight Run, great film, the original. Mm. You like you not like Midnight Run? You a fan of the original? Um, the um. De Niro. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, I am. That is quite a fun movie. Yeah. Well, how about Midnight Run Two? Didn't need a sequel. Starring Christopher McDonald, who played Shooter McGavin. From, oh my uh, God! I love Happy Shooter Gilmore. McGavin. I watched Happy Gilmore recently. I thoroughly I enjoyed love, it. I love it. It's all in the hips. It's all, all in, in the, the hips. hips. Um. Go to your special place. Uh, so another Midnight Run came out in 1994. Uh, Robert De Niro's character did not come back. Um, okay. Obviously not. Obviously, Let's have a look. obviously, hand divorces a misses at this point. Midnight Run two. What have we got? Let's have a look. Oh, it's called. What I like about it is it's called another Midnight Run. It's like 40 hours. Another 40 hours. Well, that's what it's they're probably trying to go with, though, isn't it? Another Midnight Run. Gets you ready? Four point eight. So these films aren't scoring too badly. Uh, we'll we'll skip over the next one because we we've, we've discussed it in past episodes. The third, and I know you've not seen it. Sequel. I'll always know what you did last summer because mm. we had. I know what you did. Then we had. I still know what you did. Then we had. I'll always know. I did know that is a thing. Um, I did it's actually brilliant. think the other day. Wonder if I should watch it just because I haven't seen it. I, I I did that the other day. I realised I bought I know what you did last summer again, and I got home and already had it in my DVD collection. I was like, why have I bought it again? I keep keep buying movies twice all the time. Do it's because you want to send them to me. Yeah, yeah, it's really weird. Now we've talked about um, Michael Caine in the past doing a sequel, Jules Ford, to afford his holiday home and have a nice little trip to the Caribbean. He made another shit film in 1979. He did a sequel to The Poseidon Adventure called Beyond the Poseidon Adventure. Beyond it. Just way beyond way, it. Way, way past it. 4.6 on IMDb. Okay. Michael Caine, Sally Field, Telly Savalas. Michael Caine is in it. That's what I said. He did a sequel to Charles Four, but he also did another sequel. Shit, I'd watch that. Tell me Savalas and Michael Caine. <laughs> Who 
for you. Yeah, I knew that one would appeal to you, to be honest with you. I yeah, thought, I'm, I'm yeah, actually going to look out for that. Uh, beyond the Poseidon Adventure, okay? Sweet. Now, we all loved The Fugitive with Harrison Ford. Mm -hmm. Tommy Lee Jones, old lava face himself. Yeah, there was a sequel. Is that the one with Wesley Snipes? It is. Yeah, correct. Well done, sir. U.S. Marshals. Probably not too bad because Wesley Snipes is a different type of character. He's a bit more action packed, a bit more brisk and jump, a youthful as such to Harrison Ford. Oh, he's a black belt with about four different martial they're, arts. They're, they're different like. action stars of different categories, really, aren't they? Um, sweet. Yeah, okay. Is it, I think I feel like maybe seen it, but just thinking, oh, it's not as good as the original. Yeah, I've definitely just, seen it's it. It's the exact same movie, isn't it? Isn't it? It's that sort of exact copy, really, but, you know, Wesley Snipes is Harrison Ford. I mean, no. Wesley Snipes is more of a baddie in it, and Tommy Lee, the only link is that Tommy Lee Jones plays the same guy that tracked down Harrison Ford. It's nothing to do with the original, other than it's the same same so guy it's really, tracking it's down. It's really uh, uh, Tommy, Tommy Lee Faces uh, uh, movies. <laughs> really, isn't it? To Tommy Lava Face. Yeah. Um, it gets 6.6 .6 though on IMDb, so that's alright. Yeah. Now, always keep talking to you about maybe at some point we should try and figure out a way to cover American Psycho because you know that's a great movie a lot of people love that film but did you know that they made a sequel no American Psycho 2 I don't think I I know I probably did know but what was it is it Mila Kun, Kun, Kun? that is correct Gav Meg from Family Guy Kunis? Mila Kunis Kunis She's a student driven to murder after Co she kills what is she? Patrick Bateman. Kumus? Kunis. Kunis. But that's not the best thing about it, Gav. What? It also stars William Shatner. Oh, the Shatner. If you want me to add even better things to it, it's directed by Morgan J. Freeman. That's not Morgan Freeman, just somebody called Morgan J. Freeman. Imagine if Morgan Freeman was directing it, though. <laughs> shits and giggles, well, son, for shits and giggles. Oh, well, this next scene. I'm going to need you to... <laughs> yeah, it, uh, oh, he'd be the most calm director. The set would be just so... Oh, it's Morgan Freeman's command, isn't it? So, William Shatner, Mila Kunis in American Psycho 2 from 2002. And that gets a solid 3.8 out of 10 on IMDb. Pleased with that? I'm ecstatic. Dumb and Dumberer. Have you seen this? I, I knew this. This was like, came out a lot longer after. No, I haven't seen it. I think I'd feel kind of sorry for them doing it. I don't know why. I, don't, I, I, I just don't want to watch it. Hang on. I think you're thinking of Dumb and Dumber 2. Oh, maybe. I'm, I'm maybe. talking about Dumb and Dumber, which was the, what, the sequel. Oh. Dumb and Dumber 2 is the third one. Which came out not hugely long ago. Right. Dumb and Dumber doesn't star Jim Carrey or anybody famous. Oh, okay. Uh it, it came out in 2003 and it gets 3.4 on IMDb. Really? And it's basically like a prequel to Dumb and Dumber. Okay. Similarly, The Mask 2 Son of the Mask, I don't know if you've seen this, starring Jamie Kennedy. Oh my god, no. And Alan Cumming. What? I don't know who that is. Alan Cumming, he's um, Irish, Scottish comedian, uh, played Nightcrawler in the X-Men films years ago. You'd know him. Okay. Um, Son of the Mask. Do you want me to tell you what score it gets? Because I've seen this. Now, when Movie Bank... Six. When Movie Bank first came out in the UK, this is one of the first films I rented from Movie Bank because I thought, yes, I've got to check out Son of the Mask. It's bound to be as good as the phenomenal... Then the, third, the third one is about the dog getting the mask, wasn't it? This is that one. Oh, OK. I think maybe I've seen this one. I think... I think I've seen this one and Daisy what used to guess? enjoy it. 4.6 is my guess. What is it? 2.2. Jesus. Had, I was, well, was actually quite well off. Like, it's had 53,000 um, ratings and it's got 2.2. Fucking hell. Moving forward. Home Alone 4. Okay watch this at Christmas because I went I decided to watch all four Home Alone films but Gav on a side note I know that you bumped into a a film the other day that you thought was a porno didn't you oh I can't what was it it was uh, I can't remember what it's called now 
Bone Alone. Bone Alone. I did wonder what that was, and I had to pick it up, and I was like, oh, it's a movie about a dog. I think it's basically a spin-off of Home Alone, but with a dog instead. Because it could have been easily been, like, a bit of softcore porn. Two burglars break into the house. Home Alone 4 gets another solid 2.8 out of 10. Wow. Ace Ventura 2. Uh, sorry, Ace Ventura 3. Seen oh, that? Shit, no. Didn't even know that was that existed. It's called Ace Ventura Pet Detective Junior. Who is it? <laughs> You're so angry. You looked at me. Who is it? Who is it? Um, it's just a little chubby kid that plays Ace Ventura when he was younger. Oh or no, sorry, he God. plays sorry, he plays his son. Um, and at the end of the movie, yeah. they basically do like a, a silhouette of a shadow and the door's open and he, goes, he looks at him and he goes, Dad, is that you? And he just gives a thumbs up. But it's no one there. It's just a shadow of someone with with Jim Carrey's hair. And oh, this is our lowest so score cheap, yet. isn't it? This, gives, get, this gets 2.1. Wow. It's our lowest score yet. I, I didn't know that existed. Was it just called Pet, uh, Pet Detective 3? What? It's called Ace Ventura Pet Detective Junior. Right. Never horror. seen that. Let's go back to horror. Rosemary's Baby. What about Look What's Happened to Rosemary's Baby? Any good? I've never seen it. No. Have you seen it? No. 1976. Gets a solid, solid 3.4 out of 10. Wow. Having been adopted by the madam of a southwestern brothel, brothel, a now adult Adrian must cope with the fact that he is the devil's son and not living up to his expectations. So basically, his dad's disappointed in him in this one. He lives in a brothel, and his dad, the devil's like, for God's sake, son, you know, I've given you power, I've given you claws and little fangs, and you're living in a brothel, but you're not living up to what I expected from you. Yeah. What a load of shit. I don't want to see that. Want to see that one? No. <laughs> Donnie Darko. We covered Donnie Darko. Oh, this is this like Daphne Darko or something. <laughs> Deirdre. Deirdre S Darko. It's called S Darko. Oh, right. It's about his sister. <laughs> His little sister Samantha and her best friend Corey are on a cross country road trip. They soon find themselves. Uh, in a dangerous glitch in the space-time continuum. And I tried to watch. I did watch this, and I just didn't understand what the fuck was going on. It didn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, don't let me watch it. And it was. It gets three point six out of ten on IMDb. It's fucking oh. terrible. Because the first one's hard enough to understand, as much as I love it. But this one was just ridiculous. Like, it didn't nothing. Nothing was happening. Yeah. Absolutely terrible. What about Wild Things too, Gav? Have you seen Wild Things? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I see, I see it's just come back on Netflix. I was thinking of checking it out again. Um, I saw it once. It was, it was what it was. I definitely do not need a sequel. Well, they, did they need a sequel? Did they need Wild Things 3? Yo, what? Need... Hang on a minute, Gav. They made a fourth one. Yes, it was called Wild Things Foursome. You're joking. I am not joking. There are three sequels to Wild Things. What the fuck? Can you please give me the rations for each one? Yeah, you're going to have to bear with me then. So Wild Things uh, 2 came out in 2004. Um, bear with me. Just, wow. uh, how tenuous is the storyline by part four? And no one's in them that's of any consequence either. You know that. So Wild Things 2 gets <clears throat> 4.5. Right. Not too bad. It's a sequel to the hot film Wild Things. This film sees two teenage bad girls go on a sex and killing spree to win themselves millions. Okay. Might be okay. okay if you're drunk, I suppose. I, unfortunately, have seen all four of the oh Wild Things. Oh, my movies. God! What the fuck? Um, where, 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 where did you do this? Did you have some weird, like, oh, I'm staying up all night and watching the Wild Things franchise? No, I just... I don't, I don't know how I did it, really. So the third one is called Wild Things 3... Diamonds in the Rough. Diamonds in the Mouth. <laughs> yep. Yeah, 4.5. Uh, 
It came out the same a year later, 2005. Two young women stop at nothing to gain four million dollar inheritance of two priceless diamonds. But two detectives will try and thwart their plans. The same shit. It's kind of like a, t- a too fast, too furious franchise, but the, like the the weird girl duo killer robbers. Well, especially with the final one being called Wild Things Foursome. So what's it about? 2010 gets 4.5. How are they still in the same ballpark as the reigns of the second, then? Uh, it says, A murdered hotel millionaire's son finds himself tangled up in a game of seduction and murder after a raunchy night with three beautiful women. Wow. Fuck you, know. That it's- sounds... That's just crazy. I didn't know that existed. Now, this next one, I I did not know exists when it existed. Single white female two, the psycho. <laughs> Get in there with the title. <laughs> Let everyone the know psych- what's going on. The psycho. How do we know that? No, it's about a psycho. Caught the psycho. You sure? Yeah. Put Easy. That as a subtitle. You sure? Yeah. Is that not giving it away? No. Nah. Psycho. Like, okay. People might not know. Single white female two, the psycho. Right, Ridiculous. okay. Let's do it. Single white female two, the psycho. Um, no one of any consequences in it. Came out in 2005. We're looking at 4.1 on IMDb. Okay. So it came out and some of them I didn't even know about. It. Like The Roadhouse 2, The Last Call. Cool. Roadhouse 2. Uh, yeah, the first Roadhouse movie's alright. Patrick Swayze kicking some ass. Ripping throats out of motherfuckers. The only person who I recognise in this one, in Roadhouse 2, is Jake Boosie. Gary's son. Jake. <laughs> Fucking hell. This sits at a nice solid 4.3 out of 10 on IMDb. Came out in 2006. More men beating other, other men in nightclubs. Happy Brilliant. with that? Yeah, excellent great stuff I don't I think I've got a couple more and then we're done but I just I just love going through this list of oh of course and I watched this one very recently Kindergarten Cop classic film you know Arnold Schwarzenegger Kindergarten Cop 2 is it a woman in this place no it's Dolph Lundgren Gav oh wow (laughs) wow you got well excited with that and I tell you what, I actually had a bit of fun with that one. I, um, I, I'm just thinking that has been kind of fun. The thing is that I love the fact that he's also a very uh, clever dude, isn't he? He's very well educated in in physics, is it? Or some. Yeah, he's he's got like an engineering degree, biology biology degree, the physics, those of stuff. Kindergarten Cop Two, 2016, he gets 4.5. Um, on IMDb and it says assigned to uh, recover sensitive stolen data a gruff FBI agent goes undercover as a kindergarten teacher but the school's liberal politically correct environment is more than he bargained for brilliant Dolph Lundgren just some kids (laughs) that could be Uh, taken out of context yeah let's move on backdraft 2 talking of taking out of context (laughs) <laughs> I did not know there was a backdraft too. Now the first backdraft obviously stars Kurt Russell, a bunch of other people being firemen, being badasses. I don't know if you've seen this, Gab. Are you a fan of this? I saw backdraft uh, um, a long time ago, and I, I, I didn't mind it as a kid. I think I watched it actually, but it's, it's a bit of a weird movie to watch. I think as a kid, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah I should revisit. I guess. It's really good. Um, William Baldwin as well. And Kurt Russell, so it's just so good. Um, but yes, uh, Backdraft 2, they made. Uh, it, what blows my mind, uh, like, what do you think goes through studio's heads? Because this came out in 2019. The original one came out in 1991. What goes through studios? And they go, well, we've got nothing going on this week. What was big 20 years ago? Uh, Backdraft, that one. Should we do a sequel to that? Yeah, all right then. Like, I don't get why they come up with these movies that come out like 20 or 30 years after their original ones yeah I don't know I I think it is it, it might potentially be the fact that they have money and they need to spend that money uh, do you think that's what it is in that tax year etc etc to uh, you know be in a certain bracket it could be and it's just like well, what have we got oh that made money then okay cool 
Or, or a producer goes to them and says, look, I want to remake this movie. Why? I don't know. I get it cost this much, but they just need some work. I don't, I don't know. I fuck up. Fuck knows. Did you know there was a sequel to The Jerk? No. The Jerk 2. But 2 is in T-double-O. What's it called? Just it's a called jerk, The Jerk 2. Jerk 2. Okay, and what, what's going on? Ray Winston was in it. Ray Winston? <laughs> yeah. 1994. Right. I'm just getting some information on it now. 2.6 out of 10. Fucking hell. Well, the jerk one wasn't like amazing. It was just alright, you know. Um, Naveen Johnson sets to travel to LA to attend the wedding of his pen pal, Marie, but gets sidetracked by the leader of a gang of hobos who takes him to Las Vegas. What uh, gang of hobos take him to Las Vegas? I don't know what that, that sounds Hobo, nice. are they going there just because it's a good place to uh, 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 be hobos? You know, like... Uh, the littlest hobo. There's a voice. He keeps on calling me oh, down the road. That's where I want to be. What about Dirty Dancing 2? Dirty Dancing 2, Havana Nights. Oh, wow. I sense you're not a fan of the first Dirty Dancing. Are you? No, I, I heard something. I had a movement. We had it earlier. We never said to the uh, to the, all the listeners, we you had a power cut. Oh, we did. That was weird, wasn't it? And I, I um, then all of a sudden my iPad just shut down for no reason. I was like, what the fuck? But I just heard a fud. But I know what that is. That's going to be a trench that's falling down from where it's climbing up. And oh, so I just, I just God. for my own, for my own peace of mind, I'm just going to look around and make sure no c- cages are open. Uh, on your back, Gav. Oh, don't say that. Oh, it is. Oh, I hate them when, they, when they're big and they're climbing up the side. It's just scary. Yes, if you hear it fud down, that's a trench that's falling down because it's climbing up. Well, I'm going to power through these last few here. Dirty Dancing 2, Havana Nights. Caddyshack 2. Didn't uh, even know there was a Caddyshack 2. Uh, yeah, I think I did know there was a Caddyshack 2. Really? Hmm. Jesus Christ. Um, Blues Brothers 2000. We all know that one arrived. We forget it happened. I don't remember. I don't think I've seen it. John Goodman and Dan Aykroyd. I've not seen it. It was the last film Dan Aykroyd made before he got really fat. Bless him. Oh, right. Yeah, really fat. Basic Instinct 2. Oh. More Sharon Stone. More ham sandwich. Uh, and Rio Ferdinand. Rio Ferdinand, the footballer. Correct. Why is the footballer in a movie? He can't act, I'm sure. He's in it. <laughs> How weird. And I'm going to finish up with the movie that I watched last Christmas, and I would highly avoid you avoid it. I would highly avoid. I would highly advise you avoid it. Christmas Vacation Two: Cousin Eddie's Island Adventure. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's really. I don't know. It's really. Sort of... Really shit. If I saw it on DVD, I'm probably you would hate it. Gav, you'd hate it. Trust me. <laughs> it's one of the worst films I've ever seen. You do ever know me seen. quite well. Bo Bo Ranzel covered it on Pick Six, Pick Six movies yeah. when they did like um, a holiday or Christmas one or something, and they covered it. And I'd already seen it at this point, and I thought, oh my god, I can't wait to hear what he's going to say about this shit. And lo and behold, they absolutely rinsed it. It's a piece of shit really bad okay so there we go weird sequels we didn't know existed it's not really strange but it's certainly world of the strange it is indeed well thank you for that <clears throat> that's all right it was a fun one fun one to do in line with our sequels well bill your time is up my friend for now do you want to fuck off what why did bill say that no i said it to him oh all right calm down you two all right let's get out of here all right, let's go. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of the Strange. Next week, though, give me Ira. Hairless pets. Weird. Are we back? Oh, that was the end of the episode. It was indeed. I'm glad we managed to slip one in. 
Yeah, that was all uh, all about the number two, and we're not talking about poo. <laughs> no. Sorry. So, fun um, episode. Right, fun right sequels. now, well, this episode's released, you, you're a father. Uh, yeah, probably that is right, talking about the future. So, congratulations. Oh, thanks, man. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, strange. We're, like, sort of going into the future a little bit here. A little bit. Oh, I just realised as well, we talked about sequels, which is the number two, and I'm having twins. That is weird, isn't it? Mm. But yeah, fun episode. Um, Predator 2, Blair Witch 2, Book of Shadows. Yeah. Both really, both have soft spots for both of those, don't we? And if you've not seen them, fucking go check them out. They're great. Mm. Fun. What's up next, Gav? Um, well, next, when we are back, obviously it is going to be a little bit longer. I just know it is uh, uh, for the next episode to come out. Bear with us. We will do that. We should, should still probably get out some little Patreon episodes on the, on, the, on the side. If you're into the old Patreon thing with us, and thank you very much if you are. Um, we are coming back with a first, even though it's not horror, you know, but it is genre in a way. It's it's someone who takes the horror influence uh, in his films, you know. Uh, we're actually doing a Quentin Tarantino look at, director look at, and a couple of his flicks. What we what we're covering, man? Well, we're going to do Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna do a director's uh, special. And you're going to do Tarantino. Those are the two you're going to really go for. We're going to have some meaty conversation around those two films. I think they'd be real be fun, fun, fun talks, and that'd be that'd be us coming getting back on it again once Dan yep. has settled a little bit. That'd be fun, man. So that's episode 115, our Tarantino director special, mm-hmm. Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. So that means episode 116, as I mentioned last time, that'll be us getting you guys in the mood for some some summer. The hot weather is already here. We're going to be doing the original Friday the 13th. And like, we're going to pair that up. How have we got this far not done the Friday the 13th? Well, we've not even done the first movie. And we're going to pair it up with Sleepaway Camp. Mm. So we're going to go at camping in the woods in the summer in the 80s and see what happens. Yeah, I actually found my... um. I was packing away VHS and I've actually got a VHS copy of Sleepaway Camp. Oh, I, I, I'm not really. Uh, I've never really been a huge fan of the film, actually. So I was actually surprised I had a VHS copy of it. I, was like, oh, I don't even remember I had that. I think you'll be surprised. Go back and revisit. It's yeah, maybe. Some I think it's like, always it. like hey, it would speed up Friday the Thirteenth. You know, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, cool. And uh, episode 117 again. This is going to be stepping away from horror, but. We are going to be stepping away from horror and stepping into a multi-story building. Because we, for episode 117, we will be pairing up two films that involve getting from the bottom of a building to the top of a building. I'm talking about Dread. Or the top to the bottom. Or the bottom top to the bottom. Is that what I said? You said bottom to the top. And it's top to the bottom trying to get out of the building as well. And The Raid. Mm. Dread and the Raid, which are definitely not horror, but they're definitely very gory. They're they're they're, they're genre pieces, both of them, definitely. And they came out around about the same time, which confused people, and I don't know why, because they're nothing like each other, but other than the buildings being in it, so that'll be fun. Mm. Lots of fun. I can't wait to play that. Oh man, checking Raid out on the fucking projector screen. Some of those moves in those fight scenes are just a bit too much to watch still, aren't when they? He pull, like when he pulls a guy down onto like the broken doorway. Oh. Bam. I love how quick they think the cops as well. Like they get a fridge and they throw like something in the fridge and blow up. Boom! boom throws the it's fridge out the window. Go, 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 go. Chop the floor, chop the floor, chop the floor, chop the floor. And they all jump through the floor and then they take out the next guy. It's like, Christ! So good, man. Those guys. I've never seen martial arts stuff quite like that. Mm. really good mm. so yeah that'll be fun and mm. Dread Dread's a good one Dread is a good one yeah so there we go uh, shall I do the admin and then we can talk quickly and say goodbye absolutely brilliant well we are the podcast on Haunted Hill as always proud member of Legion Podcast Network here's where to find out more go to legionpodcast.com 
and you will find out more about us and all the other shows on the network you can actually become a patron supporter slash sponsor of uh, legion just by going on to patron and typing in legion podcasts um any money that you want to support them with will go towards us and all the other shows keeps the network running it is vital and there's t-shirts loads of cool stuff available with legion and grizzly and bears on them it's all good um you can email me and gav directly uh if you want to it's uh the podcast on haunted hill at outlook.com we're on facebook as well and that's where most people will contact us you can private message us you can talk to us you can post posters trailers what you've been watching all that kind of stuff that's where we post lots of our uh, episodes and just chat to everybody um just go to facebook type in the podcast on haunted hill do the same with legion just go to facebook type in legion podcasts and you'll get jumping onto all the other shows there's millions of shows there are millions that's a lie but there are a lot of shows i'd be worried if there are a million shows um where are you li- where can you listen to us you can listen to us exactly where you're listening to us right now if not there then spotify youtube Podknife, apple podcast app Podbean. you can tweet us we are a couple of twats which you're more than welcome to tweet at and i'm stealing that from court so I'm sorry court um but you can tweet these couple of twats um at haunted podcast we're on instagram as well with the podcast on haunted hill insta and Deadbolt Films, let's talk about that. We have a film production company called Deadbolt Films. Go to deadboltfilms.com, find out more about us there. We have a couple of features, a couple of sh- quite a lot of shorts, uh, a couple of podcasts, this one, but also Gav. And uh, 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 High Strangers podcast, which I do with Sarah. Uh, Spooky uh, stuff, which we just started a uh, possibly, I think it's going to be a free part on the Broadmoor Hospital, which is very close to where I live, like 10 miles. Um, Indeed. Psychiatric ward and all the cases of all the people who are there or have been there. And if that wasn't enough, then we also have not one, but a second comic coming out as well through Deadbolt Films, which we're very excited about. So, mm. lots of cool stuff there. And you can go on YouTube and look up the Deadbolt Films channel. Um, and you can go to Deadbolt Films on Instagram or you can tweet at Deadbolt Films. Um, so, that's all what's happening there. But what I need to talk about the most is Patreon because we would be nothing without, firstly, our listeners. So thank you, everybody who's not a patron, thank for listening, much. loving, and laughing. Please share us, rate us, review us. Please do. But a special thanks must always go to our patron supporters, because without you guys, you keep the show ticking along um, nicely, um, you know, with your very generous funding. Without you, we wouldn't be able to do the things that we do. Uh, the T-shirts, there are still T-shirts available, Gav, aren't there? Indeed, absolutely. Indeed, there are. Please, please, please go buy a t shirt at deadboltfilms.com. You can buy deadbolt stuff, you can buy podcasts on Haunted Hill stuff. Out, but, of, out okay. of Blue Large, just going to say that right now. Out of Blue Large, you fucking. <laughs> I don't know what. Um, patron, here we go. Thanks, guys, to RJ McCready, Len Meow, Kate Pollock, Rachel Elizabeth, Sarah Kay, Kevin S. Fife. Jamie Salmon, Jill Smith, and Matthew Godley. Thank you, Thank you so, so, much, so much, peoples. And I just want to say to Matthew Godley, I'm watching you, man. I'm watching you. That's what I'm going to say. I'm watching you. Little wink, winky wink. Indeed. So there we go, guys. Thank you ever so much, everybody. And Gavin, thank you for wearing no T-shirt for this entire episode. It's been wonderful. And I'm so glad we keep cameras on while we record. Absolutely. That was quite, you were quite muscular when you did that then. Do it again. It's not like giggling, you're about to become a father. I'll be your daddy. Oh no, this is <laughs> not what I want to hear. Well, listen, it's been a fun episode. I'm looking forward to some Tarantino. Um, but listen, it's a good night from Danny Glover sweating so much all the time well that's a good <laughs> night from Gay Boosie in his silver shiny suit intergalactic planetary <laughs> guess who's back it's also a good night from a sexy naked redhead in the woods yes <laughs> a good night from the, the bus driving predator and the one sitting at home going, hey, it's not fair. I've got a disability in my leg. I can go and walk like, work like the rest of you other predators. That's it. I have to stay at home and watch Predator TV, daytime TV. Jeremy, Jeremy, Carl. Cooking predator. programs. 
camera and they're just on there like cooking humans heads top gear <laughs> the news here is the news one of our species was killed tragically by Arnold Schwarzenegger in a desert in a jungle oh, on that's really bad Ooh, that'd been bad <laughs> bloody right? earth oh earth's terrible why do we keep going back there <laughs> I really want to see this now they'd be already racist against us a bit as well bloody humans Ugh. give us like some name humies but they're weird fucking weird humies mouths. they've got weird round mouths Ugh. fucking why round they got... fucking round heads why have they only got one set of teeth why haven't they got like four sets of mouths like us fucking two eyes oh yeah <laughs> ugly motherfuckers all right let's get out of here uh uh just stay safe for everybody make sure those windows and doors are locked before you go to sleep tonight because because if you're not careful gary boosie will be peeking in through your window tonight You'll be watching in the window in a silver suit good night good night Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon. Hey!